all been patiently waiting for. Uh, Today's Opie and Anthony show starts now. This is Larry King welcoming you to the Opie and Anthony Show right here on Sirius XM Satellite Radio. What the hell am I doing here? <laughs> Isn't it brilliant? Forget it. The thing's out of control. Out of control. Great guests, interesting interviews, and of course, your phone calls as well. It gets my nipples hard, you know what I mean, son? Are you out of your mind? It's not the most talked about, not the most written about, and certainly not the most listened to show in the history of radio, but I'm still proud to enjoy it. Oh. You're going to have a ball. Yeah, yeah, good. Lads. America's most trusted name in news, the Opie and Anthony radio show. <laughs> Let's welcome our hosts, Opie and Anthony. By the way, who's Jim Norton? <laughs> hey. 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 Morning. Yeah. But that would uh, mean that somebody slept last night. Oh, no. Hey. Fuck it, uh, insomnia. A little trouble snoozing. Yeah, then I rolled over and tweeted, welcome. No, what did I say? I don't even remember. Hi from, oh yeah, hi from insomnia land. Oh, shit. And then everyone tweeted me back, try whiskey. You should, <laughs> smoke, you should smoke pot. Smoke a joint before you go to bed. Try Xanax. You Drop should, a Zanny the Nanny. You should whack off. <laughs> And then a bunch of other people that were in my exact boat. They're just trying to help, oh. Mm -hmm. Just trying to help. I remember the clock hit 
12.15 was the last time I checked the fucking clock. I was in bed at 9.30. Oh, nice. wow. I was yeah. in bed nice. That's crazy. First hour, slept, woke up out of nowhere, and, and then stayed up for like two or three hours. I don't think that works. And then I wandered around my apartment. I drank the warm milk, like they say. Yeah. I checked the email, checked a little Twitter, went back to bed. None of that shit worked. What time was that when you went back to bed? Um, I don't know, like 12, like uh, I said, and then, oh, oh maybe boy. it did work, because then I saw 12.15, and then the last thing I remember, the alarm, oh, that's right, it wasn't going off, because I woke up before 5 as well. <laughs> uh, that just sucks, man. And I know why. We're getting older where if you eat a little too late at night, or exercise a little too late at night, for some reason, it fucks up your whole body. What's really? that about? Yeah, man. Because it, it gets your metabolism going. You got to shut that huh. shit down. By the uh, way, the mics sound different again today. But, do they? Oh, yeah. I didn't notice. Huh? I, I'm, this mic sucks. Do, 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 do. Now I'm in a bad mood. Check one, two. How long? Huh? Uh, <laughs> 15, 15 minutes. Uh, that's just a 15 minute. <laughs> yeah. Because it's just so common, no, that one, that one the mic thing. When Sam does the after show or whatever, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll either be at your mic or Jimmy's or that one, those mics sound gr This mic sucks. I've been saying it for years uh, now. This sounds like shite. It sounds very just tinny and flat, thin. Don't need that. How are you, sir? I'm good. Yeah. I, uh, I slept uh, pretty well, uh, although the hours were weird. Mm. I think I was. I think I woke up at like three in the afternoon yesterday and pulling an Amy Winehouse. Are you? And I was back asleep. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> I think I think she kept those hours. <laughs> she kept those weird hours. Yeah. But then I took another like four hour nap. Two hours after that. Oh, wow. Just, was just, ah. But then I was up until about... That means you had a good Saturday night. Two in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, I had a pretty good weekend. It was fun. I did uh, Red Eye with uh, uh, DeRosa. Mm -hmm. He was uh, doing Andy Levy's part. Nice. And then we went out afterwards. Uh-oh. Yeah, we were out pretty pretty late. Uh-oh. Pretty late. Yeah, DeRosa likes to drink. No, no <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, Saturday was just some drunken karaoke. Uh, some drunken compound karaoke that that's always fun. Yeah. And uh, Saturday was just chill, chill. Watch some TV, sleep late, and then um, slept. Uh, actually, woke. I was up until probably two in the two a.m. Mm -hmm. And I finally fell asleep, and that old fucking alarm goes off. It's like a couple of hours. Uh, great, but I slept so much yesterday that that you're fun. good. Yeah. All right. Nothing yesterday either. No beers or anything. I'm like, what the fuck? What's wrong with you? I woke up like, wait, what you is got a this? Fever? You all right? I know. I was. I was like, what? What is this non-pain in my head? <laughs> what happened? Where's that throbbing pain when I wake up that I'm supposed to have? I better go to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm also in a slightly bad mood because Santa Kane is a complete ungrateful cunt. Oh, her, her stupid little. She'll never get a dime from me lawsuit made the newspaper today. Yeah. She's such a cunt. Yeah. Yeah. Twa a twat. A complete twat that no one gave a shit about. Became mm -hmm. a regular on our, our show, which uh, was good for Sandy Kane's business. Yeah. Then out of nowhere, she decided, uh, you know, if, if, she, if she does lawsuits, because she did the lawsuit with the Naked Cowboy Naked guy, cowboy. that uh, the press will pick up on it. And, of course, uh, the press decided to pick up on this one as well. Yeah. Well, my statement, because supposedly the New York Post, which is uh, filled with a bunch of cunts, they said they tried to get a hold of us. None of you assholes ever tried to get a hold of us. Yeah, Stop you with lie. the bullshit. That's what newspaper, newspapers do. When there's something controversial, they make believe that they try to get a, a hold of you. There's no way to prove that they try to get a hold of yeah. you. I'm telling you right the fuck now, no one uh, tried to get a hold of us. Because they only want the crazy side of the story. Uh, yeah, of course, because it makes for uh, better reading. Yeah, so they got their story that they want from the crazy side, from Sandy Kane. Right. And uh, we would only ruin the story by throwing in facts and stuff like that. Right. And they uh, perish the thought there's any facts. Right. So uh, they say, yeah, uh, att numerous attempts to contact. It's like, no, no one tried to contact. And like you said, uh, with Twitter and everything, it's easy to get in touch with anyone these days if you want to. Let's see. I got Facebook. I got Twitter. Yeah. I got a YouTube email account. I yeah. got an agent. I got a regular email account. We got uh, people around here. 
No one tried to get a hold of us, so stop with that bullshit. Yeah, that's crazy. It's something the papers love to do and use because, God forbid, if they did try to get a hold of us, maybe we would give them an angle on it, which makes it not a good story. Right, it makes it like, like oh, Ann said, they just want the crazy part of the story. Yeah. But then, another fucking twat, cunt, piece of shit that we took care of, and then they turn around and, and, and are just complete assholes. Yeah. Complete assholes. What a bitch. The fact is, uh, this, this dumb guitar that I smashed, I paid her on spot for the stupid guitar mm -hmm. that was worth maybe $100. Not yeah. even. Yeah, it was her personal property. Yeah, I get all that. But I smashed a uh, guitar, and then I gave her a shitload of money. A that shitload. Like, that was like a $10 garage sale guitar. It was a yeah. horrible guitar. It was horrid. And it, it and made for great radio that day. Yeah, everyone, it was fun. Everyone was laughing, and that meant that more people knew about Sandy Kane. And then she lost her shit. And as soon as I pulled out my wallet and started peeling off 20s, oh, did she calm down immediately, uh, this uh, piece of uh, shit. Uh, uh. And then I gave her her money. She was completely happy. Did our show many times after that. Turns out she never replaced the guitar. She 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 to this day uses it with a big gaping hole in it that yeah. she patched up. And now she's suing us for eight hundred dollars because she spent the money on something or, else. Well, what did you do? She's suing us for more, but she's saying the guitar was eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollar guitar. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, she's suing for the you know the max whatever you're able to sue in small claims five mm -hmm. grand. Yeah, five grand something like that. And then she's uh, suing for the hat that you. Uh, yeah, it says. Put, and, uh, where's the Where's a, the article? A guitar that was uh, the paper, smashed, and they shot a hole in her hat, which made it sound like her head, dumb head was still in it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> shot a, like like all of a sudden you just fucking blast a shot off, and she goes, "Hey, what'd you do?" Right. <laughs> There's a hole in her hat, smoking. <laughs> no. Eh. <laughs> Uh, Sandy Kane suing Opie and Anthony naked cowgirl lawsuit because she knows this. Uh, she, she knows these lawsuits could get her uh, her face in the news. They get publicity, they, whatever. Even naked cowgirls get the blues. A comedian Sandy Kane, who often performs in Times Square as the naked cowgirl, is suing radio schlock jocks. <laughs> did, they say, did they say schlock jocks? Yeah. Oh, I I read that as shock jock. Schlock jocks. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, Opie and Anthony for destroying her $800 guitar and shooting a hole through her cowboy hat. <laughs> shooting a hole through her cowboy hat. And then she's like, I'm like an abused uh, wife, great. said Kane. An abused wife? Get the fuck really? out of here. Really? Who the fuck would marry you? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm like an abused wife, said Kane, who has appeared on the Paris show numerous times. I love them, but they're so vicious and horrible. Oh, well, we are vicious and horrible, but... Uh, vicious and horrible? Lawsuit. Let me tell you something about vicious and horrible. She loved every fucking minute of it. Of course. Remember, after every appearance, her trying to take pictures of us. She couldn't get enough yeah. pictures of us. Couldn't thank us enough. Couldn't take our money fast enough every time we paid her. How about I counter sue for the fact that she... Uh, uses our pictures to publicize herself in Times Square where she makes up flyers. Oh, really? And uh, without permission, uses our, our uh, images. Now, that's a lot more than $5,000 right there, my friend. Yeah. Just an another... Un one. Just another ungrateful fucking piece of shit. Piece of shit. You know, just add her to the list. She has now filed suit against the duo in the Sirius XM Satellite Network in Manhattan Small Claims Court. She is seeking unspecified damages for destruction of property, criminal mischief, and assault. Assault. What are you fucking talking about? Yeesh. I never fucking touched the broad. I didn't Jesus. want to catch anything. I know. I, I, I literally I never, never fucking touched her. I literally have never had any type of physical contact. Not a handshake, not a a uh, arm around her while you take a picture kind of a thing. Right. I'm always like, oh, don't touch me. I hate being touched. Right. Brr. And all the shit we did to her over the years, that was the only reason we had her on. Of course. There was no other reason to ever have this fucking cunt on our show. Like her dick song is fucking great. Uh, think we want to hear that? Kane said Opie grabbed her guitar earlier this year and smashed it. She also complained that the duo used her hat for target practice. <laughs> Reps for the show and Sirius did not return a call and email for comment. And that's complete bullshit. They didn't try to get a hold of me. But that's how they do these fucking things, these exactly. pieces of shit newspapers. Exactly. And we have a radio show, by the way, and we talked about this very topic. Right. So if you really wanted to right. find out what our side was, 
uh, you know, maybe tune in and find out. Right. The facts, yeah, I smashed one of her guitars. Uh, another fact, I paid her. It was paid on a the spot. A lot of money on this fucking spot. She was very happy. Yes. Walked away, like, with n not, not a problem in the world. Yes. And then appeared on our show after that. Mm -hmm. And I think when you... Uh, took one of our hats that she left behind and, and brought it to the, you know, the shooting range. Yeah. I think she appeared on the show after that as of well. Of course she did. Of course she did. She's a media whore. That's why she's doing this shit. And it's, it's completely stupid on her part. Who the yeah. fuck is going to have her on, on their radio show? I think Howard had her on once, but, you know, she's yeah. not going to be a regular over there. And what, and what, like, what does she actually think she would get to play this out? In a courtroom, what is she going to get? What was the total in the lawsuit? Because I ripped up like five thousand. I ripped up mine. Five, yeah. Go, come find me. I, I ripped it up. Five thousand dollars, and and She's, anybody would look and go, no, look, look, what what did your used fucking felt hat cost? <laughs> so she's gonna. So she. I mean, from her side, logically, she's willing to ruin ruin a uh, relationship with a radio show that's pretty damn popular for five thousand dollars is this the stupidest broad alive yes the stupidest broad alive yes it is she is the stupidest broad alive should we get uh ron the lawyer on the phone I think so. yes can Some we get ron on later man. or soon if he's up i want to i want to see what kind of merit no, there is no merit to this case whatsoever Page seven. Uh, the New York Post thinks it's such an important fucking story. It has to be on page seven. Schlock jocks. Schlock jocks. God, how fucking hack. Isn't that... How hack can you get? Isn't that... Oh, we're on the same page, by the way. Yeah. As the Oslo madman was loaded for terror. Yeah. That That's where the paper decided this needed to be, in that same fucking area. Very nice. There's a plane crash in the Hamptons. It's the Oslo fucking madman, and then our story. And then... All on on the same fucking page. Sandy. Which means they really wanted this story to get a little attention, yeah, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a disaster she is. Oh, my God. There's Iraq uh, smelling Sandy Canes. Yeah, we got a million videos ass. of her. <laughs> we did all sorts of fucked up shit uh, to her because that's that's all she was good for. Yep. And some people understand their place on this radio show. We weren't gonna, we weren't having her in because of her her music quote talent, music, or or because she is quote a comedian. No, she'd always just babble too much. Couldn't get a word in edgewise. What a fucking dope. What a fucking desperate dope. Ugh. You should, you should fucking... When I pass by her in Times Square and she just looks like... looks like she, Her body looks like she was living on Jupiter for a month. <laughs> Everything is just fucking sagging, hanging. What a pig. Right. States her age at 50 what, too? <laughs> I think she said for this lawsuit... I don't, yeah, I don't remember what she said. <laughs> Come on. Not even close. Oh, please. I would bet she's pushing 70 at this yeah, point. Yeah, got to I would bet. Got to Better be, be careful, because she might sue us for getting her age wrong. <sighs> yeah, look out. <laughs> I love these guys, but go fuck yourself. Done. Using us to give a little publicity for yourself. Go fuck yourself. Done, Ski. Oh, God. I'm watching her do a pole dance. <laughs> Rubbing her fucking whatever. Oh. Uh. That disgusting fucking vaginal growth. Ah, oh, what a man. <laughs> she really just does look like an awful man. Ugh. Anyway. Slob. So like that, that that set me off a little so bit. So that's another feature. Huh? So that's another feature to, we, we have to deal with at some point. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All and right. Another ungrateful fuck. Talk to my lawyer. What? Why do I have to pay? I ripped up my lawsuit. That's, I know, that's what I think of her. If you don't answer it, she wins by default. I don't give a fuck. Fucking write the check. I don't give a fuck. I ain't fucking doing... I'm, I'm not appearing in small claims court over this fucking thing. I'll send Sorry. A, I'll send someone in my stead. Sorry. Yeah, there's me with the guitar way up in the fucking air. What? It, did... Uh, we didn't put on this video the, uh, the me paying for the guitar, right? Yeah, because that makes boring radio. After the show, I fucking paid her out. I have witnesses. How much yes. did we end up giving her? $300, I think it was? At least. 
At least? Yeah. I don't yeah. remember. I mean, it's it's been a while. I think it was at least $300. And that guitar, like Ant said, this thing was the worst fucking guitar oh, I ever had in my guitar. hands. It was like a piece of cement. Yeah. I almost broke my fucking wrist trying to break it. I was going for like, you know, a hoot thing. Yeah. And I hit this thing so hard on the ground and the thing, look at it. Yeah. You could see me trying to break it. Didn't even freaking crack no. it first. <laughs> and the face I'm making is like, oh, fuck, that hurt my wrist. <laughs> it was a really heavy... Heavy fucking guitar. What are you, what are you doing? Eh. <clears throat> oh god, a right. Enough for her. Ripping off someone else's act. Hmm. Now with a naked cowboy. Oh. Naked cowgirl. Oh. How she win that suit? <laughs> Jesus. I don't know. She's allowed to stand there. Okay, I'll give you a card. It's not that at all. Come on, okay. you taking the fucking pictures of me. No meeting. Oh, you did it. She was always chasing after me for another picture. Come on. Okay, one more picture. There's eyes. One of those picked, one of those cameras from fucking. But she would get mad. Seventies. She would get mad if I didn't pose for a picture with her every fucking time she was here. And the reason was because then she would use these pictures to promote herself. Yeah. All right, take your picture. Hey. Hey. Op radio in the head. Oh God. I like how Kenny goes, come on, we got to get to this meeting. And Jimmy's behind going, there's no meeting. There's no meeting. <laughs> there's Jimmy no just, meeting. Jimmy, Jimmy just hung me out to dry. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of which, Jimmy will be back tomorrow. I see young Sam is back in uh, his seat over yes, there. Yes, the young Samuel is back from uh, the overpaid California. Sam Roberts. Oh, yeah. The overpaid Sam Roberts. Why are you saying that? Huh? She's in a bad mood. <laughs> well, well, the trifecta of the bad mood is, and then I have to meet with one of the bosses today. Just me, not not me and Ant. I'm not that guy anymore. That sounds like trouble. I, I'm not. No, because I've done this for years. Where I meet for the show, I don't want to meet for the show anymore. But that was the old. They I wouldn't have had one of those meetings in a long ass time. This, it's it's for the show. Are you sure? For the show. I for the show. I will guarantee it's got to be something to do with just you, though. No. Because they would do, like, they no. always do meetings now where it's both of us. No. I'm telling you. I'll have a full update tomorrow. This is the first time it, they're doing one of these it'll meetings. Be, it'll, be a, it'll be a meeting for the show, and then they will give me the whole laundry list of stuff they still haven't accomplished. Really? Yes. What? Yes. We're working on interns. We're working on raises. We're working on studio lights. Uh. <laughs> We're working on this. We're working on that. We're making progress on this. We're making a little more progress on that. Well, we kicked that one upstairs. Right, exactly. I don't, I don't want to meet with anybody. I don't want to meet with anybody anymore. I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> wow. Not even supposed to be here today. I, I can't make it more clear. I might renegotiate soon, by the way. I haven't told you that yet. Renegotiate? Meaning I need I need to renegotiate this thing or walk. Mid-contract. Yeah, because I've, I've, I've just about had it. I don't want to meet with these people. I like a mid-contract renegotiation. That'd be cool. Yeah. Throw a little monkey wrench into the works. That'd be fun. Or negotiate it out. Say, hey, how about we just take this old contract and rip it up and start over? Yeah. And then maybe you could get happy employees. <laughs> or or maybe we just agree to fucking move on. <laughs> agree to disagree. <laughs> agree to move the fuck on. Because uh, I don't want to meet. What What's the list of things that are still on the table? That's what it is, right I think. Yeah. I mean, the list that I've recorded a, uh, your request is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. Look at his disclaimer. <laughs> Sam just fucking blurted out a disclaimer. Hey, go ahead. Well, this, uh, your list uh, is making progress on interns. When was the last time we had interns? Uh, December. The <laughs> so that was December. But didn't they say... Seven to eight months didn't ago. Didn't they say at least, at least two months ago they were making progress on that? Yes. At least. At list. least. Mm -hmm. How is that making progress? Well, there's so many different chains you have to go through. Yeah. And, and isn't August right around the corner? 
Uh, it's literally a week away. So yeah. that's eight, so we haven't had interns in eight months. A high profile show for this company. Wow, eight months would be, yes, correct. But we're making progress. We're making progress. I okay. think they look at it like, hey, what good are interns if they're able to do a show without them? It's yeah, been a good eight we, months. We've we've proven <laughs> that you could do a show without interns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Raises uh, uh, for the interns? No. Oh. Well, no one has ra has had raises in uh, quite a long time. I don't know what that word is. Including ourselves, by the I way. I thought, I swear to you, it's been so long. When I glanced over there, I thought we were fighting for raisins. I thought we wanted <laughs> raisins in the studio every morning, and they were saying no. And then I realized, now raises? I go, oh, okay, now I you remember. they gave them. Yes. Maybe Opie is getting a raise, and that's uh, what the ah. meeting is about. I know the staff hasn't had raises in at least three years. I yeah. know we haven't had a raise in at least two to three years ourselves. It's been a while. Even though we bring more and more subscribers to this place every fucking day. That's um, why I want to renegotiate. That, that word's going to be thrown around a lot in the next month or two. Ah. Making progress on uh, live events such as Animation Fest, Softball Game, etc. Are we? We're making progress. You know, we're working on a live event, whether it's an animation festival. Or yeah, we're doing one Thursday. Right. But we yeah. don't know what we're doing there. We were just forced to do this thing. We'll just go and, uh, and, and we'll, you know, it'll be good to see, you know, hardcore listeners and all that. We'll but. yuck it up, and right. they say. Stamp yuck it up. But, but there's no reason to do it. No, I mean, that's not a specific reason. And they want us to do a beach party as well. And I, I wrote, I wrote them over the weekend. I said, look, look. Unless we have a plan, I'm not doing a dumb beach party. Sorry. We need real plans around here. Um, like the, like a beginning to end of it kind of walk, yes. walk through plan. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And, and they yeah. want us to do a comedy show. And I'm telling them right now. See, that was a little thing that me and Ant did that we were proud of. That was great. And we, we were able to put some pocket money in our pockets. Come now they want them. us to do that for free as well. And I'm, I'm going to be on record to, and say I'm not doing that either. The big comedy, the comedy tour too, that we used to do. You're not we used to get do... a little taste of that. That oh, was great. You're not going to do the comedy show? No, not for fucking free. Oh. Fuck no. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, no. Everything's free. Everything's free. It goes in with the raisins. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, free raisins. <laughs> what else is on the list? Uh, they're making progress on the online feed. <laughs> That's good. I don't. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, wanna, I, I ex I, like clockwork. I like clock, clockwork. I see the tweets every day. Every day. Mm -hmm. It's forcing me to shut down my Twitter. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I can't deal with more any more complaints about the online feed. Yeah. I can't do it anymore. Yeah. So please, just stop. every fucking day. So people just stop tweeting about it because it's it, we really can't do anything and we know it's there what's gary's email address because he I'm, should i'm not going to tell you he, oh, should, he get, should get he those. should get yeah. the people bitching yeah. and complaining because that's his job tell him to set up an email just for the online complaint feed uh feed uh compl wait the online feed complaints, complaints. yeah you. yeah that yeah. line why don't people tweet i'll give him one day if he doesn't if he oh. doesn't set up a gmail account for that then his regular email goes out over the air tomorrow All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm done with that too i like the sound of that i'm i'm giving him a chance at least you the are. old days we would have gave out emails by now you're like Cause, the because uh... i don't want to spend my afternoons especially because it seems to happen during the replay of my Twitter going nuts with people that are fucking furious over the online feed bitching and complaining saying i'm paying for this shit yeah mm -hmm. that's what they say why don't they tweet when it does work and talk about what a good time they're having listening? Opie's dropping uh, warning pamphlets before yes. the big carpet bombing. <laughs> yes. It's like, please, leave the city. Yes. We're going to do some carpet bombing. Uh, so what you're doing is letting them know, set this Gmail account up. Right. 24 else, hours. Right. Or else it's, it's, it's your account. Also, I'm not doing the NFL uh, fantasy draft this you're Thursday. Not do that? No, because that's, that's uh, four hours of my time. I'm not getting paid for Four hours. Oh, so tell them I'm not doing that. I know they've been promoting that, but I'm not doing that either. You refuse. Of course I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> when they came to me, I thought it was a little quick little thing. Four fucking hours. Yeah. No. No. Okay. See now, I make bet. sure they know that too. When did when did you? Oh. And I kept putting it off, putting it off. So now I got to do it today. Because I bet this football thing's going to be part of that. Well, yeah. I'm not doing it. You're not going. I'll to? walk. Oh boy. I'll fucking walk. Oh boy. Okay, so I have to find a replacement for that. All right, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, also making progress on studio lighting. The oh. lighting that you asked for. I I saw an email that I don't know something. 
<laughs> Didn't we just want kind of like gels on these or something? Yeah, even? yeah but like now, to tone them down a little but then bit. I guess they track lighting. Too. I guess they sort of made progress on it, but then there was another delay. I remember reading something like that. I, I read uh, like the first sentence. I went, okay, more of the same bullshit. So does that stay on the progress list or not? Because this is your list. I'm just do, reading. Do we see studio lighting? I mean, it's I'm, it's not dark. <laughs> <laughs> is it the same <laughs> studio lighting we had? Yeah. That we wanted changed out months and months ago. Yeah. Okay, so it stays, stays on the list, of okay. course. Yeah. Uh, this was, I don't know if he'll appreciate me bringing it up, but uh, Pro Tools for Troy. Is that uh, any progress? I'll was? remember that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. why does uh, why does Troy need Pro Tools? <laughs> uh, to work. <laughs> to do, you know, production, uh, anything creative. Uh, anything besides answering the phones. Okay. Uh, which Are they know, making progress on that? Yeah. I mean, as far as I know, they are. <laughs> uh huh. Okay, Eric just said into my headphones. They yeah. spent two years, but again, that's Eric Nagel. <laughs> so, but it's it, the, it's mean, being worked uh, on. Oh, and Troy Hansen just said two and a half actually. Oh, two and a half years. Two and a half just, years. He's been asking for a ice. simple thing called Pro Tools. And that's what he said. I don't know. This isn't that an easy one to do. I'm just a messenger. What, what could possibly be the problem with that? You'd have to. Ask and by someone. the way, Gary, do not. <laughs> Oh boy! Do not be waiting for me outside this fucking studio today. What if he wants to solve? Do fucking not. What if he wants to solve some of the problems? Oh, God. Do not be waiting for me outside the studio. Oh. That is a massive warning. Trust me on that. You just oh, know no. it's gonna be. Do not do it to yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, you know it's gonna be out. Oh, do no. not right out there. Just kind of stand. I can't there. wait to be podcasting. Oh my god, oh, that's I can't a horrible thing to say. Fucking wait. <laughs> and your meetings today? You said these guys are throwing podcasts up left and right and doing really well. Does it make you envious? Yeah, because well, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. What else? Oh, and the final thing on the list, which is actually just added, which is a Gmail account for fan complaints. Right. Right. And that's a, that's the progress list that I've been given. If I mean, if you want me to add to it, I will. All right. Now that you're back from San Diego, you're gonna march down and request your raise again because you're supposed to do that once a week. Again, it I is mean, once a, it's a weekly thing. It's a weekly. Lines thing. of communications have been open in ways that they weren't before. I've corrected <laughs> some of my mistakes. Uh, I love how they made wow. it. I love how they made it your mistake. Yes. Well, I've just you weren't asking enough, was it? Yeah. We're asking you, so you're allowed to say it on the air. It was suggested to me that maybe uh, the best chance of results would be to change my strategy. <laughs> change your strategy? Yeah. And ask every week. They like more m frequent private conversations <laughs> as opposed to something that's so public. Some public conversation. Yeah. Which I accepted. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, not everybody wants everything out in the public. I, well, of course. You know, just because... I hear you. You know, yeah, because yeah. it because do, it doesn't make good radio. <clears throat> I mean, I wouldn't say it doesn't make good radio. They don't want it on public because it makes them look like idiots. Again, I don't know but, what. I mean, just... people out there can completely relate to that. Where you know you're obviously underpaid, and then you go to the <laughs> to your boss for a raise, like a proper raise, not even like you're not even holding them up, and they turn it on you and and make it your problem That's... that you aren't asking properly. I didn't say it was a, it was a problem. I just said well, new, that's, that's new our, strategies have been enacted. That's our observation or my observation. Uh, new lines of communications are open. <laughs> communication uh, and everything is everything has a much more positive feel to it than it did before. Uh huh. Right. And by the way, the reason Which why is important just so they know down the hall because they're really stupid and dumb. <laughs> I don't know that they really are. We can't just do a willy-nilly beach party. Would I love to hang with the listeners? Absolutely. Yeah. But the last time we had a willy-nilly beach party, a lot of people got arrested. <laughs> we had to flee fucking Buffalo before we got arrested. And they were they were looking to arrest us, come down to New York City and arrest me and Ant. But then what happened was we did the St. Pat's thing, which took precedent. <laughs> yeah. And then the Buffalo people said, oh, they're in a world of fucking hell. We don't need to fucking pursue this anymore. They're, they're fucked. So what you're saying is this is not that show. I don't feel it like going through really that really. again. Yeah, yeah. Because if we don't have a plan, that means all of a sudden, if there's vegetables around, we are going to ask girls to you know shove it up their pussies. It, uh, and their it'll, assholes. It'll happen. Yes. Can't help yourselves. You know, and, and I wrote that email. I wrote that email over the weekend, and none of them, none of them write me back. So, 
And I think they want that to go down in two weeks. Two, a beach party in two weeks with absolutely, absolutely no fucking plan. Where you're expected not to have girls shoving vegetables in their orifices. Right. <laughs> doesn't make sense. Because remember, we showed up in Buffalo, and we're like, oh, fuck. And they're like, hey, man. And we're like, huh. It's like, oh, well, we got strippers. Right. And we got a volleyball net. <laughs> right. So, you know, we'll just do some stripper volleyball. We'll drink with the things. And we're like, yeah, that's cool. After a few beers, <laughs> I saw things I have not seen I haven't till seen since. then and have not seen since then Right, uh, happen on, on see, anywhere. See, it was a radio station we used to be on. So they gave us ahead of time, like Ann said, local strippers that were up all night before they showed up mm. and a volleyball net. Of course they were up all that night. That was it. And they said, the rest is up to you guys. whatever you guys want to do, have fun. Right. We're like, oh, okay. Hey, anybody got a zucchini? Right. <laughs> The because. things, the things they almost got us on that day. Thank, uh, in a way, thank God we had the St. Pat's thing. It sort of saved us from criminal charges. The horrified faces of mothers and, and their children, and as, their children, as two strippers are are lezzing out in the sand oh, instead just. of playing volleyball. Because guess what? Oh God, I guess the I guess the strippers found the volleyball very very monotonous after the first minute. Yeah, yeah. And decided it was much better to start. There, there's <laughs> is that an actual picture? <laughs> yeah, <Yes>. that's a, <laughs> that's from your last. That's from our last wow. beach party, you idiots. That's why I'm not going into this without a plan, and that's why you need to at least acknowledge that I wrote you over the weekend. How could a girl spread her legs so far apart? We're looking at a girl that's completely naked. It's her vagina. And a yeah. bunch of guys that are obviously strangers are holding her up and pulling her legs apart so she could show her pussy to the world. Whoever the gets the, of it. Whoever gets the uh, bigger half makes a wish. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because it looks like they're just pulling her apart. Oh, by the way, no complaints. I would love to do this type of party again. But, oh, but you know you have no one that will support you in the end. No, So no. we're the ones that have to take the rap. What, what is that one now? There's a girl <laughs> laying on the beach. Yeah. Her feet are, she's naked. Her feet are behind her head. And uh, I believe something is about to be inserted inside of her. Uh, there's two other strippers, naked. I don't know what's happening in that photo. No. I can't even tell you. Yeah, let's uh, see another one. Uh -oh. Uh, well, there's... There seems to be lesbian sex. Yep. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Look at how many of these girls are just nude, humping each other. <laughs> they paired off. Yeah. Was this a private beach? No. No. <laughs> Open to the public that oh, no. day. No. Oh. It was one of those bar beaches. Oh, and wow. then like if you were part of the public that weren't at that actual bar, you could just walk the beach right past yeah. the bar. That and like type twenty, of place. Okay. yeah, twenty, twenty yards away from that, I would say, mm -hmm. were blankets with families on them, having lunch and yeah, swimming yeah. in the water. Yeah, just enjoying a day at the beach. Right, building sandcastles. Oh, sandcastles! All the things you do at the beach. Your pail and shovel. What Lesbian else? sex. Lesbian sex. Vegetables being. Why don't we have inside. the vegetable pictures? I don't know. Maybe the oh, wow. okay. vegetable council got to. What are the what were the pictures that are now xed out? Is what I, I need would to, love know. to know. Oh. Those are probably the vegetable pictures. Big Opie and Anthony logo. Oh yeah, it's. Perfect. I'm not that's, saying that's we. Nice. I'm not saying we didn't have a great time. It was one of the best times I ever had in my life. That I, woman is wearing nothing but credentials. <laughs> <laughs> She's taken a, like a backstage pass credential you wear around your neck and put it around her waist. And the little uh, credential part is just flopping around oh. in front of her vagina. I thought she attached it to her clip piercing. <laughs> she may have. I don't know. You could still see her vagina. And, and look at the volleyball. Shot. The volleyball is just by itself on, on the sand. It hasn't moved Lonely. in hours. In, <laughs> right. Every shot, there's smiling guys clapping and drinking. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, no. Come what, on. What now, is that one Now describe for? that picture. There is a woman uh, with a giant um, uh, uh, b pussy vulva. And, and she's either really fucked up or in the middle of an orgasm. I, yeah, yeah. I don't know which one is, 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 is the case here. She's sitting on... What is she sitting on? Some a, kind of railing. It a looks railing like. with, with the... What is it? I don't know. Something looks like it's in her ass. <laughs> I think maybe she's having sex with the railing. Yeah. That could be. And then she, uh, she's got her arm on a guy, I think, around his waist. Or penis. Or penis or something. What the hell is with these pictures? By the way, Pro Tools 9, full version, is $600. Troy's been waiting for a $600 oh, machine geez. for two and a half years. 
There's a whole bunch of complications to go uh, along with it. All right, there's another picture of the girl right. who's <laughs> taking the uh, fence post in the ass, yeah. and now a guy has decided to try to fist her. No, he's putting no. something green up her yeah, pussy. There's something green oh, there. I, I can't see the green. It's thing. some sort of dildo oh, or, or right. cucumber. It could be a and, cucumber. And I, I pretty much know for certain that they didn't know each other going into this. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not a husband and wife team. This is one of our lucky listeners. We're like, yeah, why not? <laughs> Come stick something in her. <laughs> Come stick something in the girl. <laughs> <laughs> what is this psych? I don't want to give the site out because it'll probably crash. It's if you know, we'll it- give it out at the end of this discussion. Just, yeah. All right. What else? Um, this is from the last beach party. Did they do their research? Yeah. The how about you research and, and and look at this? And 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 the email I sent this weekend wasn't because I was in a bad mood or anything. I started thinking I don't want to get in this situation again because I know this company will not support us if right. any of this shit goes down. So if we don't have a real reason to do a beach party, we can't do it. Because this is what will happen no matter what we we say. <laughs> They're all naked. They're all naked riding the rail. It's just pump. riding on the rail. <laughs> just humping a railing. And, and was there body paint that day? Because I see no, some I, girls wearing nothing but paint. No, that's that's the paint that rubbed off the stuff they were rubbing on. Like, look, see that chick? What well, is maybe, that on her? Maybe. She's just wearing like a... Maybe smattering of blue and pink paint. Maybe we did boob art or something. I don't know. Oh, we might have done uh, yeah, boob art. Who the fuck knows? There's little kids from Buffalo running around the beach 20 yards away. Oh, yeah. No, oh. oh, yeah. Oh, no. This is uh, like nine years ago. Oh, this had... Nine been... years ago this summer. There was no security at this event. No. It was People just... Could... There were... You didn't have security? No, it was nude women and drunk men. There was no one telling us, don't Sam, do this. You weren't around then. No, I wasn't. We were going to get fired for this and arrested. <laughs> do you yeah. understand? And then um, a mere two weeks later, we did the St. Pat's thing. Yeah, let me, let, me, let me make this perfect, there were, uh, perfectly there clear. There were warrants out for our arrest at the time. <laughs> I do remember that. And, and, and uh, the people around us were warning us that it's coming at any moment. I, I oh really want to make this very, very clear. Please do. What you're looking at. Looks amazing and fun and cool. Mm -hmm. It is completely illegal. Yeah. (laughs) It's against the law. You cannot have completely nude lesbian girls on a beach, public beach, shoving shit in their vaginas. Because, well, you're not even supposed to have nude people on the beach. Right. Let alone people performing sex acts on each other. Live sex acts on the beach in front of families. I would assume there would have been a sodomy charge. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. At the very least. Oh, yeah. yeah. We would have been inciting fucking some kind of sexual rioting. I I know how we squashed this coverage down. The local news was starting to do massive stories on this. How did you squash it? By having a couple have (laughs) sex, allegedly, because to this day, I really don't know if they did. Yeah. uh, In St. Pat's. In St. Pat's. So you guys were actually. So then the Buffalo news station is like, fuck, we got to (laughs) go with the, the, the. Possible sex in a church stuff. They did use the local angle when they tied it in. They said this was, of course, the same duo that was on the beach and, you know. So you guys, this with l- let me see more of these pictures. I haven't seen these in a while. There uh, used to be videos of this shit too. Yeah, you guys were lucky that you got fired because otherwise you would have gotten fired gotten arrested. and arrested. Yeah, we yeah. go start from the beginning again. Okay, and just go through every picture okay. really fast. You want to see how it? Because okay. I can't. Okay, the thumbnails. Look how it progresses. There's a volleyball net. And there's girls with. Look at those girls with shirts on. They're scantily clad. Yeah, but, but they are uh, I, clad. This the, looks like how the beach party that we'd be doing would start. Right. Right. I, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm trying to tell these guys. <laughs> you could say I'm just in a bad mood being an asshole, and that's fine if you want to go with that route. But I'm also sh- I'm throwing some major fucking logic at you. Wow. Okay. Next picture yeah. is. Right. All right, uh, now the now girls in thongs and showing I, their asses a little bit. Sure, they kind of painted stuff on their on their butt cheeks, but they're wearing thongs. Yeah, go ahead. Everything's still on the up and up. Okay, now. well, there's a girl <laughs> completely right. naked. Three I guess, photos in. <laughs> three photos in. She's completely naked. I think she was the one that started it because the rest of the girls still sort of have clothes on. And the volleyball uh, court, as it were, the part of the beach that they've roped off, is still cleared as a volleyball uh, right. uh, uh, right. court. It, it hasn't yet been overrun by male fans shoving shit inside girls' vaginas <laughs> right, right. on a public beach. So you're not allowed to incite an orgy on a public beach? I don't think you can. Okay. I don't think you could be the ones that, that organize 
a live sex orgy the, on a public beach. The Tell only me. defense I, I have is these girls were loose and willing, by the way. Loosey goosey. You got to love them they, Buffalo uh, girls. They they went with it big time. You talked about families on the beach. Tell me, what time of day was this? Oh, wow. This might have been. Two in the afternoon. Two in the <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> hot day. <laughs> beach. On what time of the year? Summer. Oh, so the kids was, were out of school. Oh, out of school. Great. Oh. Loving it. And she's <laughs> now naked girl is talking to another one of the strippers oh, and going, How do my tits look? That's that's how I, I think I'm reading her lips. But if you look behind, yeah. one is on her knees behind another who's on all fours. Yes. Oh, yes, I see that. Yes. Okay, so yes. Starting yes. debauchery. Yeah, and yeah. I think she's telling the girl, Hey, why don't you take your clothes off? Right. <laughs> like that's the chat right. that's going on right there. And you guys were saying, What, leave them on? Or, Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We were just exactly. screaming, No, leave them on. Okay. Do we're you know, like, we're, here's, here's, our contribution. Hey guys, you want to see some pussy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, welcome to TNA with ONA. Let me tell you something, guys. We are gonna see some fucking assholes get shit shoved in it. What do you say, motherfucker? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and, and there's a mom down the beach with some bologna sandwiches going. Did I just hear motherfuckers? And yeah, shove shit in their assholes and yeah, it's the beach. What you know, happened? You know how bad this non-broadcast was. They had a local uh, DJ that was sort of um, broadcasting live, but we didn't have to broadcast live. And no, he, he kind of interviewed us a little bit, but they didn't want to stop the music because it's the weekend, and you got to you got to play that music for everybody. It's out all about there. the music, right? The FCC. Wanted to fine us, even though it wasn't wasn't a broadcast. That's how aired. bad this was. There were complaints into the FCC about this, and it never aired. The federal and the FCC, there's no communications. In there's the nothing going on <laughs> in their jurisdiction. But the FCC took it seriously, and we're trying to find it in, in their books something that we some kind of law we broke. They heard what happened. And were horrified because they thought all of it went out over the air. They're trying to see if they could fire the DJ who just happened to be there. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, but nothing really went on the air. But nothing went on the air right, about continue. about that. Oh, now the girls just feeling nah, each she's other. Feeling, they're feeling tits. I thought they were supposed to be playing volleyball. Well, well, there's the, uh, I guess, is that one girl wearing a thong or anything right there? No, <laughs> no right. No, 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 no she's completely. Yeah, there's naked. nothing going on. Bottomless. There. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sunglasses. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Good. Good. Yeah, you want well, to protect your eyes. I think. Oh, but now. Now we got now we got one two three girls three naked. girls no four naked. Uh, the one in the background too yeah and then that girl's uh, walking toward the sidelines to throw her clothes to down throw her somewhere clothes out. Yeah, where yeah. she can find them later okay <laughs> continue this was on a public beach yes good luck uh, where were we yeah right yeah, where right. were we I know exactly no yeah. we did that one yeah right, right yeah, there the yeah <laughs> we saw that one yeah okay. the girl with the uh, her, her ankles are literally her head. behind her ears. Oh, oh that gosh. picture is so outrageous that it's blurry because whoever who took this picture was like, holy shit, I can't believe I'm seeing this. There is someone <laughs> being straddled by two <laughs> naked women, straddled on the penis and straddled on the face. Was this the last time you guys did it? No, no, party? it's three girls. Aunt. Is that a girl? I thought it was a fun a listener. No, it's blurry. So the one girl sitting on... Uh, her face, and the other girl is grinding her her vagina into her vagina. And if you look to the right, Opie, you'll also see a girl standing up and another girl doing a handstand yeah. in front of the girl standing up with her legs spread, yeah. and the girl is licking her pussy yeah. as she is doing the uh, handstand. Mean, and and if you've noticed, the perimeter of the volleyball court is starting to slowly move in. <laughs> so <laughs> it's more like a circle of fucking uh, I think, accomplices. I think our listeners at this point are a little confused. Like, wait, are we going to still play volleyball? Yeah. They're so, not hey, really on. sure. I, I had money on this game. Right at your last beach party. I just want to admit, you had women performing oral sex nude on each other. Yes, complete the beach. nudity in and the oral sand. sex on a public beach. And there, I see that, it was there, is there a tent somewhere outside of the in frame? In every guy's pants. Okay, just But there. none that would have uh, afforded any, any privacy. Okay, continue. Uh, <laughs> wait, are we up to that point? Yeah. All right, girl. That's just a blurry, yeah. All right. 
Yeah, keep going. Those are just a topless girl. At this point, it's just a topless girl. That's right. one of my favorites. There's the girl this. with her legs spread further apart than any girl I've and ever are, seen. Are those listeners getting to hold her yeah. up in the air? Oh, yeah. who would This they guy be? thinks that we're so cool that he just won a naked girl to bring home. Because <laughs> he, he probably did. Because he's carrying her like, holy shit, this is what I won today. And he's trying to, he's trying to go to his car, and we had to stop him. Little does oh. he know he won chlamydia. <laughs> right. <laughs> because that, uh, that looks a little skanky. Uh. And it and, appears in one of his... His hands he's actually holding her bikini bottom he's got the bottoms in his hand, uh, in his hand he is a gentleman's hand. <laughs> yeah yeah he's, he's making a gentleman. sure no, no sand gets in there sure but uh and another guy next to him looks like uh when's my turn <laughs> right like they're just gonna pass her around do we all get a nude woman they mm -hmm. all get a nude home. woman to, to mm -hmm. hold like that mm -hmm. right <laughs> Uh, it's this uh, fucking ridiculous. All right, that's <laughs> it's just the ba big orgy. This is actually an orgy taking place. That's on the, the beach. big orgy going on. <laughs> and you notice the one guy with two beers in his right hand, and he's debating what he's going to do next. Wearing Mardi Gras beads yeah. around his neck. Yeah. And this was on like a Saturday afternoon. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This was just. I, I honestly think it started around noon or one. Oh yep. my god. And it was all day. So yeah. People could have just been having lunch. Oh yeah. All right, more. <coughs> it's amazing. More uh, shots from above as uh, girls are pairing off in the middle of the volleyball court. Yeah, oh, volleyball wow. court. I mean, that's... That just says it all, right and there. I don't know what's going There's on. There's literally one, two, oh three, four pairs of naked women going at it in all so all sorts of different ways. Look at her technique. She's on her knees. And she's given like, you remember the China punch where she would fucking hit your groin? Uh -huh. yeah. but that's what it looks like she's doing, but she's actually fingering the girl that's yes. standing in front of her. You see that? I see that. It's beautiful. And this girl's eating her, that girl's ass out. <laughs> she's, eating her ass out. <laughs> she's eating her ass. And those two girls are just grinding vaginas on the beach. And what the fuck is the one in the back? I can't even see what's going I on there. I can't see. It's a mess of hair see, and legs. Uh... And, and then the one girl with her arms folded, like, what oh. the fuck? Who am I going to have sex with? The ass eating I, I is could, great. I could be mistaken, but it looks like they may be uh, scissoring a little bit. All right. Oh, some scissoring. Yeah. I thought that girl was eating that girl's pussy like that, but no, she is firmly entrenched in her ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she yeah. Is She's got her ass in the air. Gaping mouthfuls of that other girl's asshole. Right. <laughs> Do you know for sure whether or not this beach had an insertion rule? Oh, oh I bet. Right. I bet. There's more uh, pics from uh, the sidelines. Yes. You know, at this point, everyone in Buffalo swears they were at this thing. This thing is <laughs> so like legendary. We haven't yeah. talked about it in a while. A uh, girl with just massive boobs, naked. It is like a Woodstock vibe. Oh. People, oh, what God. is she How doing? Is she, she's shoving something in her, and she can't get her legs far enough apart. Her legs are completely spread as she's on the on her back, and I guess she's trying to yeah shove something up her. You know what I <laughs> that do? That picture like? is overexposed. It is overexposed. We got to run that through uh, Photoshop. Yeah. Take the levels down. Uh, you know what I like uh, about every picture? Huh. The volleyball seems to show up in every shot. <laughs> sure. Just laying on the ground. Look, there it is. <laughs> oh, there it there is. There it is. Right Lonely. next to the girl shoving something in her vagina on the public beach. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's just endless. <laughs> now, this, guy, this guy's giving a woo. Are these two guys right here security that are just kind of looking around like, what are we supposed to do now? Uh, they might be guys from the bar, but okay. uh, they're just getting a closer view. And By I the way, this bar never sold more beer than they did that day. We, yes, they told us. Uh, and they were it was kissing legendary. our ass. They're like, holy shit. We're, we're at this point just serving warm beer. I think they had to go and find beer. They had to go out they and ran get out. beer. And then in the press, that's why I fucking hate all these fucks. Oh, I hope you they didn't tell us that this was going on. You know, now we're like the scourge of society. But when it was all going down, yeah. they had no problem with it. I like how the volleyball perimeter in that picture, it's now completely round. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a circle that is slowly, slowly coming in toward the talent, as I like to call the girls, the talent. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Oh, more girls more just girls. licking, Dude. socking, fucking. We're going to give out the website in a second, by the way, so don't yeah. worry. Oh, look um, at this. That's the 69 position. Yeah, oh, there's a 69 going on. Is that on from right another there. angle or is that another 69 pairing? Uh, that's another pairing. That's nice. not a separate angle. Nice. Because the same guy is in all the pictures. All right. Um, yeah. You know, if this would have happened like. Keep going. You go faster now. Could you imagine if this happened like more recently? Because I see some real old school cameras there and stuff. There would have been just oh graphic HD video oh of all God. this. Yeah. Uh, like I said, this is nine years this ago. Is nine years ago, yeah. So there's a wow. lot of regular cameras and 
few digital cams, but what is going on there? I'm a little confused by that. It, I, I, three to four girls, women, yeah. Three to four women in some kind of they're piled dialogue. on top of each other. Wow. All right. And another guy is like toasting his friend there yeah. for being there. There's security. There's security. <laughs> There's one security guy. Security is right up front too, just watching the girls. Well, because he at wants it. he wants a good look at the whole. And there's a there's that's a great picture, Sam, because that shows you the public beach. Oh, yeah. oh right, There's right. There's not yeah. much going on there, but now you can see. Oh, like, wow. Like people pull up their family boats. Yes, there were boats. Oh, I forgot about the boats. They would pull their family boats up to the shoreline because this part of Buffalo is happening. There's a bunch of things you could do. And they jump off their boat or hang out on their boat for the afternoon. But do you remember what happened? No. Like the boats are all hanging out when the girls started getting naked and eating each other's assholes right. on a public beach. <laughs> right. The boats, like an armada, remember that? They all moved over to the one area right in front of, of the bar. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot about that one. Okay. But you can see there's like families and stuff in yeah, the background. Yeah, there's beach chairs set up. Yeah, that's that has nothing to do with us. <laughs> that has nothing to how do close, with us. How close? How uh, close was the, this? We were seeing beach chairs, families, boats. How close was that to the orgies that you were having? Oh, it's right there. No, no joke. Less than a hundred feet. Oh yeah. my god. No joke. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's the, the VIP the area. The VIP area. <laughs> what the fuck is the VIP area? That's where we got to stand so we wouldn't have to deal with the riffraff. Uh. And uh, the girls are up there now, though. Um, there are chicks there that day. I do believe. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember. We had Wait a minute. We had come from somewhere the night before this, too. Yeah. We We uh, were somewhere else. Yeah. We, we had like a duel. We, uh, we had to take a plane. Yeah, we were we were doing some kind of tour. I forget. I don't remember. I don't uh, remember what we did the day yeah. before. I'll say the problem with the VIP area too is that it's raised, so uh, this woman who's got her legs spread on the railing is above everyone. Yeah. So even the people who couldn't see the orgy because of all the guys around them yeah. in the public part of the beach. Oh yeah. Well, that's what we decided. Well, fuck <laughs> if this is going oh, on, train. we got to get the girls higher up, which means more people on the public beach. Could yes, have taken yes, a look. yes. Yes. You're yes. absolutely right. Right. Guilty as charged, sir. And then the X pictures, those are the really bad ones. That's why those pictures are X'd out in the thumbnails. Jesus. Because I don't see any of the really bad ones that I, that I used to see from this event. Like the one with the... Uh, was, was it a zucchini? It was or? a zucchini. That, the zucchini was the showstopper. Yeah. <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> yeah, I think that was finally it. <laughs> that was the big one. Oh, look, the girls are just hanging, chatting, yeah. just chit-chatting. <laughs> That He's guy's just licking one of the girl's legs. And is this guy's camcorder is is aimed directly right. at her vagina. Where's that footage? That guy has enjoyed that, that footage for the shit. last nine years. He's, yeah. yeah, you're right. He's like a foot away from her vagina. He's got some good shit right there. All right, continue, Sam. Sam. Uh, Come on, wow. Sam. There's we that. did we that picture, that one. There's some uh, there's this there, insertion. There's, now a lucky listener gets to just fucking <laughs> poke at her vagina. A lucky with listener things. just <laughs> sticking something inside her vagina. Oh yeah, now there the she sugar. is getting off and grabbing some guy's balls. <laughs> yeah, L another lucky listener. Uh, ah, there oh, you go. Okay, now she's got the fence. <clears throat> this picture, she's got the fence post in her ass and some kind of green device in her vagina. Number one, look at all the hands that are touching I, I, her. I was just gonna say, how many men hands does it take to spread her legs apart? And number two, look down. Here in the corner at this guy's disposable camera, right we, in her vagina. We yeah. sold a lot of disposable cameras that day. <laughs> oh, I'm sure CVS loved developing those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably a lot of those fucking pictures have never been developed. Yeah. <laughs> there oh, she is. The girl just fence post in her ass in and her a vagina. Green thing in her pussy. And but look at the help she's getting from everybody. Yeah. Isn't that nice? That is nice. <laughs> People do come around to help when they see some uh, somebody that needs a, a hand. Yeah. A real sense of assistance. Yeah. A real sense of community. Right, more Who's of that same. laughing? <laughs> I don't know. Everybody's having a good time. And oh, finally, the last page. God. This is only one website, by the way. There's there used to oh, be a yeah, there yeah. used to be a lot more pictures online. I, I really think the authorities got involved because those X's, yeah, yeah, those pictures were were, were removed. I uh, you go fast now. It's just a lot of girls on uh, railing. <laughs> oh my god, what is going on there? Oh, Mike, that's a bottle of yeah, that's water. A, no, I don't think it's water. It looks like some kind of hard lemonade. Oh, or, oh it's like a Mike's hard lemonade. Like I think that. bottle. That she's shoving up her pussy. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. what the kids needed to see that day. 
<laughs> like and I said, I'm on, not complaining. And she's on the railing, so like you said, she's up high. She's as high as somebody could be so at that point. Anybody bar. going to the beach would see a woman completely nude shoving a bottle of alcohol up her vagina. Oh, yeah, absolutely. She's a good two feet above everyone's head on the beach. Yeah. So anyone behind can see. You know, you want a good view. Sure. You don't want an obstructed view of a woman shoving a fucking... Zima bottle up her pussy. <laughs> or like a family coming in on their boat. As they come in, they see a crowd. Oh, right. what's going on on the beach today? What's going on there? Is that... Oh. Oh, it's a woman. <laughs> oh, I see. It's a woman shoving a fucking bottle up her pussy. Yeah. Uh, where are we? <laughs> Who's on mic there? I don't know. Have you noticed something? What? Not one shot of us in any of these pictures. No, because we're not stupid. <laughs> I know. I, any other shots? I was just thinking, it's like, hey, you know something? There were a lot of fucking people there. They, That's uh, oh my oh yeah. They ran out of parking. I remember there was a line all the way down the street. I think a bunch of people started. You found another uh, site. Oh, oh, there's wow. Oh my god. Check out these uh, video clips. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to download the zip files. Really? Oh boy. What is that a picture of or a video of? This one. Well, I think it's a girl shoving something in her vagina. Well, the thumbnail's so small. I I see that, but I'm yeah. trying to figure out what. Yeah. Let's see what I can do here. See what you could do there. It's downloading. Yeah, it's relatively quick. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see one of these. Mm -hmm. All right. That looks good. Something download complete. Okay, and, good. Now, uh, find so it. let's, this let's is just open it up. Shit. and Yeah, this is like old school, right? Remember this? Oh, my God. Now, where do you go? <clears throat> this is very complicated. Wow. Here we is go. that it? Okay, here we go. All uh, right. One of the videos from that day. I haven't seen uh, this. Oh, wah, 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 Windows wah, Media wah, Player wah, wah, wah. ain't playing that shit. Why Maybe isn't it playing it's that probably shit? probably too old. It's well, it was in a fucking wacky format. Oh, I really? Bet. Yeah. That isn't supported by uh, Windows Media File, but I'm sure something else is supported. Oh, boy. We'll just have to find that. Yeah, I mean, we should find that. Download them all and, and have fun What watching, do the videos look it? like there, Sam? Well, it's hard to see from my angle. They're the, this one these thumbnails I, are tiny. This one that I tried to download, that woman looks like she's putting something in her vagina. Okay. So that's the one I wanted to share with you. There's one Thank over here. Thank you, Sam. I really appreciate the sharing. That's you, and that's Jim, Opie. So you're in this oh, video. Oh, right. You're in uh, that one. Uh, I saw me somewhere, too. And, I saw uh, a photo of you. Oh, okay. Uh, there's the oh, photo. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. And, <laughs> and Steve C. is there videoing, so he has video of somewhere. Of course he does. Probably. Of course. Um, there's one of women actually on the railing, right. bending over. How do we? How do we open these files? I don't know. I, think I gotta have see to... these files. Yeah, I gotta see some of these. Can we give out the other website? The MPEGs. <laughs> this is the last beach party we had. Yeah, you can ago. give out the other website. So we, we're done with that. Hence one. the email over the weekend to the idiots down the hall that you know supposedly this uh, this. Um, this party is scheduled for maybe two and a half weeks from yeah. right now without a plan. Mm -hmm. no and plan. fuck, I would redo this party in a second. Don't get don't get me wrong, but no one's going to support us if this shit goes no, down. No, no, we'll get arrested. Oh, look at this! What what happened there, Sam? I'm trying some different players. I saw what happened with the real real player. Is that, was that going to work? Oh no! It uh, needs to download a new. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Permissions. Oh man, that's a bad one. Because big, I'm being told. Big exclamation uh, point! That it will work with VLC player. What's a VLC player? It's just a, it's a it's a media player on the computer. It's not on this computer. Uh huh. Oh, everyone's saying VLC player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, VLC. It, it'll work with VLC. <laughs> uh, so we could download a VLC player. Oh, that's right. You can't download anything can't download on that computer. That. No, you're not allowed to. God forbid. <laughs> so, but we can, we'll take, don't give out this website so we can extract the files. All right, give out the first website where you, you can see the pictures we just described yeah. uh, from our last beach party nine years ago where uh, they were absolutely coming for us and we're going to try to arrest us. And then we did the sex for Sam thing. Yeah. And that threw uh, them off the scent. They realized <laughs> at that point we were in deep shit. <clears throat> and just so you know, those pictures that are X'd out, those were really. You think the pictures you're about to see were bad? Yeah. The yeah. ones that are now X'd out, those were the fucking really bad ones. I guess ones. they were considered like hardcore pornography. Sure, sure. And uh, could be a problem. All right, what, what's the site? If you go to sexybuffalo.com slash Opie and Anthony. Okay. All the photos are there. Okay. Sexybuffalo.com. Sexybuffalo.com. Wow. Nice. Oh, that's not a good sound. And we're not going to be able to see those other videos? 
doesn't look like it. Not yeah. right now. I mean, we'll get. Oh, them. we'll pull them. Yeah, yeah. We'll. Yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> right. I gotta see those <laughs> memories. <laughs> Trip down memory lane. <laughs> yeah. Oh, brother. Mm-hmm. But so do you want to do the beach party or no? Nope. No. Oh. Nope. <laughs> not without a plan. That's what I said to the whoever over the weekend. Not without a plan because I know they're not supporting us in whatsoever. If God forbid anything goes down. And things go down when we don't have a plan. Yeah. And like I said, don't I, I would love to do this exact same fucking thing. Trust me. Yeah, believe me. It'd be great. Trust me. It would be, it would be great for everybody. It's but very cool. I know we'll get arrested, and God the company damn. will make believe they didn't. We never worked for them. Holy shit. Wow, Jesus. Uh, I was a fucking stud, man. <laughs> <laughs> you like yourself there? Oh, yeah, I do. I was a bloaty mess. <laughs> oh, bloody, bloaty. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. Wow. A while ago. Only what, this is another website? Oh, yeah, the pictures m- aren't quite as good, but this there's is... There's a multitude of It's the same things. website. Uh, as the, uh, ah, it says, uh, <clears throat> ticket to TNA with O&A show, $10. Nice. 10 bucks. Pitcher of beer, $6. Nice. Economical. Finding a naked chick in the guy's bathroom washing sand and zucchini juice off herself. <laughs> priceless. Ah, that is the priceless <laughs> moment right there. And there she is, washing out her vagina. Yep, sand. And, <laughs> uh, luckily, she still has her credentials on, though. Yeah, in case, yeah, VIP bathroom. In case yeah. that you thought the guy was lying, there is the picture of her washing yeah. out her vagina. VIP <laughs> for them meant a vegetable in pussy. <laughs> right. That was the VIP so area. Mark, Mark Marin, everyone. <laughs> hey, she Shit, there he is. <laughs> and the radio station was probably super happy that their uh, logo was right there on the credentials for oh, everyone yeah. to see. Oh, of course. Yeah. They so, couldn't have been happier. Signage. All signage. right. We uh, we should break. Oh, Mark yeah. Maron's early. We'll get him in. Don't matter. I think Joe DeRosa's coming by today. Oh, too. yeah. He's here. Oh, Joe's here, too? All right. We'll get both of them in after the, after yeah. the break. Uh, anything else? Wow. There's the wanted poster that someone jokingly made, but that, that, that yeah. was not a joke. <laughs> I'm telling you, Haunted. it was getting close. That's something. It was getting close. The company was trying to figure out what to do because they're like, well, we can't fire them because it wasn't an actual broadcast. How come so Norton hasn't? Confused. How come Norton hasn't changed a bit? Because you just shave your head. I think you can. Is that it? I think you can look the same if you just shave your head. Like, he looks, looks exactly, exactly the, the same. same. It's nine fucking years he ago. He actually looks a little better now because he's lost weight. Right. Yeah, and he wears that exact shirt to this day. Yes. <laughs> he looks exactly the same. Jimmy looks the same. Which I'm not sure, you know, if that's good or bad, because did he just look old then? <laughs> no, it's because he Or does shaved, he look, like, it, young now? It's because he ageless. shaved his head. He is ageless. So he's you don't ageless. know if he's going gray or losing hair or any of that shit, yeah, maybe because, that's it. you know, he's got, he's got the, the shaved head I, I thing going you. on. All right. Wow. I don't know what we accomplished here, but people are checking out some really good pictures right oh, now. Yeah. I guarantee have that. Fun well, have fun with it. You probably have pissed off some people. It's, if Again? You what do you mean? What are you rolling your eyes? That's you went on the air and said, I can't wait to podcast. <laughs> <laughs> of course. That's, that's where gonna... the world's going, though. I know. You work I... less and you probably can make about the same money. I these haven't, even, uh, cons- I haven't even considered that, to tell you, you the truth. Really? No, it's no. Got the, it's got a state-of-the-art fucking <laughs> Oh, you could use facility. that for podcasting. I never even you know thought what? of that. Huh. Uh, you should see. I just put my mics in over the weekend. They did better than anything in this shitty studio. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that Ann has a better studio in his house? <laughs> it's amazing. And 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 look, I, I know you you spent some money on it, but it wasn't like holy shit money. No, yeah, it's you know it's yeah, fucking, but Ant's it's, studio doesn't have the character that this studio has. Oh no, no, not at all. <laughs> I like it here. It's good character, all right. Right. And I'll say again, because I give solutions now. Mm-hmm. The reason this happens over and over again is because they don't fucking do anything to make the make the place better for us. Yeah, we got miserable guys because they haven't had raises in years. Or raisins. Or, or raisins. raisins. I'm hungry. Oh, shit. Oh, can I raisin back there? Starving. All out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the whole list that we already fucking said, but that's the reason. You know, and then we hear we're making progress on this and that. And then you you kind of look back and go, well, you said that months ago. Yeah. How can you be yeah. making progress on something that you told me what you were making progress on two to three months ago? Doesn't making progress mean it's right around the corner about to happen? That would be progress. It means it's moving. It's progressing. It's a lot of stuff that has to get done here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit, man. I feel bad for you younger guys, man. Yeah, what are you going to do? 
I feel bad for you fuckers. You don't have to. It's a great I would have never stayed in radio if it was like this. I would have never stayed in radio. Mm. No? No. I, I would suggest to you guys you move the fuck on. What, do I, what am I going to do? Try to I find something else. Spent too. I've spent my almost my entire twenties Move 20s. somewhere else in the in the media world. Yeah. PFC TV. If I was going through what PFG. you guys are going through, PFG. Th there's no fucking way I would have stayed in this business. At least we saw what this could have been, and we and we you know we we did real well for ourselves. I don't know how you guys ever do well for yourselves because hmm. they try to just keep you fucking down. I was born to broadcast, though, so yeah, you'll continue you know, broadcast. Yeah. I don't know what to do, huh? I don't know what, where, how, who, when, when, whatever. I but wanna, uh, I'll just enjoy my life. I don't, I'm just, I, I don't I'm really, born to broadcast. I don't, really need to, I don't even really need yeah, to broadcast this anymore. way. Exactly. Fuck that. What? Who would want to keep broadcasting after this experience? Yeah, Anthony. my basement. Great. Oh, I forgot Roll you out do. Of bed. You have a studio. I Fucking keep noon. Do a nooner one, two hours. <laughs> Done. Done. No Outside meetings. Outside by the pool. No meetings. No bitching. Yeah. Nothing. I got to meet with myself. Nothing. <laughs> Hey, what did you think of today's show? Call myself an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right. Joe DeRosa and Mark Marin, who has probably the hottest podcast out there. That is true. Yeah. Well, I, he it was, rakes him in. I think he made the New York Times over the weekend. Was that, was yeah, that he, the uh, Times, I believe? <clears throat> he does have uh, quite He's, the podcast. It was the Post? I think, he, I think the Times have done some uh, articles on him as well, but okay. Yeah, the What the Fuck podcast is doing really well for Mark Marin. Really well. Yeah, it's something. It's got a hell of a buzz. So we'll talk to him and uh, our pal Joe DeRosa next. Stay there. The virus. virus. Sirius XM. They try to take you no to rehab. I said no, no, no. Yes, I've been black, but when I come back, you will no, know, no, no. The time if my daddy thinks I'm fine, he's trying to take me go to rehab. I won't go, go, go. I'd rather be at home with, with Ray. I ain't got 70 days because there's nothing, nothing you can teach me. That I can uh, learn from Mr. Hathaway. Did I hear The virus. Serious. Serious XM. You're listening to Obi and Anthony. Obi and Anthony. Oh, I'm very, very happy. We've got Joe DeRosa. And Mark Marin in studio. Thank uh, God. Yes. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to hey. say we'll stop bitching, but then Mark had a, had a thing. Joey had a thing. <laughs> Everyone's so. got a thing. You think everyone has a thing? Everyone's got a thing. Is it bitching? Isn't that what radio's about? Just well, sitting here and bitching sure. about things. It really is. Yeah, a little bit. Well, this thing is very um, simple. But for some reason, they have to make it so complicated that it just it blows up your brain. It literally blows up my brain how how dumb all this is and how easy it is to fix. But they choose not to for whatever reason. Mm. Do you it's even unbelievable. Know do you even know who's in charge here? That becomes a big problem with bureaucratic uh, big business operations. Like, who's the guy in charge? We always talk about when we have an issue. Yeah. Like, I want to go to the guy. There's no and guy. And be able to talk to the guy. And then you realize, oh, my God, there's no guy. No. There's a consortium. There's sure. this. There's yeah. there's there's uh, mid-management people that it's, you go, well, we'll kick it upstairs and, and see if we could it, talk to... It's an I, army of people. It's a Wizard of Oz. Thing. I, I, as far as feeling yeah. like there's a guy to go to, to to change things around here, there's no guy. Well, there's no guy. The, there's the absolutely way. no guy. There's a guy that's supposedly in charge, but you go to him with all these issues, and nothing changes. There's, all the executives do is figure out a way to displace blame so when the shit hits the fan, it ain't on them. Right. That's, all they, that's how they move up. That's how they move sideways. It's like, just make it so it's not my fault. It's not my how shit. How can I push this over to the other guy? And then the guy that you hate, the guy that caused all the problems, he's now the head of another company because he displaced blame the best. 
That's exactly what it <laughs> that, is. That's how this business works. Wow. What did that guy ever do? Nothing. No then what? why is he the king of everything? Because they couldn't hang any shit on him. Yeah. <laughs> it's no longer about accomplishment. No, hell it's, no. It's how much uh, shit you didn't fuck up. Executive right. And survival. how much you could make other people look like they fucked up. Yeah, that's it. When we came here, we had a vision of really building this channel and having a solid, uh, you know, um, I don't know, group of guys that know how to do radio. Mark certainly would have been on that list. But these guys don't want to pay anyone. So now our channel, I, I like it to a point, but it's a lot of replays, and, a, and we were able to get a couple guys in. Yeah. But this should have been, instead Huge. of Mark having a podcast and Bill Burr having a podcast and Bob Kelly having a podcast, all mm. those guys should have been part of this. We could but, have all been hanging out right over here. Oh, uh, yeah. They, they offered oh, Patrice a deal the other day. Yeah. Patrice laughed at him like, are you fucking kidding me? Are they still saying, are they still selling the exposure angle? Hey, oh, boy. It's great exposure. <laughs> it took us years to catch on to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just great exposure. What yeah. the hell does that mean? We're not paying you, yeah. and you, you, we might get you coffee. Yeah, it's free. Yeah. Russ, <laughs> uh, Ru Russ Beneath, comment. Right, I love Russ. He made a great point at, uh, when we, they, they did this coalition a few years back where the comics got together and tried to demand more money and stuff like that. And Russ made a great point about like all the networks that'll come to you and say, "Do this clip show; it's free." I never, oh. but it's great exposure. And he goes, right. "The next time they say that to you, why don't you tell the fucking producer that he's not going to get paid, <laughs> but the show is great exposure for him." He's like, "They'd spit on <laughs> That's it." That's hilarious. They would. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. They, I, it's always a pride thing too. I mean, I, I always, mm. I, I never did those clip shows. Mm. I never did know, one either. But you know what? The the, the the sad side of that is, mm. a lot of guys took off from those clip shows. I, I was the know. guy. <laughs> when, when Chelsea Handler got her show, when she first got her show, I had shot my uh, Comedy Central Presents on the same night as her. We did back-to-back -back shows, two shows, and she got her show, and they asked me if I wanted to be on it. I'm like, no, nah, fuck that. That's not going anywhere. Oh, <laughs> now, oh, now, now, now it's like the biggest show in the oh, world. Boy. <laughs> well, this is... And those I'm not comics, doing the VH1 clip shows. That's bullshit. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> those guys are selling out arenas. Yeah, all the comics associated with her are doing really, yeah, thank really Thank God well. for my pride. I mean, yeah, but, I'm, a, I'm a real but, genius. But <laughs> they came to Patrice recently, and, and I'm like, all right, cool. We'd love to have him, you know, part of this channel. The offer was so bad, Patrice did the double, like, I'm. Oh, yeah. With his fingers. <laughs> right. <laughs> made his Patrice O'Neill look. Yeah. And walked away. Jesus. Just said, uh, that was it. There was no words exchanged. No, just a, why would there be? It was a an insult. Of, a bit of theater. Just a crinkled nose and a. <laughs> <laughs> and the little. Yeah. And it, <sighs> it's, it's so. I think there was a hand clap in there. <laughs> you were saying before the break about how, like, the state of the. You know, if it was this bad when you started, you wouldn't be in it. And why are you guys <laughs> still sticking around, the younger guys? And it's like, it literally. Remember in Star. Like. It's the pride that keeps you here. It's like that part at the end of Star Wars <laughs> when the rebels are about to blow up the Death Star. Yeah. And the guy's like, I think we should evacuate, sir. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, evacuate in our moment of triumph. <laughs> moment of and triumph. That's where we're all just standing on the Death Star. <laughs> well, it's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> they should have called Sirius the Death Star. It might have sold better in the long run. <laughs> we're an evil uh, empire. That's funny. <laughs> we're kind of at the end of this, but for the young guys, man, I don't know how the fuck they're going to you know, well, stick also, it out. I, I don't know. Just don't know how they're going to do it. Well, I think our expectations are different. I mean, I, I think when you guys yeah. started, I, I didn't get into radio. You know, I got into radio on a fluke, and that place. You know, when it came in to be, when Air America came to be, whatever happened there or because of management happened. But I certainly got a good sense of what terrestrial radio was. And you right. could tell then it was dying. But there was a time, I think, when you guys started where the payday was good. If you could capture your market and hold it, you made some good money. Real, but, you know, real good money. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was amazing. Those uh, days are long gone. Trust me. Right. But when We're you doing okay. I'm not, I not know people have much worse lives. Trust me. Yes. Yeah. But what it used to be compared to what it is now, it's night and day. But still, you want the audience. I mean, that's what's a, the, the tricky exactly. thing is how do you hold on? To your audience, how do you grow your audience? If you, you know, it depends how you do it. Well, we're, it all, is looking, always about we're that. all looking at you because the you know the WTF podcast that you're doing is is, is getting a lot of uh, attention and exposure. Yeah, well, it's a, that was a unique thing, and it was uh, it, it's not so much that it was a fluke, but I came into this medium when it was just starting to take off. There were guys that were doing it before me, and there were guys. That, there's point. There's thousands of podcasts out there. Mm -hmm. But I just I just approach it not like I did radio. I you, know, you have full freedom. You got full freedom here, but still you're you know you've got these problems with the infrastructure and the company and everything else. I don't have fucking anything. Mark, I'm just sitting there in my garage. Right. They, they can't even figure out how to get interns back on our show. They can't even figure out that. What do you problem. mean they, they can't? We had an issue. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. But everyone was punished for the issue. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we're past the issue. You know when you maybe do 
time yeah. in jail, but yeah. you get out, and then you could go move on with you your life. You rehabilitated. Uh, but for some <laughs> reason... you as a line cook right now. <laughs> but everyone was punished, <laughs> did their time, and they still can't figure out how to get interns on this show, which we desperately need. That's problem... One out of many. Well, that, that's like what Joe said. It's like the weird thing is, is that when you're guys like us, like when I hit the wall and I was broke in that fucking divorce, I didn't know what I was going to do. I couldn't get a job. And that's why I decided to do that podcast. Yeah. Is that what's your plan B? I ain't got no plan B. He just <laughs> mentioned line cook. That's a, that's a reasonable option. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's part of my brain that thinks I did that in college. Get me a spatula. Let's go. It's like yeah. riding a bike. I can do that. Well, you guys are also stand ups, though. So, I mean, you, you yeah, got know, income yeah. coming in. What are you talking about? Did you, uh, before the no? podcast, I couldn't get work <laughs> <laughs> mark who are you serious yeah i mean you guys knew me because i worked around here but in my manager literally literally when i started that podcast i was broke i got nothing my manager says no one wants to book you no one wants you know no one wants to do anything with you and i'm like well what do we do he goes i don't know how's my hair you know that, that was a conversation <laughs> <laughs> now, are, are you being booked now that the podcast is yeah, taken off? it changed everything. It changed Can everything. Can I ask you, and if you don't want to say it's fine, how, ma how many people are uh, downloading your podcast a week? We get overall downloads a week or in between 400 and 500,000, and that's across, you know, oh, uh, we're coming up on 195 shit. episodes, and the most recent 50 are always up. But now, like, you know, things have changed a bit because the medium, anytime something happens, that gets any of us exposure, it brings more people to that medium. The thing right. is, is that there are still guys my age who are like, wait, how do you get a pod? What? Uh, yeah, I mean, how hard is it to hook your fucking iPod up to the thing and, and download a radio show? But a yeah. lot of people just don't know. They haven't Dummies, made that yeah. jump yet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So now that's starting to happen. So the audience for all of them is and, growing. And, and the other question, you're making money? Well, yeah, but you got to figure it out. I'm no business guy. I'm a moron. I can't even keep my desk <laughs> organized. It, is it nice pocket money? Oh no, it's definitely starting to to turn into something Be a real thing. Well, the problem is because that's the, that's yeah. the that's the problem a lot of people have had when they start their podcast. Like, well, this is great, but how do we make money? Well, I'll give you a quick. You've lesson. heard that a million fucking times. I'll give right? you a quick lesson <clears throat> if I could, and I'm not being. Uh, I mean, I had to learn all this when we started. We just did the donor model. Like, hey, you like it? Help us out. I remember that? Yeah, kick in some money. Sure. And now uh, what happened is as the thing grew, we got real uh, advertisers coming. So it's, it's mm -hmm. not where you're operating like terrestrial and you're the GM. Do you it's have a staff? Right. right. Mm -hmm. No, it's just me and a friend. And, you know, we kind of work together and, and we bring in. We can. And the thing about the podcast, you can show people your numbers. You know what they are. It's not like it's not like these books. You yeah, know, like yeah, it, it's but... like these spinnable books. Like for when the age group from eighteen to eighteen and a half, we got four hundred thousand <laughs> listeners <laughs> from seven to eight o'clock. That's your time, and yeah, that's bullshit. Right. Now you're like, I know exactly what we're doing. You want a piece of this, and mm -hmm. so they're coming in. You can show them the download. merch. You got merch. You got that kind of stuff. Yeah. Just, you got to figure out a bunch of ways. The app got right. the WTF app. Yeah, this because yeah, yeah, because that's, that's that's what you got to do. As I it, so. as I sit here on uh, July twenty fifth, twenty eleven, there's no reason to stay here. You want to go? <laughs> there, there's no reason to stay here. Sure. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Uh, if, they, if they fire to me tomorrow, I, I'll start this podcast thing, and I'll be way happier. Dude. As I sit here, there's no fucking reason why I'm. Well, let's uh, why, go. Let's why just, we should stay here? Let's I would go. Well, we're under a contract. Oh, okay, I'll hang out. There. Uh, okay. I was, <laughs> but I'm. But there's going to be some serious discussions in the coming couple of weeks because I've just about had it. Yeah, we can't get interns. We can't get these guys. Can't raises. get interns. I, Anthony has a better yeah, studio in his house that he's not even using yet. It's in construction right now. Yeah, what, what? I just got my last lighting. It. No, no, it's. I, oh. I actually was doing it. Yeah. for a while. Um, and it, it's it's a pizza. I call it live from the compound. Uh huh. And it's a video also. Yeah. It's like I have Which, I have green screen, and I it looks like I'm in a giant professional facility. <laughs> But I'm drunk off my ass and just <laughs> rambling. I wanted it to look like a professional right. broadcast yeah, yeah. run by a fucking yeah, genius. Like, degenerate. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's exactly what it comes off as. And, and it's a like, visual element that we wanted for this show that they couldn't figure that out. I did either, like by movie. I, I did like a thing like movie night where yeah. I played Twister and it was on the screen and then I'm in the corner. And we're just beating the shit out of the movie, like a mystery science theater right, thing. Right, right. I did a, a live simulcast of Charlie Sheen's first podcast that he did. Yeah, yeah. And you just rip it apart as as they're doing it live. I could hook it up to a uh, to any cable station. I could just I could pipe in on virtual screens behind me. Mm. It's all like uh, Oops, chroma key good. and everything. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. So I got I got lights coming in. I just had lights come in yesterday for the back. 
Yeah. And I got my backlighting truss going in tomorrow. So I I just put all the mics in over the weekend. Does this feel like a college radio station to you at this point? I know you didn't do college yeah. radio, but you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. your studio at home is way better than this. I, I cannot tell you how perfect this studio at my well, house do is. do it. It I sounds know. like you're, you're, I am. you're building a ship to leave the planet. I, I, I'm <laughs> absolutely building a oh, like, <laughs> lifeboat. You do have to prepare for your future. It's, absolutely. If they kick me yeah. out tomorrow because I'm bitching too much, I'm completely fine, trust me. That's oh, like yeah. just completely. the front part of the, the uh, oh, look at that. Light, lights uh, I, you know, I can see this in a year or two. It's just going to be you writing your manifesto and That's talking about it. Yeah, hey, <laughs> son of a... I do have yeah. a, a Nazi war poster in the background. Yeah, the Lenny Bruce years. That's like... This is in his house. That's my it's view. Great. No, you can, you can. You know? it's, it's radio. Yeah, how much? You know, you yeah, can. You just he, get to need a couple of good. He decided mics. to go all in. Look. Oh my God! Look at that. Yeah, he's got a window chroma where you got an on-air uh, light. Yes. that's the original yeah. on-air light from WNEW that we oh, used okay. to use. Thought, my brother thought, was in there. Who's, who's that for? <laughs> I know. It's just kind of a cool little thing to have. But uh, Anthony yeah. made a window, so yeah. if people yeah. are hanging out in his house. He could uh, they could look through I, the window I, at the broadcast. I thought Anthony might be making up people. The. <laughs> yeah, I have, my, I have my, not only the green screen and everything, but uh, uh, the green room is the whole outside. I got a bar area and everything. It's beautiful. Oh, forget about it. I'm ready. Uh, and before this goes by, Seth in Illinois on instant feedback, he just sent us a folder with a bunch of pictures and video from the beach party. Oh, so we don't have to. I want to grab that up. Thank you, Seth. I it's was up on at the screen right now. Marin's house. Remember, I was going to rent your apartment when you moved to L.A. Oh, you lucky! You lucky you didn't do that. What happened? Well, no, no. I, uh, eventually, Leo Allen he took the apartment, yeah. but you know, I, you know, in in, uh, in the name of uh, transparency, I, I I did not tell him that it once had a bed bugs. But but apparently, <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. but they're gone. They, you know, they're they're gone until the next generation spawns. <laughs> right. yeah, in twenty seventeen. Right? No, apparently they live forever. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. It was a year and a half ago though, or something like that. And I came out. And I, I didn't didn't really know Mark very well, and I just went out to look at his apartment. We're sitting in his kitchen talking, and I was like, "What are you up to?" And you were like, I "Started this podcast, man." And, uh, you know, fuck, I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> and you had a message from David Cross on your phone because yeah. you were you were just starting to reach out to your friends right. to do the show to help. And me. then a year and a half <laughs> later, it's like the number one pod. It was just it's just crazy to see it and make you, that jump. Have you changed a little bit? Because obviously, we haven't seen you in a while. I mean, when you started the podcast, it was talking to other comedians. It and really out. getting into what they're all about, but I would assume at this point you've run out of comedians, so you got to be. Like <laughs> oh no, no, you'd be surprised. But are you? <laughs> but are you expanding the things you talk about? Well, no, I talk. I do like a 10, 15 minute monologue up front, and then usually, I usually talk to someone for an hour. I, you know, I, I've spread out mm -hmm. the guests a little bit, but now we got. I did some interesting things, man. I mean, I I'll take it on the road. I went up to uh, I went up to Jonathan Winters' house in wow. Santa Barbara, oh, and I sat with Jonathan Winters for an hour, and it was it was profound, and it was the most one of the more amazing things I'd ever done to sit there uh, with this guy. What made it, it amazing? Because he still he still got a lot of clarity. You know, his mood changes, and he was a little tired. But as soon as he turns on that thing, it's like time travel. It's like listening to wow. his old records. He's going in and out of characters. He's doing whole bits he's improvising things right in front of you and he's just sitting there he's kind of hobbled because he's he's arthritic and stuff but it was just it was like being in the presence of real genius and how, it's rare that that happens how old is he? he's 85 years old wow and then he, yeah. the, the funniest thing was is like because uh, you know john he's a real genius that guy mm -hmm. yeah. and you know he's been around forever and you, i remember looking at uh, old footage of him when i went to the museum of broadcasting before they had the internet and seeing him on the jack parr <laughs> show and no one knew what the fuck that guy was going to do <laughs> and he's just this sweet he's almost like a buddha and he lives in this big house in Santa Barbara and he goes let me show you something and we're walking down this hallway and he's got his cane and he's walking very slowly and there's all these pictures along the wall of him with movie stars and people from his life and he just he points to this one picture of this boy and a dog and he goes I like that dog and then we, <laughs> so then, and then we, we keep walking down the hallway and he goes this is where I sleep they moved his bedroom into close to the living room because he's old and he needs oh. it but you walk into this room and, you, and it's like this four post bed and he's got about six 60 model planes hanging from the ceiling. Oh, and he, go, he says, those are my planes. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> but, but just to picture that guy, this, this very sensitive genius of a, of a comedian just laying in bed looking at his planes going, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful. It was beautiful. So I still do mostly comics, but I take it on the road sometimes and I do some other stuff. So you're obviously it. expanding. I had um, Dice came in. I haven't put it up yet. He came in, and I was very. You guys probably talked to him a lot. Oh yeah, he's a friend of the show. <laughs> yeah, Certainly. but I, you know, I didn't know him. He's in a matter of fact. Is he? Yeah. So, 
say hi to him because I I hadn't uh, really talked to him since I was a doorman at the comedy store, you know. And I remember like when I was there when he broke when he became big. And then about uh, six months ago, I saw him do forty minutes, and it was like I, it was amazing. It was hilarious, and you know he's talking about going to Staples with his kids, and it was like this is a different dice. Yeah. So I had him in there, and sometimes it gets very intimidating to me because you don't want to piss him off in any way. But a lot of times, because I'll sit there and just talk one on one for an hour, you know, so it starts to loosen up. You know, uh, yeah. you know, they start talking in a way that they they don't usually talk. And he told me his kid does comedy, mm -hmm. and first of all, I couldn't even picture him having a kid. Like I never even assumed it. He's two got boys, two, right? Two I boys. saw his kid do comedy at the store. Right. So I called the yeah. kid, and I had him on too, <laughs> to oh, see, shit. just to ask him what it's like to have dice as a dad. And uh, he has a very well adjusted, nice kid. Yeah, he does. And uh, and he's a very sweet guy. So I'm still pretty excited. Just his boys. Not, all right. Talking to dudes. Well, they're, although they're not boys anymore. I think they're grown men at this point. <laughs> uh, how is, how is 19, Dice's, 19, I think. How is Dice's 21, kid on maybe. stage? Um, he, was, he was pretty good. He was... Uh, you know, he was kind of like a little bit of a nerdier kid. He yeah. wasn't what you were expecting, but he was doing... He was new at it, so he was doing stuff that was way more like his dad. And I was like, oh, he's just doing what he thinks he's supposed to do right now. He's going to... These jokes are well He'll written, but he's going to come around into his voice soon and, and be like... You know, the kid that's more, instead of being like, hey, uh, buh, 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 he's going to be like, hey, my dad's that. I'm kind of a, <laughs> yeah, a little yeah. bit of a nerd it's or a whatever. It's a pretty big you know shadow I mean? to a. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to a girl, you yeah, know no what I mean? Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, Dice is on Entourage this year. He's, yeah, is he's he? excited about it. Anybody watch last night? Uh, yeah. I, I, I cannot watch that show. <laughs> I, I, I turned it on because. I, I, no, actually, I was watching something on HBO before that, and then I, and then I turned it on and, and was. I, I was like, I can't watch this. I bet show makes fly. me sick. L.A., whoa, oh. fucking, these guys are so extreme. They're partying. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, really? I, it I, makes me sick. It? I never lived in that L.A. Yeah, yeah, what L.A. In, is I that? I lived in the one-bedroom L.A. with, like, where, where, did, where are my papers? Which box is it in? <laughs> where, <laughs> well, how come I can't find my notebook? Uh, <laughs> that was, they, that's how I came up they, in L.A. They did the same show week after week hey, that was the problem just, i like the first i think i made two seasons and what are they up to now eight or nine i couldn't eight, eight, i don't even know so i missed uh, at uh, least five seasons, the lead character least. was was like i guess last season because they kind of recapped a little was all strung out on drugs and all fucked up and everything yeah and then he got busted and i guess they opened up the season with him in rehab yeah and and, and three months clean yeah and he's like you know sober is sexy He's like, and it was like one of these. Oh, are they? Are they giving me a lesson? Go are they, fuck yourself. Are they teaching you know the people that he's okay now? And and, and uh, what's the struggle going to be uh, to get his trust back so he gets a movie role? Who the fuck knows? Who gave a shit? I was watching like. Oh, yeah, man. Here they go. Oh, yeah. Wow, we got our four-door Continental with the suicide <laughs> doors, and we're going to fucking go out and party. And, and I dated, uh, I swear to God, it's a true story. I dated this girl once, and she t we were in bed one night. We are watching Entourage, and she told me, she's like, I met Adrian Grenier once at a party, and he tried to fuck me, right? And I go, really? Did you, <laughs> did you uh, fuck did him? He's insanely good looking. <laughs> and she goes... No way! I didn't f no, he was all like, "Oh, I'm Adrian Grenier, so you're just supposed to fuck me." Can you believe that shit? And I'm like, "Really? Because you fucked me, dummy." <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Joe DeRosa, and you're supposed to fuck, fuck me. me. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking idiot! It's not. <laughs> It's a nice moment to have where you realize you're just uh, the, your relationship is just some sort of uh, oh, outpouring of her low self esteem. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> of course, I fucked you. I hate myself. <laughs> that must have made you feel great. You got the right girl, Joe. <laughs> I, I want more stories from the podcast world. I love the Jonathan Winters one. Oh, that yeah, that was. Anyone a, else surprise you or disappoint you? I don't know where you want to go with this. Well, one. no, I mean it, it's it, it's it's just a little weird when. Uh, uh, it, it's still odd because, like Conan O'Brien, I asked him to do the show on his show, and he agreed to it. So, like with me, mm. because there's still part of me that doesn't believe, uh, you know, I deserve anything or that <laughs> I'm in show business. Like he comes to my house. Were yeah. you guys friends? No, we're not friends. I not do really? a show. I, I never spent. I know you've any... been on there a bunch. But yeah, no. I, I, besides I'm... that, you don't really know each other. I have no friends. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> there's very, you know, there's very few people I hang out with. I usually find one girl and I drain her of her life essence, and that's <laughs> that's how I, that's how I live so my life. Move on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like oh, that one's a husk. To live. <laughs> that is, I'm gonna move on to the. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Mark, 
What? Mark's like the thing in Fallen. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> just jump from yeah, body, yeah. To body. body to body. Body to body. Like if I'm with a woman, they're they're excited. I'm excited. But anybody who looks at me from the outside says, "Oh, he's feeding." So uh, yeah. <laughs> wait, there's two things now. Yeah, uh, I want to know about Conan, but now. The last, okay, yeah. the last mm -hmm. time you were in the relationship, you were going out with a younger woman. Oh, yeah, and it blew up. It's yeah. done. Well, no, no, that's a, oh, my God, dude. Uh, it's See, been a while. We, well, you I'll, you I'll, already I'll, were hinting, I'll, like, oh, well, fuck. No, no, I, well, the, she's, uh, she was going to come this morning, so that's where we're at now. It oh, got, okay. But, no, but Conan comes over. Here's what happens to me. He comes over, and I talked to him about this, you know, a little bit on his show, is that, he comes to my house. I don't know. I don't know him other than being on the show. We have an hour long conversation. It's a great talk. He's very candid. Yeah, he's very serious. He talks about a lot of stuff. I, I didn't know him at all. Right. And then there's that moment where we we leave the garage. I live in a small little house. It's two bedroom. It's it's all I can handle. I don't know how the fuck people have big houses. Yeah, because like I walk past that second bedroom every day, and there's nothing in there but a, an empty bed and her clothes. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck am I going to do with that room? Yeah, it makes me panicky. If I had a third bedroom, I'd kill myself because I wouldn't know what to do with it. But so he's in the garage, and we walk into the living room, and he's sort of lingering. Yeah, and this is Conan O'Brien. You know, he's six foot tall. I only know him as Conan O'Brien, the guy who has me on his show. And he's fucking Conan O'Brien. There's this moment I have where I'm like, I got to get him out of my house. Because I, I have no idea how to deal with this shit. Yeah. You know, like, what are we going to have lunch? Are we going to have dinner? We don't know each other. You're going to go, and I'm going to be, you know, happy you did my podcast. But right now, I don't know how to continue this. Yeah, please leave before I screw this up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to fuck this it up somehow. It went well. Just get out of here yeah, now. Like, when, you when get that I feeling, too? Yeah. It's good to know. <laughs> Uh, so so that happens a lot. Like, you know, Paul Reiser came over, and that was kind of weird. Because sometimes these guys, they get sent over by their publicists it, you know, if I want to get them, but they don't know who I am. And then they have that thing. It's like, what the hell is this? What are we, what are we, what are we doing here? Oh, really? Yeah. So there's, a, there's some of those moments that make me feel a little uncomfortable. Well, what do you get out of Conan? Anything? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I got a lot about, I mean, you know, no breaking news uh, other than you know, he made a joke about having a huge cock, which is, you know, you don't <laughs> expect that. And also he talked a lot about, you know, what he studied at Harvard. I was kind of curious about the whole Harvard thing because mm -hmm. uh, I've always wondered, like, is there some secret system? Are you guys guaranteed entry into show business? <laughs> yeah. How, what do they do to you over there? Is there rituals? Do you kill rabbits? What's happening at Harvard that makes it so special? But, uh, but you know, he talked about what he studied. And show. a lot of times I don't, uh, like, I interviewed David Tell. I've known a Tell for 25 years, and I don't think I've had a more than a seven-minute conversation with him. <laughs> and it, it, here's a, uh, if you haven't seen David Tell in, like, two years, you say, Dave, what's up? He goes, what? And then you go, <laughs> and then you say, how you been? Fine, what? And that's usually the end of it. You know, you don't press any harder. If, if you're lucky, he'll shit on you somehow. <laughs> so, you know, for him to sit down for an hour, that's the weird thing is because we're comics, we assume we all know each other, which we do, and I feel a real close bond with all the dudes that are in, in my community. Mm -hmm. But most of us have never fucking talked for more than 15 minutes. No, dude. It, the, the, aside right. from your kitchen, the first right. time I ever sat down and really talked to you was on your podcast in front of an audience right. of comics. And that's what happened. <laughs> you know? So, and it was yeah. great though and i felt like oh i learned a little bit about mark today and, <laughs> and you know we, we didn't exchange you know that's the most flattering thing about the thing is that you know if i was a young comic and i had the outlet of my show like if you were able to listen to the guys that you respect actually have a conversation for an hour that would have mm. blew my fucking yeah, mind yeah. of course well, it's like remember when they used to have when the when comedy central first became comedy central they had uh inside the comedy Alan mind king inside the comic <laughs> mind you know <laughs> I'm talking to Dennis Leary, a young comic. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you remember. I was like 12, but it blew uh, me. Shit. It blew me away. I wasn't oh, even a comic yet. Alan was... King, what a. All right. All right. No, hey, no, no. Hey. You're right though. Oh, it did oh. blow me away. Sorry. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yes. Inside the comic mind. Yeah, it's... I'm, I'm talking to one of the young guns, Robin Williams. Is here. <laughs> I do remember. How that do you stuff. figure out how to make up things? <laughs> 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 I, I no, totally remember show. that. Yeah. 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 God damn. That's wonderful. This wow. fellow, I don't know that well. Martin Short, he does uh, voices. Very interesting. <laughs> One of, he interviewed Bob Hope once. I, I actually watched it at the Museum of Radio and Television. Uh, and it, it just made me depressed because it was right it was right when Bob Hope was teetering on diapers. Oh boy! Do you know what I mean? Yeah, right? Yeah, it was yeah. just it was just it was just too late. He was almost there. Yeah. But he kept drifting off, and uh, it's too bad. You that know, those looking guys... at his golf course and shit in the uh, background, yeah, just thinking about sad, thinking man. about all that Orange Grove money, yeah. <laughs> owning yeah. the valley. Look at ah. this. Nothing gets better. I just shit myself, and I can't use this money at all. <laughs> no done, amount of yeah. money is going to make yeah. me stop shitting myself. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> that, you know what, though? That's a good thing to remember. It sure is. It really is. I've had that moment in the locker room at the YMCA many times <laughs> where you see, like, that's why you got to go to the Y because guys from all ages go to the Y. And when you see a guy who's like 75 years old, you know, just wrestling his balls into his fucking jock strap, <laughs> you got to have a moment where you're like, if I'm lucky, I'll have that. Yeah, if I'm yeah. lucky to make it that far. Or you see the one guy, I saw a guy wearing a diaper because he had his prostate removed. Oh, oh, shit. And he's like there, in the, and he's talking to guys, and he's just standing there going, it's going to happen to you. Bro. It's going to happen to you. No shame, uh, right? He just well, goes yeah. with it. But, you know, that's that's what's great about the Y. It's a community service to make you realize that you're mortal. That's where <laughs> <laughs> that's where you take right the back. podcast when you run out of comics. Go yeah. start interviewing those guys. Oh, oh. It's yeah. a, uh, that would be a good podcast. Yeah. yeah. From the Y locker room? <laughs> yes, that's the world I live in. I would fucking do that podcast in a second. No, I yeah. love doing stuff like that. Fuck yeah. I can now interview this guy. I went to a guy in my neighborhood. I live in sort of a, a barrio, kind of a, a Mexican neighborhood. And, and I always drove by this. This, all the signs, like on York where I live, are you know hand painted. It's like Juarez down there, and then you know, <laughs> and there's an adjacent one. It, it, well, whatever. It, there's an optometrist sign, and then someone sent me this optometrist, and I, I said that optometrist, and the and because I went to an eyeglass place in the neighborhood, and the, and the woman's like, yeah, that dude, he plays in a jazz combo. He's like this weird. <laughs> so I'm like, I gotta go now. And you walk into this optometrist office in this Latino neighborhood. He's got jazz records everywhere, and he's just this Jew from Indiana <laughs> who plays in a jazz combo, and you. Just sit there getting your eyes examined. He's talking in that like weird bebop voice. Oh man, that guy could groove, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he got strung out, and his old lady didn't want to have nothing to do with him anymore. Can you see the bottom line? <laughs> but I was like, oh, God, I gotta get that guy in the show, you know? Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fucking. Mark, great. Is, Mark seems happy. I like this. It's yeah, it's a new thing. You know what it's I stopped? It's all new. Yeah. You know yeah. what I stopped what are you doing? doing? Maybe I can learn from you. How, how do you get happy? Well, what happened was, through the arc of the podcast, I started broke, divorced, miserable. You guys knew me. And then, like, literally, through the arc of the podcast, I was calling comics. I don't know if they realized this, but I needed help. So, like, a lot of my interviews are like, I'm fucked up. What would you do? <laughs> and, and so, somehow or another... What doesn't seem to be happening right now is I don't wake up in the morning going, what the fuck am I going to do with my life? Mm. Somehow or another, that's gone away, and that seemed to be a big problem. Yeah, I'm mm. not beating the shit out of myself every day. Is that yeah. all right? Can I not do yes. that? Yes. That's good. I can start again. It's right there. You, got, you, a, you got a purpose. A little bit. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm busy, and it's my own thing, so who am I going to yep. get pissed off at? You know, There's no boss to get pissed off at, that's so so if though. I get pissed off, it's, it's only going to be at it's me. It's on you. Yeah, so I, I try not to do that too much, but it was on me before too i never blamed the right people but and, uh, a lot of that's gone and you're one of those you're one of those comics where you know you're you're a guy that pushes buttons and you you, you know i hate using the word edgy but you know what i mean yeah. and i think like in that kind of forum uh, correct me if i'm wrong it gives you a chance to express yourself in in a much more free zone where you don't have to worry about the drunk heckling you you don't mm. have to worry about the stupid bitch you know, <laughs> her bachelorette with the, party. Yeah, with the bachelorette oh party. Yeah, I did a you know show. what I mean? But because of the uh, podcast, he's getting more work. Well, yeah, but, but the weird so thing, he's still dealing with that. I but don't, I mean, I don't I do, understand your point. Joe. My I, point is, my point is, is that I think when you, I think every comic needs an outlet, right? And I think especially for a comic like Mark. When you have that other thing where it's not 100% resting right. on the live performance, where you have this other zone oh, or this right. outlet where you can get this stuff out, then you're not looking at the stand-up in the same light anymore. It's, it's not but, just, I got to fucking get my feelings about not, this out on stage. Right, now I'm, I'm on the same page. Because now that I'm doing more side projects, I, yeah. don't, I don't care about this place at all. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> no, I, I, I get what you're saying. Because when that's all I had, I'm like, fuck, it would wear me out. But now yeah. that I know I have freedom... Yeah. On these dumb side projects where I don't have to listen to anyone or talk to anybody, I get it. But I, also, I get your point. You're doing what you want to do. Uh, yeah. And the, and the weird thing is, it's like with that, with like I realized that most of my career, like I don't do politics on the show. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Like I got to this point where you start to realize I used to think I was angry about something. And then, and then if you go a little deeper, you're like, oh shit, I'm just fucking angry. You know, where, <laughs> right. where do I point that? And you know, and, and politics can be sort of like a, a template for your anger. You know, you just sort of like wear it like you're gonna shoot shit. And then I started to talk, and I realized that most people's problems are just you know day to day existential bullshit, bullshit. problems. Yeah, because everyone's just trying to get by, and most of their energy you know is, goes into help, hoping people don't think they're out of their fucking mind. So <laughs> so that means that most people in their minds are going, oh god. I'm an asshole. That guy's an asshole. What the fuck am I going to do? How am I going to... So I just sort of talk from that place... Mm -hmm. 
Because it was weird. I did Bill Maher's show for the first time the other night. I did two lines, two lines of politics, and all of a sudden I'm back in this fucking firing oh, line shit. again. I, all of a sudden, like the right way, I'm on Hannity. You know, uh, you yeah. know, the clip is on Hannity. Yeah, yeah. But that, Bill was taking most of the hit, but I just couldn't believe to be put into that position again. It's like where two these, words and yeah, it's just these morons well, are like, Jesus. Oh, you think, someone crucify the Jew with the filthy mouth. <laughs> you, you, think, yeah. you think Air America uh, hurt you for a while there? Well, I think what it was is, uh, you, you know, I want I got involved with that because I was not inherently a political comic. I was just a reactionary person, which I still am. But I, I mean, I got involved because I was unhappy with the Bush administration and I wanted to help try to, you know, take it down. I mean, that's why I got involved in it. But I think in the long run, if you're involved with politics in an exclusive way, of course it's going to hurt you because anytime mm -hmm. you go out on the road, if you're not a big star, all they know about you, if they don't know your comedy, they don't know you, but they know you're on Air America. Lefty. Well, you're going to divide the room. Whether, Lefty. That means, that means the righties aren't coming to see you, which well, is a you, shame right. because Mark is an amazing right. stand-up. It's got yeah. nothing to do with an that. Amazing. And and I think you did something smart because I remember we would try to push you down some uh, political avenues and you're like, ah, that's the old man. I, I remember you would deflect like, no, they, I'm they, trying to move past that. Right. If and I think in a way me. that was really smart in your well, be, it was just me being honest with myself. If, if it affects me personally and I'm pissed off about it, I'll talk about sure. it. And, sure. You know, I've certainly got my, my point of view, and I am more, uh, yeah, I'm a, I am a lefty, mm. but it's not my wheelhouse to sit there. There's too many people that do it better than me, and my comedy is really about, uh, about being human. It's not about politics, because I think people hide behind that, and it drives me nuts. Yeah, but, that's, wow, uh, that makes a lot it of is. sense. <laughs> it it, is. No, it does. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it does. It divides the Especially room. coming from right. me, you know. <laughs> Uh, I've, been, I've been called uh, a lot of things, never left. <laughs> but on so certain issues, you have to be to do what I'm, you're doing. I'm complete. There, see, a lot of people are like, you know, you're like I'm a typical fucking right wing Republican fucking hardliner. That's bullshit. No, you're a like, libertarian hardliner. Gay, exactly. Yes. <laughs> I'm a libertarian hardliner. No, like, the, like the, the, gay, gay marriage. Either. Like, I, I could yeah, you can give a you shit. Yeah. I don't fucking care if if, if, if people want to get married. That's fine. And they just showed the first uh, couple in New York that got married. Yeah. And I'm not even fucking kidding. I don't know if it was two guys or two girls. I couldn't fucking tell. <laughs> you They're, fucking I swear to Republican you. piece yes, of shit. You motherfucker. <laughs> you fucking what, close minded. They were old people. They were real old. How old? And it, they were either old men or old ladies. I swear I couldn't was tell. It, was it doesn't it, matter. They're people. They're was people. It, if they love each other, oh, let them have it. No, I, of That's course. Dumb. Here it is. It, they were gals, first of gals? all. Gals? One is 85 and oh, one is 77. That's sweet. That's what. That's the Jesus. gay community being like, represented in marriage. Why do you need to get married at 85? They look like twins. Though. I know they're real, well, because they're they spent their <laughs> entire life glasses. not being able to uh, publicly acknowledge or honor their uh, Christ. They lived in a time if they were uh, if they'd been together for forty years, just the fact that they're doing that in that picture would have meant they'd been thrown out yeah. of a village. Uh, Look how old they are. They'd yes, run out yeah. of the village. These two eligible yeah. gals, yeah. gentlemen. But let me take a look. Why isn't that dance card <laughs> being punched? <laughs> yeah, the what you said about libertarianism. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, basically, all you really want is is you want to keep your money and you want people to stay out of your yard. Yeah, pretty much. Right? That's all. <laughs> that, you know what? You're absolutely right. Everybody wants that. And if, you were, if you're going to be in my yard, I have a gun to keep you out of my yard. Right, I'm leave, allowed to have it. Leave, you leave my money alone. <laughs> right. And, uh, I can have my own police force. I'm it. That's pretty much yeah. it. That's if what I like. If my house catches on fire, I got a hose. I'm not I paying for the fire department. Fuck it. I'll take care of it myself. <laughs> all right. I'm not paying for anything. I don't want anything from you. <laughs> stay out of my I yard. I like teetering on anarchy. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. The truth. Just Legal whoa. Oh. Drugs just keep the drunkies out of my yard. Right. <laughs> All right. I understand. <laughs> this is a new it's, Mark Marin. I, I love that. You took, well, all, it. You took uh, all your vitamins? Oh, God. Dude, I, you know, it's gotten to the point where I, I do, I, I talk about it on stage. Like, I can't even be critical of, uh, of uh, religious people anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, because I take vitamins. Vitamins. And I believe they work. And if that isn't dogma, I don't know what the hell is. <laughs> like, I think, like, I don't know what the fuck they do, but if I don't take them for two days, I think something horrible is going to happen to me, and I'm a bad person. <laughs> I just think. I get a vegetable oh, drink every day. I figure yeah, there's enough vitamins in that shit. Like, because see, I'm getting older. I don't know what's wrong with my heel. I don't know how it happened. But now I walk with a limp occasionally. When did that happen? It For just no reason. happens. It's ridiculous. Yeah. No, it's it's a th this we've all been mind. It's I, my the, I'm training with this guy at a gym, and he's like he's like you got to get protein powder and drink it right. You uh -oh. make uh -oh. Yeah, and I'm like okay, and he's like you have to do it. It's one of your meals every day. I'm like okay, and I buy the shit. 
And I'm looking at it, I'm like, I'm not fucking doing this. I'm not on a space shuttle right now. I'm not making this fucking... It's literally like fucking future food. Like the way they make you eat now. Powder into fucking drinks and pellets and shit but like that. How old it's are you? It's ridiculous. 33. Well, you can still See, do that, it. because that shit puts fat on you. Oh, man. yeah. If you, don't, if you don't pump it out... You, like, have, if to, you, know, yeah. you have to run around like a fucking 12-year-old to make sure... You gotta make it muscle. It doesn't yeah. it turn into fat. Which I'm not gonna be doing. Uh, exactly. That's why I'm saying this is, might be bad for you. Yeah, yeah. those guys who eat protein. I went down the protein fucking yeah. uh, round a couple years ago I was like what the fuck it yeah. adds weight on oh, you you gotta fast. work out unless you're running around like a lunatic and you put, all day long iron, it's to make your muscles I was big. working out a yeah. lot but it was like I couldn't those, keep up with it those guys that are huge they, right, they, yeah, they just yeah. all they feed on protein right. powder and they shit antimatter <laughs> you know they just it, it's terrible that protein powder because then in 10 years go by and whatever muscle you had will fucking Fat. Start fucking but falling. But my, my my but the point is like I don't understand like they didn't have these fucking pellets and powders right. thirty years ago, let alone whatever. And you, and and you had like, the in shape out of shape guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's a big barrel with show. a barrel chest and gut. But oh, they were God. like, yeah. Nothing's funnier than like, when a guy that's too old puts on muscle and he's hunched <laughs> like this. Fucking... Or they don't work out right and they're all neck. Yeah. <laughs> I, see, I see those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, just, they just like, uh, they look like a human cock. Yeah. <laughs> So you got a trainer that wants you to go. There you go. Like, that's oh wild. no, that's a perfect oh, example. No. So you got a trainer that wants you to do protein drinks and protein He's powder me to do and all protein that? drinks and shit. I'm like, dude, I, I, I and bought... he insists on it. He, I mean, he doesn't batter, batter, batter me. I don't know. Yeah. What the How about you just get on a good exercase program and try to eat a little better? He's got that's me on all one. We all need. I've been eating decently, uh, you know, and he's not a Nazi. He's like, you can have some bacon and eggs in the morning. It's good protein, you know. He's not a Nazi about it, but. He is big on the vitamins and all that shit, and it, well, it just know, makes man. me feel like it's like Planet of the Apes or some shit. You know I, what like, I, mean? I like, like when I take a piss and it looks like the inside of a glow stick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fun morning. What the fuck happened? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the vitamins that will do that. It's, I uh, used to do the vitamins. It yeah. stains the front of your fucking underwear. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those, you know, oh, you know yellow fucking drips. You really are an old man. <laughs> it stains, stains the front of my, my skibbies. My skibbies with <laughs> the drip. <laughs> you don't stain your underwear yet? Oh, no. no. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Fuck. Wait. How, what, what do you mean? Standing no, right? that's if you just don't shake yeah, enough. Yeah, you know, you know. Yeah, drop you a droplet or two. Is, is so that's all right. I that's think not so. Because right, I don't if know you, what the hell's happening. If you so. just take a quick piss and you want to get and you run back out. Yeah. You're like, ah, maybe I should have shook a little what about, bit. What about peeing in the in the night? See, now like I'm so like last night I, you know, I'm at the hotel with the girl and I I, I got up to pee like three times, but oh, I also boy. had four. Oh, no, I had four iced teas. At oh, dinner. Okay, All so right. I mean, Jesus when, Christ. I can't you know, reason. When I, is my prostate going to fall out of my ass? What <laughs> age does that happen? I'll tell you this much: <laughs> I, I can't drink liquids past five, or I will get up in the middle of the night. What is wrong with you, God? I don't I've think been I've ever out. gotten up to I've piss at night. Really? Yeah, it's like. How the fuck do you not Again. piss at night? I drink. Oh, I guess the alcohol dehydrates me. Yeah, I don't pee till the next morning. In fact, I can wake up with a piss boner <laughs> and still fall asleep for another two hours with it. Just fight through it. I'd rather I do that. Sleep is more up. valuable yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah, how yeah. impressive! Yeah. How impressive! Our piss boners, by the They're way. Very exciting. You're like, you want to wake people yeah. up? Yeah, yeah. You yeah, want to show the world? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look yeah. what this thing can still wow. fucking do. Yeah. I wish no I could reason. with a little right. urine no in it. Yeah. If this thing didn't hurt so bad, I'd try <laughs> right. to fuck somebody with it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It's like, like a math class boner. Where did that come from? <laughs> uh, you, you think Gus and Elmer got uh, married there at? Uh, Gus and Elmer, were they in New York? Or maybe yeah, one they of were those like guys real died. old school Our gay favorite guys. gay couple yeah. ever was Gus and Elmer. And, and the only thing I could ever dr think of is, is the, them growing up like during the war and things and being together with it. They're just like, hey, ladies, here's two eligible bachelors. <laughs> and, and just yeah, knowing yeah. like uh, all yeah. the, the string of dates they went on yeah, that they yeah. knew were going nowhere. That would just nowhere. They went on double dates. Together uh, just so they could be with each other. Yeah. During the, the uh, depression, you go wait in the bread line. I'll lube up yeah. the dildos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are these two? And they're always seen together. That's right, ladies. <laughs> what a catch these two would make. Fresh back from the war. The war. <laughs> it's Gus and Elma. They're roommates for life. <laughs> just not knowing, you know, or caring or was wanting there, to say that they're gay. Was there a whole society that just didn't want to acknowledge gay people? Yeah. But they we're weren't around. We're living in it. Ah, I mean, we've yeah. seen changes, obviously. I'm no, going no, back yeah. to, like, uh, you know, our parents' generation oh, see, stuff. They, they, they had to know people walking around that were gay. What did they do? Just make believe that wasn't Look, happening? I, no, they pushed him into the priesthood. <laughs> That's true. You know what? You're right. No, yeah. I, I mean, I, I really that believe that's true. Joke. That like in a in a community where they're like, you know, the 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 uh, the O'Grady boy seems a little light. 
in the loafers. Yeah. Maybe we should push them towards the clergy. Because they were so ashamed at the possibility of one of their kids being gay that they'd press them further into it and make them feel horrible and ashamed. I really believe that a lot of that is true. I, 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 that, it's a great point, yeah. But what Mm -hmm. if you weren't Catholic? Then what, like, what did the Jewish gay gay. kids do? What did they do? You you married your mother. (laughs) I mean, more (laughs) Jewish mothers have created more homosexual men than I I think. uh, Because no one's good enough for them. They're perfect. I guess yeah, back, yeah, back then it was just one more thing to hide. You were probably already hiding that you were Jewish from yeah. a lot of people. So <laughs> <laughs> like, just pass on yeah, two. Yeah, well. <laughs> I bet I like cock too. Yeah, yeah, pass it straight <laughs> and not. See, now I'm going to get flack for saying created. Look, of you know, course. You're, not, you're born with it, but sometimes there are other well, circumstances. Well, when, yeah. you, that will when you walk around New York, along, mommy. <laughs> when you walk around New York, you, <laughs> mommy, you, you, you see all the gay people. It's obvious, right? For the most part. Yeah, like what happened two generations ago? They, were, were guys and, they, and they, women they, just acting like? That's why I was called yeah, in the closet. Right? They got married. Oh, no, yeah. dude, I, I just watched. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, but horrible. you see some of these guys walking around. You're like, there's no way he could have acted straight. Dude, I just watched. <laughs> There's no way, but I mean, I, I, two generations yeah. ago, how did they do it? They were beat up. They were they were shunned. They they did yeah, everything they could to hide it. Wow. You know, they, a lot of them got married. And then and then we talk about mm. this. Then you have some. You had someone like Liberace would go on the talk shows, and they would always ask him, "When are you going to settle down and get a woman?" You yeah, know, get yeah, a, yeah fine. Are you kidding me? Right. Even Regis <laughs> oh, would do that, right? They like, all played uh, along. On. What are you going to do? They, 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 they all just played along with it. Where's your wife already? Why don't you settle down? What's wrong with you? Right. Dude. We're gonna have Lee on the show, and then it's like <laughs> Lee. Lee is coming out, and he's all flamboyant. And it's like you gotta, you know, the ladies love Liberace. <laughs> right. He was on That's... WrestleMania. Oh Christ! First WrestleMania, Liberace, or the second one, Liberace is on it. He's in the fucking ring, the wrestling ring with the Rockettes doing kicks, kick line, and wrestling fans were like, I like that Liberace. Yeah. Yeah. He's How a guy's guy. Like him? He's a man's him. man. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Uh, literally. Kicking. Dude. A man's man kicking yeah. with the Rockettes. <laughs> on uh, Netflix, I just watched Life of Riley. It was Charles Nelson Riley's one man show. Oh, right. Another yeah, yeah, yeah. one. Another no, one. I, now, I swear to God, I turned this thing on, think it was going to be campy, funny, fucking riveting. One of the best one man shows I've ever wow, seen. Wow, really? Laugh my balls off. It's poignant, sad, hilarious. When I, was, was it I done? loved it. Like 2006. That's pretty oh, right okay. before yeah, he died. Yeah, yeah. So I looked him up online. He talks about how he's gaining it, and they said on Wikipedia that fucking show was the first time he ever publicly announced that he was gay. Well, and that was four years ago. Did he have to? Yeah, it was really like three years before it? he died. He finally came out and said it. It's like Paul Lind. Like nobody ever talked about it. Like, oh, that was hilarious. Yeah, Come on, it's willful. The thing is, is like most people who watch that stuff, it's willful, willful ignorance. You, you know, they. I mean, they kind of know, right? But you know, all of a sudden, when someone says "I saw cock," they, <laughs> then they're like, "Oh God, that uh. guy sucks." God. Right. <laughs> Before he was just a funny guy. Uh, yeah, but they, they knew anyways. I think a lot of people have more trouble with the publicity or the being public about it. Uh, like I think that would sort well, of speak you to what you're saying. You don't want to think the like, center square is, is gay. Uh, Paul Lynn, do you want him to be like, you know, he's funny. I'm taking he's the kind of... cocksucker for the block. Well, I, 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 you just knew he was right, gay. Right, and I, and I think that's <laughs> well, well, that what ex- you're talking that about. That explains celebrity, but I was just wondering about just regular fucking they, Joes walking around. Well, they just, um, they hit I'm it. not gay. Yeah. Just kidding. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, come on. That was cheap. Sorry. I couldn't resist. It's like, it's a tough life. I mean, you know, and that's one, the weird thing about people who say they choose it. It's like, why would they choose that? Yeah, I don't in, know. in a sense, that, and I'm not meaning that in a negative way, but it's not the easy path. No. It, nah, you know, nah. it, it, who wants to choose the horrible path? I well, think I mean, or, or what seems to be. If, well, it, difficult. It's difficult, it's difficult, we should say. Know, right. I think there are two types of gay people there are uh, ones that are born gay and then there's a few like wannabes it just that's called I th- college i think is it college <laughs> yeah, and, and, the and confusing time drunk uh, <laughs> a little too drunk but where's that night? wannabe come from though? It, maybe I that's already it's, in it's yet. like anybody else there's a they have a great time a are you society kidding me? of people that you want to <laughs> be they, part of they, these are grown it's, people that still enjoy dancing i mean <laughs> why, why wouldn't you want to be part of that they, they've got a they, lot of all dis- right you sold me they, they got a lot of disposable income they, right. they wear yes. nice clothing i'm generalizing but i think these are relatively effective <laughs> nice generalization. Meat. There's a gay bar in my neighborhood. Oh, yeah. And I pass it every time I walk to Bobby Kelly's house. You can't even admit you probably went in there to check it out. I, Opie, I want to go in so bad. <laughs> yeah. They look like they're having the greatest fun. I think Just Bobby blast, even does a bit right? about this on stage, but it's the I think it's the same bar. It looks like they're the... It, I'm literally standing out that, outside of that thing like fucking... Uh, 
uh, Dan Aykroyd in Trading Places in the Santa Claus yeah, suit. Yeah, just yeah. fucking yeah. looking in like, that looks like the best. That's what funny, because being straight is like wearing a Santa Claus suit to them. <laughs> <laughs> what is that guy wearing? <laughs> yeah. 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 Who would walk around like that? <laughs> and Bobby does a bit on it, huh? I think Bobby does a bit about oh, that gay bar. A bit. Yeah, that means I'm sure Bobby's a doing bit. That a means his bit. wife caught him in there. He's like, no, nah, man, I'm just getting a bit together. Oh. Yeah. And now he has to do the bit for the next 10 years. <laughs> Bobby Kelly would be a great gay guy. Oh, oh you're the best gay guy. He's, he's yeah, most yeah. of the way there, I think, isn't he? Oh. He's pretty far there. You, you, you <laughs> kissed Bobby. Yeah, I did. You did? Yeah, yeah. How was oh, that? How Sam, was that? Sam had kissed Bobby. Well, Sam has kissed many guys. Where does Bobby... Many. How many? Like tongue? I mean tongue? Three. No tongue. Oh. Sam has uh, kissed three homeless guys. Homeless guy. So, homeless guy. So we're well, just, just kissed Bobby a homeless right? guy? Yeah. Just because? Well, no, it was for a... Failed make TV a wish. Pilot. Make a wish. <laughs> was that worth it? Ugh, the pilot a didn't even go. TV pilot. <laughs> Why you kiss? The twink kisses the gay guy. You, you decided to take twink. a shot at us, right? There. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> we 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 were the failed TV pilot. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> well, you did you? <laughs> Comedy Sense yeah. with the worst idea ever. Uh, it, it was no idea. That's really? Why. Which one was that? Yeah, <laughs> we had a no. I we got involved with a no idea. Yeah, we do Literally. that every time. What does that though? mean? They, Every time they sign it for a few bucks, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, you and they know go, the deal. Yeah, go ahead. You guys uh, do a funny radio show. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Just try it. Be yeah. funny. Yeah. Do something. With no money. With like, no money. Do what, it. What, what, well, what's the gist of this? Nah, don't worry about it. Yeah. It was. Did you uh, shoot some? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. The producer, <laughs> the guy, the main guy, Count <laughs> Central, ended up getting Central. fired. I think over us. It's oh like, really? I don't know. He left soon after. Yeah. I was there uh, when he, you guys were taping. He showed up at one of the tapings and wouldn't even talk to me and Ann. I'm like, oh boy. It was horrible. He realized there was, there was nothing going shit, on. It was stupid. <laughs> Hated that. There was literally not an idea. Just walking around, just going, "What is this? I don't get this." <laughs> right. Wasn't it like? Wasn't it like Keith Robinson had to kickbox Voss or something like that? Or oh, right. I guess. Yeah, I guess so. And that sounds entertaining, that actually. I don't know. <laughs> it, there I were comics. Like seen it, yeah. we, we're getting comics to do kind of like uh, Jackass slash. Uh, fear, fear factor, factor type stuff. Things. It made no sense. And Scandal then they drums. would get points, and then you would have a winner by the end of the episode. But the winner got, mm, I don't know, nothing really. <laughs> yeah. It was so the what was the point of doing thing. it? In America, if there wasn't a real yeah, prize. The games that don't pay off, they don't like it. I, I hosted it. Right. I'm so glad and it then, didn't work out. And I hosted comics, that horrible show. And then you learn comics don't really want to do anything. No, I, I knew to, that. To humili <laughs> no, to humiliate themselves. No, right. Like, why am I going to fucking eat this? Aren't we, aren't this we doing? Snot? Aren't we doing enough? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I understand. Yeah, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not even trash, right, right, right. but it's Comedy Central. They should have known. What was so that half the time show? was trying to convince these guys to do stuff that they were never going to fucking they didn't do. Want to do. I hosted it. Uh, uh, like I did. They. Uh, when VH1 was trying to retool itself, and they had Zach as the poster boy, Galvanakis, remember uh -huh. there was about a year there where mm -hmm. he was on every bus with the silly hat and everything. They had, uh, I had signed a deal. That was after my first divorce. I was broke. So I signed a deal to host this uh, Never Mind the Buzzcocks, which was a popular oh, British sure. show, oh, yeah. which is basically a, a, a pseudo game show with improvising and sort of uh, B-list celebrities and whatnot. I had no idea. You know, I, I couldn't. I don't have enough compartmentalization ability to host a fucking game show. I didn't know what the game was. <laughs> I, you know, I, I wasn't that into music in the trivia sense. Certainly not modern music. But the thing, uh, the point I was making is that it was sort of a game show, and comics would come on and like uh, some musical mm -hmm. people. But there was no prize. Yeah. And like in, in America, if you're watching a game show, someone better win something. Yeah. Or it doesn't hey. make sense. Or not win something. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, either or it's so, fine. I'm, I'm so glad it didn't go over. I mean, literally, no one saw. It. it went away. They didn't even run all the episodes. I, I got I got out of the bankruptcy, and I was like, "Thank God." Well, what? Thank God. What happened at the end of the show when the winner was? I don't declared? remember anything. There, I you mean, got no a, prize. Nothing. Well, no, there was like a rig. Each side had an improv person. It was Matt Price and uh, I forget the Brogdon uh, something. I can't remember her first name. So they were regulars. And then you get somebody like Coolio and Burt Kreischer on one side, and then you have Sebastian Bach and oh, uh, and another Jesus. and Mo uh, Mo uh, what's his name Mo. Uh, uh, what's the the, the commentary? Mo Mo Rocca. Mo Mo Rocca. Rocca. Yeah, yeah. So then you do these trivia questions and improv games, and and then uh, then they declare a winner, and that'd be the end of it. But I I couldn't. I, it was horrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the loser has to listen still, to Coolio and Sebastian Bach perform. I think, I think if you look up VH1, never mind the Buzzcocks, there's still like a promotional page for the show. I'm sure. Yeah, I was emaciated. Oh my God, look at that! Wow. No. Uh, wow. Oh, what year is that? Oh, meet is the it? host. What year was that? Nineteen? No, two thousand maybe. Two thousand one. Yeah. 
There it is, Daphne Brogdon. That was the other one. Matt Price is a funny kid. He's on. That was sad that that show got canceled. Men of a certain age. What a what a fucking that great show got show. canceled. I don't know the Ray Romano show. Yeah, it was great. It did. Yes. When? Just now. It just happened in my they head. They just were advertising <laughs> the second season. I just no. canceled it. They were just advertising the second season. I know. They, they didn't renew it. Wow, I didn't know. It's so sad because it was such, it. it was such a great show. Man. That's a hey, bummer. We should uh, we should break here. So we got Mark Marin. Uh, what are we promoting? Uh, obviously, what the fuck uh, podcast, WTF. Yeah, I mean. I, Where do I, they go for the podcast? They go to WTFpod.com. That's good. The okay. most recent 50 are up there. You know, the, you got your uh, the Conan, the Fallon, the, uh, you know, I think uh, Jonathan Winters is definitely still up. You can get the app and get all of them. Uh, you want. I know what I'm going to ask you about after the break, Gallagher. Okay. <laughs> yeah. we've, had some, okay. We've, we've had some good times with Gallagher. Yeah. I, we'll, yeah we'll get into it after the break. He's a baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some issues there. Okay. Anything else you're promoting? That's it? Yeah, no, the WTFpod.com. Well, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going to Montreal uh, this week. I'm doing two shows at the Bell House Live WTFs, uh, but they're sold out, so uh, next oh, time. What a great life. And Joe, what do you got, brother? Uh, Montreal as well this week. Uh, Burr. And me and Bobby Kelly are doing Cheat Live at Cafe Cleopatra. It's starting tomorrow night, 10.30. Yeah, you don't have to call. Cool. Those shows will Fuck do just yeah. fine. So. All right, more with these guys. Stay there. Serious XM. The virus. He's one of the biggest comedy names in middle America and south of the Mason-Dixon line. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. It's Billy the Bassman. Where are we going? All right, now, where settle down. Where are we going? Oh, well, I'll tell you where we're going. We're going to Funny Land. <laughs> He's back with an all-new CD. Where are we going? What a termites eat for breakfast. <laughs> oh, what, Billy? An oak meal. Where are we going? <laughs> Fat, uneducated slobs are calling it a comedic masterpiece. Did you hear about the lookalike competition in China? Yeah, everybody won. <laughs> Jim Crow is rolling in his grave with laughter. Fuck the... Rock oh, it. hey. I hate the fucking... Oh. It's just like you do. Here we go. Move over, Larry the Cable Guy. There's a new bland, predictable redneck in town. All right, what's Mary short for? Uh, she got no legs. Where are we going now? It's Billy the Bat. Man and his all new CD. Where are we going? Available now at truck stops and cracker barrels everywhere. Serious XM, the virus. This is the OB and Anthony Show. The OB and Anthony Show. All right, we're hanging with Mark Marin and hey. Joe DeRosa. The show's flying by today. Yeah. Oh my God. Ooh, little faith no more. Yeah. Ah, right. <laughs> that's for you, Joe. Trust me, that's for you. <laughs> Big faith no more uh, fan right there. Yeah. Any, any, any uh, Amy Winehouse fans, by the yeah, way? I like we, that. We haven't really like talked that record. about record. I mean, she, I don't know how many records she did, but the big one I liked. I thought she was great. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, her big hit. Yeah, her, her big the rehab hit. Album. hit. No, yeah. I, I liked her. It's a it's a sad thing when anyone dies like that. That's yeah, it's a, a waste. I wasn't into her, but she was really talented. Such a young age, but it's a good sound. Uh, you know, I, I, I like that everybody just knows when it's coming. They're yeah, like, that's a weird thing. And, and, it's no surprise. Yeah, but people anymore. write about it, like the papers, especially the English media. Yeah, uh, with those rag papers that they got. Um, just constantly following her and saying, "Wow, look how fucked up she is and everything." And then when she dies, it's like, "Oh, well, way oh, boy, way uh, before her time should have been." It's like you're the one that's just following her around, yeah. counting how many drugs. I think, I think Rupert Mur Murdoch killed her. I think <laughs> just to get some of the heat off of him yeah, for yeah, a little yeah, while. Yeah. Yeah, they really act like they had nothing to do with it. It was I, remember when Britney Spears collapsed in L.A. Yeah, yeah. I was in L.A. when that happened, and they were literally that day following her around and announcing her her location to location on the radio. And then they come out and go, "We don't know why she collapsed. <laughs> yeah, we have no idea. Yeah. She's yeah. running from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> oh, there's, like, th there's the video of them taking out uh, the body. Actually, oh god, but she didn't die way before her time. I'm surprised she made it to 27. Well, that's the sad thing that people I, I don't think really t talk about uh, enough. If is that you know if you're fucked up like that, if you're strung out like that, if you have that the bug that bad alcoholism or drug addiction, nothing, no one can stop you. Nah, no, no one can stop. It's the saddest thing in the world that it's like because in your mind you're like, can't look at yourself. Can't you just stop it? It's a fucking sickness. And nobody can stop you but yourself. Yeah. Your, your willingness to do it. It's tragic. It's, it's a very unfair burden because it's like, you know, I, look, Aunt, you, you care for a drink now and again. I like to embody. I love how you just sugarcoated that job I, I, yeah. so often. I think I, I had a few I, drinks with Anthony this yeah, I wasn't <laughs> this alone until right? three in the morning.
morning on a Friday night. Uh, that felt good. <laughs> by the way, yeah, we went out drinking, and then we got pizza. I ate my my pizza was gone by the time I walked the two blocks. Oh, the home. two blocks home. Yeah, um, how many? Uh, oh, a slice? Two slices. But I'm just walking drunk, fucking zigzagging, <laughs> shoving pizza. <laughs> in my, shoving it was a pe- sad sight. He was that guy just shoving pizza down his throat. I, I used to. Did like, he keep up with you, Aunt? Uh, Joe, oh, please. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Joe. He keeps right up. The, the worst dog. thing about yeah. it, right <laughs> huh? I. But the po- oh wait, real quick, yeah. real quick. The point is, no, is that take your time. It's <laughs> <laughs> the point is, is that you know I like to drink. A lot of guys like to drink. I feel really sorry for guys where it's like you have one beer. And eventually, whether it's a matter of hours or days, your fucking life will be in shambles. Feed right. the monster. It's just yeah, you, something's you, you going to up fuck the up. Monster. It's, it yeah. woke up the monster. <laughs> I, no, I mean, I, I haven't. Uh, I'm, I'm coming up on 12 years sober. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, some, like I went to a concert the other night with the girl. I went to, someone got me tickets to Soundgarden. And some dude next to me, yeah, because I, I really don't think about it much. I mean, that the whole obsession to drink and do drugs has sort of left me. Right. But I'm at a concert. You know, she doesn't really want to be there. It's like an old rock cock concert. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I got free tickets. I love Soundgarden. So I'm there. The guy next to me politely taps me on the shoulder. He goes, you might have a smoke? And I'm like, nah, go ahead. And he's smoking this joint, and I feel it wafting over. And I'm like, I'm not doing anything wrong. Just standing here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing anything wrong. Wait. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm, I'm all right. Right now, I'm not reading. <laughs> oh shit! All right, that's good. That's good. But uh, pot smoke yeah. smells so fucking uh, good. Uh, I know. I, I don't sc- smoke pot, when it's around, I'm I have like, skunks fuck. in my yard. I have skunks in my yard, <laughs> and some part of my brain's like, "This ain't bad. That's that not bad. that bad." Was it you that tweeted good. that uh, Chris Cornell was one of the? Greatest uh, yeah. rock voices ever. You, I did. That was oh, you, yeah, right? Yeah. I got a little flack for that, but you know, what? I didn't I, disagree with that. Well, the thing, uh, I'm a bit. I love uh, rock music. Hey, <laughs> I like you're, the you're rock. Man, Russ Maneve actually said that to me. I said I, I used the phrase rock and roll in the sentence. He goes, right, "Who st- still says rock, rock and, and roll?" roll. <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> rock and who, roll. Name the, the, name, I name like to rock around the clock. The, the, <laughs> name your music choices, just so we know where you're coming from. I come from a lot of places. I, I mean, uh, fair I, enough. The, the, like with Chris Cornell and with Soundgarden, the thing that was weird about going to the show is I, I used to listen to them in the early '90s when they were on Sub Pop. So the girl I'm dating, she was like, yeah, "Well, they were kind of like you know, kind of jock rock when I was a kid." So she came in at the big two big albums, but I was there for the first three or whatever. Right. And they played songs from those. Like I don't listen to them much anymore. But when I was in the concert, I was like, I was amazed at how much of that shit I knew. Mm-hmm. And the thing that amazed me the most was that his voice sounds great. Yeah. And I realized I, I was just being a fanboy, and I was like, holy shit, I could listen to that guy sing anything. Mm-hmm. And and that's when someone tweeted that the, that he was one of the best the best rock singer. And I, I agreed because right. there's very few guys that can do that that you just want to hear sing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and when you take away all the instruments and stuff and just hear his voice, it's holy amazing. Mackerel. And they're pretty, they're pretty stripped you, down. There wasn't much of a show. They were just dudes playing, and mm-hmm. I like seeing that. Like you know, no one dressed you, up. You know the song "Seasons" he did, right? I'm not sure if I know that. Oh wow, it's is from, it great? If, it's from the single soundtrack. Yeah, I don't even know if he did it officially with Soundgarden yeah. or not. It's seasons. It's pretty, yeah, it's stripped down, man. It's mostly just him. You got that? Just a little taste? It's, it's pretty effortless, what, uh, what he does. I think it's Seasons, amazing. right, Ant? Do you remember that song? No. That single soundtrack no. was amazing. I just, you know, I, I, there's a lot of great rock singers. Whenever you get into that dialogue of, like, who's the best and whatever, know, it's, it's, like, ridiculous. Well, who else so, would you put on that list? Greatest rock singers? Yeah. Well, there's a, a lot of guys that are great. I mean, Joe Cocker was pretty great in his prime. Robert Plant was pretty great in his time. Paul Rogers from Bad Company early on yeah, was yeah. great. I like Paul Rogers. Great. Yeah. Eddie Vedder's got a great voice. Uh, and then they're the blues guys. I think Mercury is, takes the cake, though. Yeah, Mercury. I, really I, never, I never listened to a lot of Queen, though. Listen to Chris Cornell when it's just stripped down and pretty much him and an acoustic guitar. It's just, just, a, just a piece. He's got great range is what it is, too. He could, this is going to remind me of something sad. <laughs> 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 Probably. I remember when I was young and I had this girl. Hmm? It's about radio. I remember this from the movie. Yeah, this song. I don't remember this movie. I love this movie. Another song radio just blew off. That they should have. Yeah, they never. Here he comes, right? I feel it. I like that we're all just listening to a song. It's all right. I know. Yeah, it's great. We don't have ratings here. Who cares? Yeah. We'll play the whole fucking album if we want to. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris will get a check from Sound Exchange. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah give him a few more bucks. It's going to kick in, right? I feel it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got to bring it on home. Mm. 
Oh, you don't like it when it's this mellow? No, it's too mellow. It's too so mellow wait, for you? It's like you driving want, a Ferrari you want at fucking like, 30 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You need him fucking... Uh, Aaron Lewis is coming in. vocals up. From Stained. I love Aaron Lewis's voice. Yeah, I... I uh, Did you like Lane Staley? I don't know who's that. Allison Chains? I, I didn't listen to them a lot. He's oh. alright. Oh, I got some blind sides. I got some blind spots with the music. Yeah. Lane yeah. Staley's oh. alright, but Lane Staley, it, there's a difference, I think, between frontmen and vocalists, and then the guys that can do both. You know what I mean? It's like David Lee Roth and Lane Staley I put in frontman category. They, they front the band well, and they have a very good, distinct, unique voice. But they don't have anywhere near the capability of a Chris Cornell or Freddie yeah, Mercury. Yeah, there's a difference between or that, versatility. Yeah, that you know? unique thing versus like real chop, real like real pipes. Yeah, you are, you should, you you gotta, are gonna there's two catch categories. So much, much fucking shit. hell for for saying that. Really? What, I just know. What did I say? Gonna, bad. That Lane Staley doesn't have you that. Kind of put him in the same category as David Lee Roth. Vocally, no, 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 David Lee Roth no, no, no. could what sing I'm a fucking is, note. Okay, Mark Lanigan was good. Have too, you ever heard Lane Staley Mark Lanigan? Scream? So underrated. And, and fucking and, and like the rooster when he fucking really. Lane gets Staley up there is the best Iggy guy. Pop, Iggy Pop's a great singer. Uh, Lane Staley is the yeah, best guy yeah. ever at going like this. Oh my God! <laughs> oh God! God help your Twitter account! God help your Twitter account! I'm sure that's going to help you say that. I mean, I'd hate. I'd hate, I'd hate, I'd hate tweets all week for the shit I said on Fox. Oh, and, believe me, I know. Uh, here yeah. we go. Then we're gonna double died, it up with he this. He died of dope too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he yeah, died yeah. very alone. They found him like uh, I forgot how long. Like, the, the, he, uh, he shut was, out he so many people that he was laying there for a while. Like his cat was eating him or something, right? Yeah, Wasn't his just about. Just oh. about. His cat was going meow, 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 just nibbling on his kneecap. That's the worst part. <laughs> By the way, I made a lot of jokes about That's Amy so Winehouse over the weekend, uh, I, and I'm right there with the Lane Staley jokes, and I love Lane Staley, so relax, course, everybody. Relax. You got a joke about this shit. What joke did you make about Amy? I was afraid to make a joke about her because I, I honestly got that feeling of like ah it's too soon too I gotta soon. let this shit for yeah, a yeah but that's how it used to be but now with Twitter people are like fuck that too soon shit I gotta get my stuff out there you immediately that, that yeah. Twitter's just Twitter, such a Twitter's uh, thoroughly killed anyone's ability to be empathetic or, yes. yeah it's awful <laughs> there's no Dude, need for human feelings the in the world about Twitter. The, you could read the first announcement and go oh, holy shit Amy Winehouse is dead yeah. Amy Winehouse joke would be like the next fucking yeah. line and, and, and it's like it, it doesn't give you time to no, kind of wait man. and then go, hey, I got a joke. There you was know, an unwritten rule. Need another seven well, astronauts, there, get it? There, was uh, a, there always was an unwritten <laughs> rule, but not anymore. Not no. with the well, social network. That, you got to well, get this shit out. Yeah, I, if you're going to you go down that road is what well, I'm saying. Well, no, no, I mean, people do it, but I, I think that we get caught up in the pace of, of the way the social networking thing goes, and we really forget that, like, hey, there's a person and a yeah, family yeah, connected yeah, yeah. to this. You know what I yeah. mean? That some people are genuinely hurt, but some. Yeah, but when you're sitting there just looking at your Twitter feed. <laughs> no, you didn't know her, but you're a person. I, I didn't know her. I, I didn't fucking know her. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> you, know, no, you, know, you do make a good point, though. Bob. No, but I understand it. I mean, I've made my own mistake. With that, sure. I mean, you got to fight the urge, but uh, but there are times. Well, the thing I was gonna say about drug addiction. Oh. Th here's the fucked up thing: is like if you guys like you drink or well, you get fucked up, you eat pizza or whatever. But the saddest <laughs> moment that I remember about doing coke is that you know I'd go down to like you know B Avenue B. I'd go to this guy's house. I'd score the coke, and the, this is how you know you're a fucked up drug addict is when. The bar is closing. You're coked up, and you're at a bar where there's literally just you and some other guy at the end of the bar. <laughs> and it's four in the morning, and you're thinking something's going to happen. Say, like, this shit's going to turn around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, like, the party's about to start. Yeah. This thing's going to turn around. <laughs> That's Holy what you know, like, shit. I am lost. You just scared me in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. What year were you going down to the avenues? That's the Lower East Side, man. Yeah. Well, no, this this guy ran sort of a Coke uh, salon. It was not like, I wasn't, I wasn't on the street. You know, you went up to his house. They and, sort know, of cleaned up yeah, those yeah. areas. And people, be, people be hanging out. And, you know, yeah. he was one of those guys that he'd put Coke out for everybody, but it was kind of stepped on. But it kept, but it kept people around. You know, you know what I mean? It was, it was like a little party. Kept the party going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, I, 
I used to do coke when I was in Geneseo, but it had to be stepped on so much that I don't think I officially ever did coke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what the point? I'm yeah, not even joking. Like, what kind of coke were we getting at a state school in upstate Shit, New York? Oh, I was at this guy's house. I used to be the early bird because I was married at the time, and I and I had this thing in my head where I'm like, if I get my coke in early, I can get home and go to bed, and she won't know. So I would be calling the guy <laughs> at like 5.30 in the afternoon. You know, the sun wasn't even down. So I'd be like the first guy at the house, and he's still closing the blinds. <laughs> and uh, and when I was there once, when the, the, the this weird little Latino dude who looked like he was 100 showed up with a ball wrapped in tinfoil to give to the guy. So I was there when the stuff came. I've actually like, got made right, delivery, yeah. Right. So, so I'm sitting there, and uh, and then I'm like, we'll put some of that out. And the guy's like, all right. So he, he, he shaves a little off this rock. He puts it out. I do two lines. I felt something I'd never felt in my <laughs> life. My, 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 I could feel all of my brain cells just peel back. And like, you know, I, I, I literally felt God's cock, you know, like, you know, like in my head. And, and, and I say to the guy, I say like, Jesus, why don't you, why don't you sell that? And he looks at me and goes, because people would never leave me alone. <laughs> oh. You got to step on it just to fucking, yeah. yeah it's so just like all the rest of the shit. Yeah, exactly. Just like it's all just, the rest of the stuff out here. I, f I remember I was in Alabama one time. <laughs> and this fucking, <laughs> this chick, I had plans with this chick after the show. And she comes in, she comes in with this other girl on her, this guy. And she's like, look, she was supposed to hang out with me at the hotel. She's like, look, we got to. We got to go. This guy's going to make a Coke deal. <laughs> so I'm like, Ooh. all right. She goes, I'm going to leave and come back. And I'm like, no, you're not. I'm yeah. going to come with you because oh, you're not going to come back. I ended up in her fucking trailer. I'm not exaggerating. Her trailer in the woods in Alabama and Birmingham. And they break out all this Coke and they're doing lines. They're like, do you want any? Do you want any? I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm good. Then I'm like, eh, all right, oh, I'll do yeah, a little. Oh, yeah. And then just like you said, you think it's going to turn around. Flash forward, it's 7 a.m. Oh, and you're still in a trailer. I'm in the trailer, <laughs> in the kitchenette of the trailer with the dealer. Yeah. And we're screaming at each other how we're the only two people that understood how brilliant Star Wars Episode <laughs> One was. <laughs> Just waiting to fuck this girl. I'm gonna fuck her. 8 a.m., 9 a.m. It's gonna come. Like, something's gonna happen. She's gonna come out and say, "Yeah." Let's. Oh, and then all you end up doing is jerking off to save your life. It's like you know, you're sitting there, like your heart's pounding. Like I don't want to die. Maybe I'll jerk off for four hours. See how that goes. And then the other you know, sun comes up, and you've barely. I tried to go to sleep in her bed. She had a kid, but the kid wasn't there. Oh, this keeps getting better. Yeah. Wow. How old was the kid? The kid was like four. The kid was oh, at her dad's. God, I tried to go to sleep in her bed. You know when you get like the coke chills, like you're cold. Yeah. And I'm in her bed, and I'm all cold. I'm oh, just grinding my fucking oh, teeth. little this bed in a horrible. trailer. And I'm this in the is horrible. I'm in the chick's I know. bed. <laughs> This is terrible. <laughs> and I'm like, I got, I got to put something on the TV, to, you know? Oh, yeah. No. And I, I found a videotape of the secret of Nim that was her daughter's. <laughs> and I put it on. I'm like, I, I remember this movie. <laughs> this is good. This is going to calm me down. Yeah, calm down. Calm oh, down. Dude, it was so bad. And you get, you know, when you get back and you're like, well, my first show's at eight. If I go to bed now, I can get six hours of sleep. <laughs> Oh my God! I, I had a night in New York that was. Oh, I still don't know what happened. I was doing comedy. I don't know what happened, and it scares me because I, I, I remember I was I was married. I was living on, with my first wife on 16th Street. I go out to do comedy. I'm drinking still. Then I knock back a couple of vodkas, and there was this couple at the bar. In my memory, they look like Boris and Natasha. You know the cartoon. <laughs> yeah. Like there was something fucked up. There was something wrong. And the dude says, "You want some blow?" I go, "Yeah." So I do some blow. The next thing I remember, there's just bits and pieces of me ending oh, up in an shit. apartment. You know, there was more than oh, one person involved. Man. And and like you know, I don't like I wake up and like all of a sudden I'm getting out of a cab and Natasha is like you know saying you know she's putting me in a cab and I get home to my wife and I'm and I'm like I don't know what happened and she goes why is your shirt on backwards and I'm like oh, <laughs> oh fuck, shit. what happened oh, boy. you know and then and then she plays a message for me that I, I apparently I called and left a message and it was she said what I, this is what I had to deal with I didn't know where you were and and she played the message and it was me saying I'll be home as soon as I get out of this dream <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ. I, I have no idea what happened to that, uh, that night, shit. and uh, I'm not sure I want to. Jesus. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure I want to. You know. Just best leave it blocked yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I, there was no huh. scars. My ass didn't hurt. And there was, I didn't know. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not sure what went down. The shirt was off at some point. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, that's, a, that's something you know. Boy, back in the day when you had a good time and you didn't remember it. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Somebody had a good time. 
That's the thing with uh, with blow too. It's like I, I do think it's a certain personality that gets addicted to anything, and I don't think that blow has that evil addictive quality that the commercials in the eighties made you think. Really, really? I, I, I'll argue <laughs> that one with you. But, I will argue that with you. Yeah. But I think a lot of guys can blow do doesn't it. Have an addictive quality. No, no, no. But, <laughs> That's good. No, no, no. Doctor now, Doctor DeRosa. <laughs> I want some now. <laughs> All right. Before well, everybody I'll jumps for 12 on me, years. now he's <laughs> gonna go score. <laughs> Mark, it's safe. Just do it, dude. It's yeah, come on. No. Um, what I'm saying is, is like every commercial in the 80s made you think if you did it once, you were addicted, and that mm -hmm. was it. And it's yeah. like it's clearly not like that. It's like there are guys that do it once every six months, and they're fine. But I think the pussies, yeah. I Feeling think the pussy. or liars. Yeah, I think sure. the uh, addictive quality of it every time with everybody is, it's like you're saying, it's like you do it and you can't get enough that night. It's yes. not about the next day. It's that night. No, you, like, I always left the line for the morning. Like oh, I knew, wow, I, like I knew I wouldn't. I knew I wasn't going to get that's much crazy. sleep. And that's, I used to. That's have to, impossible. It is impossible. No, but when that's I worked impossible. at a restaurant, I used to work at a breakfast shift at a at a restaurant when I was in college. And I knew that if I did well the night before, that I was going to sleep like two hours. And if I didn't leave myself two good bumps to get up to you know to How get to the grill, how could anyone do that's that? That's impossible. Like the whole night of you, you do a line. The first line you fucking do, mm. you're like. The whole night becomes dedicated Look, to getting your more coke. Getting tight. That's what I'm saying. More coke. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm getting a drip like, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like, like now I need more. Yeah, more, 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 and you'd never feel like you did when you the first uh, of the night yeah. either. Yeah, I try. Uh, no, to... Somehow or another, I managed to. Like I was never not until later when I go, that was this this fucked up thing about. When I was married, the, the first wife, you know, she knew I had a drug problem and I was trying to get off stuff. And, and what, what would happen was I couldn't do it around her ever. So when right. I'd go to LA or something, it was like, forget uh, it, man. Make up a lost yeah, time. I, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. I'd be, you'd end up with, in hotel rooms with, with, with pirates and gypsies. You know, like, <laughs> you're like, you know, where the fuck are this your teeth. Yeah, yeah. Hide my wallet. Yeah, how long are we going to be at this for a while? <laughs> yeah, like, I, uh. like one time I was on, I think I was on Wellbutrin to quit smoking and I got all gacked up on Coke and my arm started to curl up like I had palsy and i'm like whoa yes. man i better stop this doesn't look good yeah, like, I, couldn't un I couldn't undo my hand jesus christ you know so <laughs> so that's when it gets a little scary when you're doing it with that much passion you end up in places where it's just crazy like you end up in like i remember going to Oh, score some coke with this guy. You always, I knew a guy that, like, I never was the guy that would go out into the darkness to find. Right, it. you, yeah. needed, the you needed the guy. You needed the, the intermediary between, you know, like the good place and fucking hell. Yeah, like, right. you know, and between here's the five hundred bucks. And yeah, right. well, I once yeah. paid a guy five hundred dollars to not fuck me on coke deals. I said, look, <laughs> I said, look, I'm not. I don't come to L.A. that often. Here's five hundred dollars. Just keep that so you don't burn me. Yeah, and he fucking burned me, dude. I oh god, here oh, I go. What a no, bastard. I'm going. I go to like. I'm 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 gacked up, right? I got I got some coke. Well, what happened was it ended up being speed. I was in L.A. with this guy Bob, and he hooked up. He said, "I don't think it's coke, but it's working." I'm like, "All right." So, <laughs> so I think it was crank. So, anyways, I end up going to Minneapolis, you know, to do a weekend to, at the club. I was going to ask, did you have to, or did you just no, end up <laughs> going there? <laughs> was, no, I love those stories. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a pretty it's a good, it was a good club, but I ran out of the shit, so I didn't know where to get it. Right, so I I I called that guy. I said, "Will you FedEx me an eight ball?" <laughs> All right, <laughs> Jesus Christ! So he goes, "You please commit even more of a federal offense." Right. So I fed I, I FedExed him like th however much, two hundred fifty, three hundred bucks, and he says, "I'm on it." And then he calls me up. He says, "All right, it's coming. Here's the confirmation number." I put it in a videotape and I stuck it in like one of the holes of the videotape, and it's in a package. And he gives me a confirmation number, right? So of course, like I'm up the next morning at the club where I'm having it delivered, the FedEx, waiting for the FedEx truck. You know, so the guy, like this goes on for two days. I go to the club the first. Day, oh, and I'm like, was there a FedEx yeah. for me? And, the, and the, they're at the club. They're like, no, I didn't get anything. I'm like, what the fuck? And Ugh. the next day, I'm back at the club, and literally the FedEx truck, you know, like, I, it comes up, and I'm like, is there a FedEx for me? And the guy's like, sir, get off the truck. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and, Jesus. And he fucking the ice cream me. man, you motherfucker. Yeah, get away but, from you. But he, uh, he, he th that's what Coke will do to you. Is like, uh, I sent him money. He created this whole I, story about a videotape, a confirmation number. Yeah. But it, so he did fuck me. I, I can't I, imagine I, you on Coke. Huh? Jesus. I know. <laughs> That's crazy. crazy. <laughs> Wow! He's yeah, climbing up lampposts. And shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, uh, it just made me feel uh, clear. Well, I love <laughs> it. <laughs> it's a certain clarity to it. I love that you got the uh, the middleman thing because it's like I've always been like like I've bought drugs. Yeah, yeah. You know, but when some when I meet somebody and they sell drugs, I'll trash them. 
You know, behind their back, of course. Of course. And I'll go, fucking idiot, he's a drug dealer. Fuck that guy, he's a moron. And yeah. people will go, he will go, yeah, but you do drugs sometimes. Like, why would you? How? Can, and I go, yeah, but I also eat at McDonald's. If you worked at McDonald's, <laughs> I think you were a fucking loser, too. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like that Goodwill hunting, like... What's the matter with laying brick? Yeah, Nothing. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you you could do more than that. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Most guys yeah. dealing are capable of doing more than yeah, that. Yeah, now give me my eight ball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my fucking drugs. You're a uh. genius. You should really be doing something else. Do you got this shit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, uh, here come more hate tweets I've, from I've, the angry I've, drug dealers now. <laughs> yeah. Hate you know, tweets man. from drug dealers. Don't take it too personally. Well, the Allison <laughs> Chains was a little too far, Joe. Oh, a little boy. too far on that. Hey, that's one. what I do. You know, I walk the line. You know? <laughs> you well, why did you mention David Lee Roth in the same sense? All I was saying was, Allison, Lane Stanley cannot do what Freddie Mercury did as far as versatility. Freddie Mercury would sing a fucking ragtime song and then sing Bohemian Rhapsody and then sing Sheer Heart Attack. It's like. Yeah, but we all just wanted to hear Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Stone Cold Crazy? Uh, this, uh, actually, I, mean, I did. On. He had a great voice. I this just is... didn't listen to him much. Yeah, I liked Queen, I guess. Yeah, more or less. I didn't get I didn't get too deep with those guys. Well, I'm, all, I'm all worked up. Yeah, yeah we can break and you, you, you get all uh, reset. Like, huh? like you start thinking about it and remembering. Yeah, it's like you, horrible. You, you, it is good, sort of horrible oh. because do you well, miss that, it? Huh? You miss it? No, I don't. I don't miss Coke at all. I don't. No. I don't miss booze you, at all. I miss. I miss pot more than anything else. Do I you mean, wake yeah. up? Pot was easy. Do you wake up as an older gentleman, older, yeah, yeah. and go, "Holy shit, I can't believe I'm alive." Because <laughs> you start thinking about some of the shit that you. Yeah, you and just... I think that's better than saying "fuck, I'm alive." You know, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, I can't believe I'm alive is really a, it's progress. You don't even you know? think twice about the chances you you take as a well. You, that's the thing about drugs. Guy, the know? thing about drugs is that as soon as you enter that world, you've exponentially uh, amplified your the possibility of you getting killed for some reason not just drugs yes, you're, yes. On the, you're on the wrong end of a deal you catch you're a just, bullet you're in a bad neighborhood you're behind the wheel of a car i mean driving just, all yeah, that you're shit just amplified. but that's what i'm saying and now you you almost value your life no more. I, I so you, you yeah. wake up every once in a while like holy fuck i was really taking some crazy fucking oh, yeah. chances oh yeah but not even thinking twice about it back then no no yeah just i remember in in when i lived in boston and and they uh, at catch rising star they used to let the comics drink for free so everybody would be barreling back from every one night or all over the New England area to just get fucked up by, you know, so you got there before two. Right. And the type of shit that used to go, I mean, I wrecked a car once in the middle of the night, drunk as shit, and I lucked out. I mean, I lucked out. I was driving this woman home back to my house, and I was fighting with her. It was like three in the morning. I was drunk. I was coked up. We were fighting about nothing. And I did that thing where I'm like, fuck you. I'm bringing you home. I swung a U-turn. I didn't navigate it properly, and I just slammed a par into a parked car, knocked it up onto the sidewalk. We're fuck, literally two blocks yeah. from my house, and I'm saying, I got to get the fuck out of here. So I put it in reverse, and clearly the car's like, yeah, yeah. there's smoke coming out of it. And I'm like, we got to get the fuck out of here. I'm wasted. And then I would see people coming out in bathrooms. It was like the end of a musical. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was just like all of a sudden, like, the, the stage is being just people in bathrooms going, "What's happening?" And I'm like, "Fuck, fuck!" And then I'm like, I'm trying to pull around the corner, and then I'm surrounded by cop cars. Oh, and like this woman's sober, and I'm on the, you know, the car's fucking oh, wrecked. And then they're doing, I'm doing the sobriety test, and they're like, "Where are you going?" I'm like, "I was gonna go park it at home and call you guys." I'm like, "Well, the accident happened over there," and I'm like, "I know, but I, I just needed to get home to call you guys." And I'm shit faced. And then this miracle happened. There was like three cop cars the cops are surrounding me a cop out of nowhere pulls up and goes someone's robbing the bakery and like a bunch of 10 year olds all these cops are like oh we go, can we go so the guy wow. looks at me and he says i'm going to give you a, a ticket for leaving the scene of property damage you know you deal with it and they all took off and i was like oh Thank Holy God. Can you wow, drive you it home? Lucky. He said. Can you drive it home? I'm like, yeah, I was I trying I to drive it. it home. I'll push it home. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Wow. That is a luck out. Yeah. Oh, the car was totaled. Those were the days. Yeah. They don't do that anymore. Never do. Big risks. I think people have gotten better uh, with uh, at drinking uh, and driving. At drinking and driving. <laughs> at, uh, uh, I, I think people are very afraid of it these days because uh, I remember driving home drunk. Yeah. No, no, driving home, uh, uh, or, or you wake up early on Saturday or Sunday morning, and you drive down the expressway, and there would be cars just pulled over on the side of the expressway, yep. and they were all the people that got arrested the night before. They were like, just, like, what happened? People yeah. abandoning right. their cars. Well, some of those right. guys, they never even arrested you. They just said, you're leaving this fucking car, I'm driving you home, or you got to find someone else to drive you That's home. That's a good car. They didn't always arrest yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm but serious. But there were a lot a more of those thing. cars uh, on the side of the road right. in, the, in the older days. I'm way more uh, worried about the texting people. 
I, I finally. You know what? That's I more finally, dangerous. That more dangerous. Dude, so I finally turned. The, I finally it turned is. the corner. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, there's a point of where you're so drunk that you are just gonna fucking kill somebody. Right. But but most people, if they're over the legal limit. But not completely fucked up. It's safer than if you're texting. Well, yeah, because when well, you're, yeah, at least yeah, when yeah, you're yeah, drunk yeah. driving, you you're know, trying some, to see someone, the road. Well, someone's you're, driving. You're yeah, trying yeah, to at least yeah. see the road. Yeah, so, yeah, someone's somebody, driving the right. car. Someone's looking. <laughs> no matter how blurry. Yeah, it is, when you're or, texting, no one's fucking driving no the car. No one's driving. Yeah. You, you look up, you're like, holy fuck! How long is my car driving itself? It's amazing. An unguided missile. You're trying to squeeze out that one word that's a little long. Yeah, what are you risking your life, your life, and the life of others to say like, fuck you, soy milk is so holy shit, right? Right. Just <laughs> swerving all over the place. Yeah, I, I hold it up and just block. I hold it up like this, and I'm blocking one of my eyes with yeah, the text. China. And I'm like, well, I've got one eye on the road. I'm good. As like, long as I'm not looking you. down. I, do I it. have heard do Lane it. Staley before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, that'll be you driving. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Responding to tweets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad at it. I can't get my I can't get my head out of my fucking phone. I can't. I mean, I, 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 I yeah, do yeah. It. I'm trying to get better. It's a constant. Yeah, yeah I, I haven't checked. I think we're all losing the battle. It Even really I, is odd. Where the fuck was I? Was where the fuck was I? I saw old people. Do, oh, I was at a, a playground with my uh, my kid uh, over the weekend, and the grandparents were there, all on their fucking phones. I thought it was just the young. They got them too. Younger now. It's the oddest thing. It's but like, even the older people are fucking stuck in their phones. You think of the old days, and it's like, what the fuck did you do? Talk. We're always. <sighs> what the fuck did you do with you? Let, your your I, brain quiet down for a minute. Like, did you? No, but it was. I'm not, trying to remember, like. What the fuck I did with all that time, dude? You could, you, 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 could, you couldn't call at this anybody. Point, you could, at this point, if you leave your house without your phone, there's no reason to leave your house. Well, like, why it, the fuck am I leaving yeah, my house? What am I doing? You can't right. relax. You can't fucking relax. It drives me crazy. It has ruined my brain. It's like, dude, I have days where I'm like, I got my work done. Yeah. I went to the gym. I did what I had to do today. I'm tired. I'm yeah. gonna take a fucking two hour nap. I've earned this. No, nope. and I can't. Fucking lay there because I'm so goddamn scared <laughs> that somebody needs to get in touch with me. The fucking emails going off, the text, the phone. It's ridiculous, man. It's it, you're, you're, our brains are not designed for this much stimulation. And yeah, right and yeah. You, less than ten years ago, you're like, I'm gonna go home and check my messages. Yeah, my messages. Remember how great that was? Yeah. Boop. And then you you'd be have pissed off. Three messages. Like, oh fuck, like, three. Oh okay. <laughs> Ooh. Pick up, and they all started. Pick up. Pick up. <laughs> Anthony, pick up. I guess you're not home. Oh fuck. And uh, you'd be sitting over your answer machine going, Come on. Oh, I hope that fucking broad call. Yeah. Oh, please let that chick come <laughs> yeah. in. You get so excited. Now if she doesn't get right back to you, you're like, That's gone, fucking yeah. cunt. Fuck Tweet her. me, Facebook me, text me, <laughs> yeah. email me, or right. call me. Right. Plenty of ways to get in touch with me. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then you get the text from her. I was in the shower. What's your problem? Yeah. <laughs> it's been three minutes. Five minutes, minutes <laughs> you fucking asshole, right? Three What's minutes. What's my problem? I thought you got decapitated somewhere. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Who are you fucking in the shower? <laughs> <laughs> and there's no way to really blow anybody <laughs> off on the phones. Or, no, oh, you can't there's hide. There's so many ways no to get in touch. And then you think sometimes if someone's trying to get in touch with you and you go, all right, I'm not going to call them. Yeah. But that means now I can't tweet. Yeah, I can't exactly. fucking because you know, now they all know, they know where you are. I can't, I can't Facebook anything. I can't do that because then they know I, I got my phone right in my I, fucking hand. Yeah, you got to stay I'll in your you, house. You God, God forbid you want to have an affair or something. You got to have a body double, and you gotta, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to change cars and parking lots like they do when they're trying to protect the <laughs> yeah. mob guy. Go inside an <laughs> underground parking, <laughs> yeah, come out yeah. another car, yeah, like Quick. a casino. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I told you yeah, they yeah, put your name yeah, in that yeah, book. It's over. You're in there without Capone for Christ's sake. Who the fuck is getting away with? Cheating, you know? nobody. Who the fuck is getting away with Who cheating? You're absolutely right. Getting away with that it just shit. is. There's no way you can give somebody that much information on how to get in touch with you without your significant other knowing exactly who's getting in touch with you. I know a guy. I know a guy who will remain nameless for obvious reasons. Yes, we're in a cab the other night, and he goes. Uh, he goes, yeah, I fuck around with my girl all the time. And I go, really? And I go, what do you do with your phone? What do you do? And he goes, oh, dude, I got another SIM card that I keep oh, in my wallet. Shit. He goes, I get home, boop, pop that one in. It's all different contacts. Right now there's a... <laughs> Yeah. He's like that goes out to all the fucking side girls, right. and I'm like, you're a that you're a fucking genius. <laughs> He's got this good boss SIM card and his bad. naughty boss yeah, no, SIM. Yeah, unfortunately, there's a cabbie tweeting right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and you're copied and at Joe DeRosa, so and so, we're in my cab with. <laughs> Yeah, you're assuming wow. any cab driver would know who the fuck I am. Yeah. So uh, it's, uh, the, oh, ad, the that, anonymity protects me, so I can famous. have conversations that like that. That it does. It, it really stinks. But that's like a real <laughs> big thing to do. 
get another SIM card, go through all that. Like, most guys aren't, first of all, that smart. Or, or you don't want to go through that trouble. Well, who just wants, to a, fuck who wants around. another phone bill? Another phone <laughs> bill, my God. But it's, 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 but, but you can't get in touch with anyone without everyone knowing who you're getting and in touch every, with. And every, every, Social network now keeps you logged in. Gmail keeps you logged in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's email. But I mean, you know, Facebook, all that yep. other bullshit keeps you logged in. So your girl can check all that shit, right? Yeah. Your phone, you're fucked. All that stuff. It's, <laughs> your it's phone, fucking you're crazy. fucked. Dude, Facebook the other day, I got a notification that goes, Do you want to give us your phone number? Only your friends will be able to see it on here. It's <laughs> I like, hate are that you shit. fucking yeah. crazy? Yeah. What? Why? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't I, think I'm doing I, that. I don't understand enough about computers to know when I'm being fucked with. <laughs> you know, you know, like I try to keep it as simple as possible. Right, right. How do I sign out? <laughs> when am I done? Like, I have no idea if my computer is thinking right now. I don't know. <laughs> like, when they people talk about spyware, other people using your computer as a hard drive, I don't know if well, that's happening. It could yeah. be happening like, right you, now. Even yeah. if you unplug it, I think the thing's still fucking me. <laughs> your computer. That's, that's I turned great, it off. It's still fucking me somehow. That, that is a great point, because that's what got Anthony Weiner. He didn't, he didn't understand the basics of fucking Facebook yep. and, and uh, Twitter. Twitter. He had to your say how to take a picture. Yeah. Your, computer, <laughs> well, yeah. your yeah. computer now is like a, uh, it's like a dirty accountant. <laughs> That's like, you know, 10 years down the road, it's like, well, you gave us power of attorney. Uh, you yeah. know what your, I mean? And where did all my fucking, where did all this? Your computer is the nosy friend. I did it's exactly what taking, you asked of me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you were, you were smiling when you got those, uh, <laughs> those checks. Yeah. It's Don Cheadle. <laughs> Really? Donnie! Hey, oh, Don shit, Cheadle. look at that. Donnie! He's, he's, uh, he's, he's a good actor. Like Don he was on the plane with me yesterday. Was he? Yeah, in first. There he is, right I was there. in coach. Oh, come on. Donnie Cheeto! You don't, uh... Can they hear us out there? No. I'm hoping. Turn he's, up. he's not going. He's not coming Why would he come our on show? our show? It's perfect. Yeah, I did. Mean, why, yeah, why not? It's not Cheeto! Because it's not perfect. What's up? Hey! It's not his, uh, He's a good uh, actor, that ooh, guy. Nothing. Good actor. He is. You talk to him? Ha, 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 ha. Uh, he's like, I'm going in here, man. Come he's doing sway show. Come he's booked, he's booked yeah, he's sway booked up. How are you doing, Don Chill? I just want to say, big fan. Good, everybody. How you doing, man? we just want to say hi. That's all. I know you're busy. Big fan, man. We can't take you away from another show. That's not fair around here, but yeah, look, look, good to be, good to be. See, look, take it easy, Don Chill. Don Chill, ladies and gentlemen. We could officially said. We can officially say we had Don Cheadle on Add the show. him to the list of celebrities that have list. done the Opie and Anthony show. That was fucking awesome. Didn't even Don get Cheadle, on, didn't didn't even get on the this. mic. No. Get, no. You get a, <laughs> people are listening just have to take our word for it. I know. It, that Don Cheadle was yeah. just like, didn't even get on the Holy mic. Holy shit, Morgan Freeman. Hey, hey, hey Morgan. Morgan. Yeah, 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 I'm a hey, fucking Morgan. asshole. I looked. <laughs> I looked like a what fucking idiot. I was Needy. Fucking needy. Ah, jeez. All right, listen. We could have anybody on the show right now. That really doesn't matter. Dead people. People. Doesn't Way matter. off mic somewhere. Yeah, 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 I love you. <laughs> I uh, listened uh, Mark Maron and yes, uh, Joe DeRosa. So we got uh, the What the Fuck podcast, WTFpod.com. Pod. Exactly. Okay. And uh, you guys are doing shows up in Canada for the Montreal Comedy Festival. Yes, sir. Yes. You're going up there too? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be up there tomorrow to through Sunday. Tomorrow you're going. Saturday. Yeah. When do you go? I'm going Wednesday. I got to do the keynote address. I'm shitting my pants about oh, it. Damn. What's the keynote address? Yeah, what they that? ask me to do is this new thing they do. It's like, you know, Andy Kinler does a state of the industry thing. And then the last few years they've been doing this this keynote thing. And they asked me to do it months ago. And here's how crazy. Oh. Here's, here's my insecurity. My first thought was like, they couldn't find anybody else? I mean, it's, it's months away. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why, why me? <laughs> but, why uh, do you say yes to that? Well, I mean, that's uh, nerve wracking. It's very nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah, but it's, you, know, you it, put yourself in that when situation. When is it? It's uh, Thursday at like one in the afternoon. I'm so come. no one's I going. Can't wait. So it's good. It's, oh, yeah, now Joe's gonna go. is going to be there. I'll All be right. there. No, no everybody will be there. It's one in the afternoon. That's when. Oh, that's damn. when everybody no, can I, come. I, I, Are you putting more pressure on him? Oh, I don't want him to fail. Can I just get? Hold on, I got a draft right here, fellas. Can we just go through it? Yeah, let me just let me just run this by you. Could you guys help me punch this up a little bit? Please punch it up. We're gonna talk. <laughs> more about uh, Mark Maron's podcast after the break. I want to know about Gallagher and uh, his right. girlfriend. Oh! I hear the girlfriend thing is doing working out, doing okay now. But yeah. you had some rough uh, patches yes, that I, I want to get into. I've surrendered. And, and DeRosa, <laughs> what do you want to talk about after the break? Uh, well, Give us let's something. Talk about some. I'd like to talk about some relationship things oh, if we could. Oh, yeah? Well, yeah, I'm in for that well, well, because right, yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. like talking about that shit with Mark. Man, it's oh, it's yeah. fun having stories. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> this man, this man is a mine of stories. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so I, I'd of like the to wrong talk about that. way to do it. <laughs> yeah. you, got, you got a lady in your life, Joe? 
Uh, no, and I'm trying to figure it all out right now. So that's I've been having a lot of encounters. Figure out whether or not you have a Let's lady. Put it that way. <laughs> yeah. No, encounters. I'm trying to figure out if I actually want that. I'm at that crossroads where it's like it's the same thing with going to the gym. It's like I just started going because yeah. I was at that crossroads of like, dude, you do it now or you'll never do it. Right. And now I feel like, okay, buddy, you you settle down now. Or you're never going to know how to do this. You can't try to do this at 40. Don't right? get ahead of yourself, though. <laughs> Sometimes you, you think you should be doing something because you're a certain age, what? and you make some of the biggest mistakes of your That's life. That's what I don't understand. That's yeah, what I'm yeah. trying to figure out. That's what I'd like yeah. to talk about. I think about. me and Anthony can help you. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're going to figure it all oh, out next. Oh, I'm flirting. The OB and Anthony Show. The OB and Anthony Show. Damn it. On the virus. Serious XM. Medicine. Dr. Steve. Hey, it's your old pal, Dr. Steve. Join me and my wacky band of medical misfits every Saturday night at 10 p.m. Eastern for Weird Medicine, the first and still only uncensored medical show in the history of radio. Got a question? Call 347-WHO-HEAD and leave a voicemail or visit weirdmedicine.com. Saturday at 10 p.m. Eastern on The Virus. Sirius 105 XM shit. What is it? it? I don't know the numbers. XM 105, Sirius 206. So I'm driving. My kids are in the back seat on the way to our summer destination. When I hear it on our Sirius XM radio, traffic up ahead and coming fast. Four lanes deep and about a thousand cars long. I take evasive maneuvers. And before you know it, we're back cruising on our way to happier times. Thanks to Sirius XM. First traffic and weather. Get to where you're going this summer faster and with less hassle. With Sirius XM First Traffic and Weather. Channels 132 through 140. Hey, Steve Covino here. Just finished another day at Sirius XM hosting the Covino and Rich Show and playing music on Octane. I want to be confident when I take my shirt off at the beach. But between work and being a dad, who's got time to eat right and go to the gym? Hey, I'm sorry, officer, that I forget to signal. Yo, it's Derek Poundstone. No, Covino. I pulled you over because you need to stop making excuses. I'm a full-time cop, and I still find time to eat right and train three hours a day to defend my title as America's strongest man. Now let's get going. Poundstone Power Radio, Wednesday, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern, Sirius 92 XM 207. This is Derek Poundstone, America's strongest man, here to talk to you about soy. That's right, I said soy. The fact is, meat and dairy proteins, including whey, can't give you all the building blocks you need for maximum development and recovery. By adding soy to your diet, you get the higher levels of naturally occurring L-glutamine and L-arginine. Plus, it's good for your heart. And believe me, I know the value of heart. Derek Poundstone is powered by soy protein. Learn more at poundstonepower.com. If you're in business, you know that securing your IT infrastructure, accelerating network and application performance, while simultaneously protecting important data is no easy task. Often it requires buying solutions from many vendors, all with different training requirements, user experiences, implementation complexities, and support headaches. Barracuda Networks offers an expansive lineup of award-winning security, networking, and storage solutions designed to gain control of your network while saving IT resources without sacrificing functionality. Best of all, if you ever need support, you'll speak to one of our own technical representatives, not an outsourced call center after navigating through one of those aggravating phone trees. Reclaim your network like 130,000 other businesses have done with security, networking, and storage solutions by Barracuda Networks. Hardware, virtual, cloud, and hybrid deployment options are available to meet and scale with the demands of any sized business, regardless of where your users are located. Visit Barracuda.com for your free 30-day trial. That's Barracuda.com. It used to be that if you had money to invest and wanted to invest in something as awesome as a crunch gym, the most innovative butt-kickingest gym ever, you couldn't. No way. No how. No dice. But thanks to scientific breakthroughs in awesomeness, now you can. That's pretty awesome. You know what else is awesome? The fitness industry. It's an $18 billion industry. That's nine zeros with an 18 in front. Let me add that up for you. Awesome industry plus awesome brand equals, um, I don't know, maybe awesome to the power of holy crap, that's freaking unbelievable? Well, friend, believe it. With a Crunch franchise, you have the opportunity to do more than just put your money to work for you. You have an opportunity to put your money to work out for you. Not only is that true, it's also a pun. That makes it truer. So, hurry to your nearest web browser and visit CrunchFranchise.com today, where you can get all the awesome info you need. That's CrunchFranchise.com. Awesome.
independent contractors. Find out why TriMac Transportation was voted a 2011 Best Fleet to Drive for by calling 888-799-4374. Be ready to discover what has never been done in trucking before. We're offering you minimal startup costs, an industry-leading fuel program, and $1.68 a mile will give you exactly what you need to be successful in your business. Call 888-799-4374 or visit our website at trimac.com. TriMac Transportation, partner with the winning team. What after today's Ron and Fez show, check out the Opie and Anthony replay beginning at 3 p.m. Eastern. And if you miss all of that, you can check out another replay of the Opie and Anthony show beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Virus Sirius XM. I came to play. Your favorite Sirius XM stars and celebrities are playing fantasy football. It's the second annual Celebrity Fantasy Football Draft. Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern, featuring Pro Bowl running back Maurice Jones-Drew, WWE star The Miz, Kerry Cantrell from Alice in Chains. Join us at the Hard Rock Cafe in New York City. If you'd like to attend, log on to SiriusXM.com slash Fantasy Sports Radio and RSVP. Celebrity, Celebrity Fantasy, fantasy football. football. Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. Sirius 210 and XM 87. For the fun ones. The working ones. Wyndham. The confident ones. Wyndham. And the meek ones. Wyndham. For the athletic ones. Wyndham. The gourmet ones. Wyndham. For the faraway ones. Wyndham. And those a little closer to home. Wyndham! No matter who you are, there's a Wyndham Hotel waiting. To find your Wyndham Hotel, visit Wyndham.com. And for a limited time, if you book at least seven days in advance, you can save up to 25% off. Most hotels are independently owned and operated. The research, the independent tests, the results don't lie. You can drive farther and spend less when you add Gamma 88 to your fuel. Their fuel additive increases your miles per gallon by lubricating and cleaning your engine as you drive. You're spending way too much at the pumps these days to ignore the savings with Gamma 88. Let their experts design a program to start saving you money now. Call 888-642-6628. That's 888-642-6628. Or log on to Gamma88.com and start reducing your fuel costs today. What if I told you that you could learn a new language the same way you learned your first language, with no tedious translation, no useless memorization, and no boring drills? You'd have every right to be skeptical, especially if you struggled with languages in the past. That's why we want to send you a free demo CD-ROM from Rosetta Stone. You'll find out what U.S. diplomats, more than 10,000 schools, and NASA already know, that this is the world's fastest, easiest way to learn a new language, guaranteed. Call now to request your free CD-ROM and try it without compliments. Learn a language faster than you ever imagined. Call 1-800-924-5579 and we'll rush you the free Rosetta Stone CD-ROM today. Remember there's no tedious translation, memorization or drills. And the Rosetta Stone program offers more than 30 different languages. Call for your free Rosetta Stone demo CD-ROM today and see how easy and effective it really is. Call 1-800-924-5579. That's 1-800-924-5579. Attention business owners. Are your receivables now going out 45, 60, and even 90 days before you get paid? And to make matters worse, your bank is canceling or limiting the line of credit you use to finance your receivables? Hi, I'm Kevin Gowen, president of AmeriFactors. At AmeriFactors, we can finance your receivables to match the needs of your business. We guarantee your customers' payments to you. If your customers can't and won't pay... We eat the credit loss. For over 22 years, AmeriFactors has been funding and helping businesses grow nationwide. AmeriFactors can fund your application within 24 hours. So if you're tired of getting questions and not answers from your bank about funding your business and want to keep your business running smoothly and growing, call AmeriFactors today, 800-884-3863. AmeriFactors, 800-884-3863 or AmeriFactors.com and fill out your application today for approval tomorrow. Summer's here, and that means trips to the beach, baseball, dining al fresco, and while it might be nice to do these things alone, wouldn't it be nicer to have someone to share the experience with? As the weather warms up, heat up your dating life by joining It's Just Lunch, the number one personalized matchmaking service in the world. Your It's Just Lunch matchmaker will hand-select dates for you and even make all the arrangements for the date. All you have to do is show up and have fun meeting someone new. Call 1-800-THE-DATE to get started. 1-800-THE-DATE. Sirius XM, the virus. The Opie and Anthony Show presents Primetime Sam Roberts and one question with a guest we couldn't get.
musical icon and living legend, Elton John. Primetime Sam Roberts here with Sir Elton John. Sir Elton, how are you with electronics? With electronics? Yes. Hopeless. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> this has been Primetime Sam Roberts. And one question with a guest we couldn't get on the Opie and Anthony Show. Thanks for calling the Opie and Anthony FU Live. Here's the latest batch of FUs. Fuck you! Hey, it's my girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend, and her new fucking boyfriend. Fuck you. He can keep the goddamn cat. Hey, this is to the brilliant cock smoker who decided to do a five-point turn in my brand-new driveway and on our front lawn. Thanks a lot. That was a $6,000 driveway you just fucked up, asshole. Fuck you. Fuck you. This is Packrat the Trucker, and this FQ goes out to the state of Missouri. Fuck you. I finally found the synthetic marijuana I can fucking smoke to pass a drug test. Then you want to make it fucking illegal. Fuck you, Missourians. Fuck you, Kansas. Fuck you. I want to send this F.U. out to the incompetent, affirmative action hired piece of shit that was too fucking stupid to send a goddamn fact out to fuck up my unemployment. Thanks a lot, you overeducated piece of motherfucking shit. Fuck you. Yeah, I'd like to give a big F you to Bobo. I hate hearing you on the radio. You make the hair stand up on the back of my neck and I cringe. I hope you die in a fiery truck wreck. Fuck you. Fuck you. Uh, my students keep telling me to call you. My name is Bill Tetley. Uh, there's some radio jokes going on. Uh, I'd just like to know why you keep uh, mentioning my name. Yeah. Call the Opie and Anthony FU line. 866-FU-LINE-1. That's 866-FU-LINE-1. Sirius XM. The virus. Yeah, this is the Opie and Anthony show. Ah, for Joe DeRosa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, we got Mark Marin in the studio and Joe DeRosa both killing, man. Look what time it is, Ant. Uh, I can't this believe show it. flew fucking by. That's how we gauge a show, by what time it is. Oh, yeah, flies by. That's so it. whatever nice. you want to say, make sure you say it before 9.58 because we're fucking out of here. <laughs> That's where we're at now. Yes, exactly. Uh, with that said, I want to get back to Mark Marin's podcast, uh, WTFpod.com. That's it. All right, and uh, getting a lot of attention. We got to do one with you guys. Maybe next time I come in, can we we can record one in here if you want. That'd be cool. Can we do yeah. it in here though. Yeah, because it'd be easier than me swapping my like. You know, yeah. Here's my mics, fellas. Can you just take, <laughs> can you just hold my mics? Can you just take this audio and make it into a podcast? I can't. Well, that's the thing. People are saying you can have ONA on the podcast. I'm like, is there anything they haven't fucking talked about? <laughs> yeah. I mean, am I going to get anything? Take the last hour. Am I going to make Anthony cry? And I have <laughs> been. I have been a gay American. <laughs> uh, All right. We'll do it. Just want to come out on your show. Oh, good. And good. All right, I'll announce that I'm actually a happy person. Yeah, we can, we can tell you some All things. Right. Which, which would the audience find more shocking? <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm happy when I'm not here. I'll tell we'll you that much. We'll do it. We'll figure it out. Uh -huh. You can get into what my uh, shit's all about. Uh, Gallagher. Yeah. Oh. That, you know, yeah. that thing was... Uh, people what happened for the people out there Gallagher. that don't know? Well, I did a podcast with Gallagher. You can uh, you can get it if you if you get the app. Uh, you can hear that one. But uh, I was in Portland, Oregon. I get a, uh, an email from my manager, who got an email from his manager, who lives in Portland. Said he was in Portland. Would I have him on the show? Now I got to be honest with you. I didn't like that guy when I was old enough to like him, which is ten. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and I didn't have. There was no. There was not a lot of love there. But that doesn't mean that as a relatively objective. Uh, uh, fan and, and part of the comic community, I couldn't put him into perspective in the sense that, you know, he started with all the guys and, you know, he was at the comedy store in the late seventies and I thought there was an interesting story there. So I say, okay. So he comes to the hotel. I meet him downstairs. He's like, what are we doing? And I'm like, well, we're going to do a podcast. He's like, is it live? And I'm like, no, I'm going to record it in my room. And then he tries to teach me how to steal coffee out of a conference room, whatever. So, <laughs> so we go up to the room. That's it. Yeah, and I'd read up on him. Like, you know, I'd read up that he's not, you know, he's not smashing shit as much and that he's doing a lot of gay jokes and a lot of jokes about uh, ethnic people. So I, I tried to have a conversation. Like, I, I first I started talking to him about 
uh, you know, about his place in comedy. And right away, he's like, why does Jay Leno have a show? Why don't I have a show? I should have my own show. Like he and he screeches like this old queen. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> this and, old queen. And like right away, right away, I'm like, I'm a little bit like, I'm like, all right, I can handle this. I'm trying to wrangle him, but he's talking down to me. Almost immediately, he starts saying like, comedians shouldn't drink water on stage. You know, that's not a real comedian. A, a comedian doesn't need a notebook. And I'm like, so now he's shitting on Shouldn't everybody. Water. What? The, be, what? So it's crazy. What the fuck does that you mean? Hydrate but, yourself. But, right, no, but, no, yeah. but I'm willing to sort of let the guy talk because I want, you know. So then I bring up these accusations, you know, that, you know, he's being right. And look, I got a little bit of flack, but I don't give a fuck what anyone says. I mean, you know me. I mean, my friends are Jim and everybody else. Look, if you can own what you say, say it. I, what yeah. do I care? Right. But I'm going right. to ask. I can ask. Of course. I'm right. not, you know, I'm not I, politically uh, correct in any way right. uh, in, in when it comes to language. So I bring this up and then, you know, right away he goes, they're not even my jokes. They're street jokes. And he, uh, and he starts screeching. <sighs> And I'm not even pressing that hard. I'm just trying to. I'm. I'm. I'm trying just to try to get in his head a little bit. Well, I'm trying to that. converse with him because yeah, he never course. shuts up. <laughs> you know, and, he's, <laughs> and, he, and he acts like he's teaching you a lesson. And then he, you know, and then he starts going on about like you know he he, he says you're never going to play a state fair. And I'm like, who the fuck would want to play a state, <laughs> a fair? state fair? Jesus Christ! Yeah. Here is this. And yeah. he's like everybody, yeah. you know. Yeah. So me but, in America. Yeah. Oh, but then he gets a, like a, a gig in Sleepy Eye tonight. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I go on right after a horse with no name. <laughs> All right, see you, Gallagher. And then, Have I a good got, time. and then I say, "What are you angry?" <laughs> I say, Sorry. "What are you angry about?" Because I'm not angry, and I'm like, "You're the guy that smashes shit." I'm just trying to engage. Uh, uh. And then about a half hour, and he goes, "I'm not doing this," and he storms out of the room like a giant baby. And uh, and I and I just said, really, I'm, I'm not going after you. And then there, I, there was a moment where I just I didn't have to put this up either. But there was because it didn't make me look great either. But th there was a moment there where I said, oh, come on, Gallagher. You know, and there, to no to nobody. <laughs> to you, just, nobody. You, hear a you hear a door closing. <laughs> but but I, <laughs> you know, it's great. So I love to leave. You can just go like, get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> yeah, right. After the, the, the door yeah, slammed. Yeah. But I but look, I I put it up because I I thought I uh, like I. I don't think I look great. I could have done a little more homework. I, I might have. I tried to be as respectful as possible, but I was genuinely surprised that he stormed out. I mean, <sighs> I did not. I could not understand it. But uh, people who listen to it have one opinion or the other. A lot Jeez. of people thought I was being some sort of politically correct police, which I wasn't. What? I don't give a shit. I really don't care what people say. And the, the truth of the matter is, is that when you say something, if shit comes back at you, that's that's part of saying something. Yeah. You, you, you know, I mean, you, you know, you're going to take your hits, and yeah. you, you, but you certainly have the freedom to say it he but did our, he, he did our show a few times we loved having him on he, he's very different he's a very strange well bird, because man. he's so such a fucking really weirdo strange. and uh he's then curing he, cancer he's building things yeah, all his yeah, inventions like, are just he has a million I, of them i heard he like lectures i, I, I was in a couple th theaters where he had performed and like i was like they were like we just had gallagher here and he they were like yeah, he like lectured the audience about metaphysics, <laughs> and then like when they didn't know what the fuck he was talking about, he started calling them all stupid. <laughs> and, he, a, and then he took out the weirdo. hammer at the end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then he gets his hammer out. He did our show when we were back at K Rock. He did it here as well. And after the show, he sits in the hall for hours and just day trades. Doesn't go home. Right, and he also has a. Uh, Even likes, though his appearance was long, you know, he likes to school ago. people. Yeah. He thinks he knows things. Like there's some yeah. weird thing apart about him. Like, like, I thought that if you listen to the episode, you get a very, you know who that guy is. And I guess my pride got into it because I just couldn't believe that he was talking down to me on some level. We had, okay, sorry, and I sorry, knew sorry. he made a lot of money and I knew that, you know, he was this guy. But the weird thing about him is that the bane of his existence was that this hammer thing was this one bit he did. <laughs> yeah, I think that it really sticks in his craw that it, it just caught on and it was really just one sketch. Mm -hmm. And then it became who he is. Mm -hmm. But his whole argument that, like, I deserve this, I deserve that. Because he, he, his whole premise is like, you know, Jay Leno and, and, and David Letterman, they, they, they didn't go out on the road and sell tickets. I did. And, and my point was, well, that's what you chose. That's right. Yeah. The, and that's that. You did your research because, yeah, he's known for smashing watermelon. Simple as that. And he might be a deeper guy, but none of us really know that. So I it would have been to that. It would have it would have done him uh, some it, it, done him right if he would have openly talked to you about all that. I'd have him back.
<laughs> I yeah, guess. why not? Because that's what people really think. He smashes shit. That's all we know. Well, I mean, that's and why, all, I think, and that's all we care about. And I think that's why he overcompensates with metaphysics and schooling people. And is right. that like he wants to be known as some sort of nuclear physicist? That's the word. It's yeah. It's you know. He, yeah, he wants them to know he's smart, and that's the most dangerous thing yeah, a comedian yeah. could ever Look, have. I'm smart. Yeah, I'm smart too. I don't ju- yeah, I'm smart. I was passed over by. Yeah. I was I'm dumb like everybody yeah. thinks. Yeah. Now let me get Leno. The, let me get the hammer. We should get rolling in here because Roland says uh, says that. Gallagher will, will never do our show again. Well, uh, Patrice uh, called him out, right? Uh, we had a great segment with Patrice going after Gallagher. It was terrific. Saying that, man. he goes, Gallagher, just, you know, be, you're a fucking racist. He is, actually. You're fucking racist. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and he's like, ah, I'm not, I'm, you can't say that about it. Goes, I fucking heard some shit. Yeah, Patrice man. wouldn't back down. It yeah, was great. At him. W- really? Uh, Patrice wouldn't back down? That's unusual. <laughs> Where are we at with Gallagher rolling? Um, the last time was a while ago. I called him. He was at Walmart. And he says, stop calling me. You're killing me. You're killing me. And then hung up. At Walmart? Yeah, he's at Walmart. What, uh, Working? Wow. What position? God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get there to it. God damn it. <laughs> oh, DeRosa. <laughs> Loses by a nose. <laughs> that was a close one. Sorry. Yeah. You guys bumped yeah. heads on that one. Don't finish his eye contact. I would have let you have it. <laughs> As he said, don't call me again. You guys are trying to murder me. Oh, oh, that's sad. Oh, wow. He feels uh, persecuted. Yeah, he certainly, unless he literally <laughs> thinks we're trying to murder him and walking around looking for our hit squad. <laughs> that's too bad. Did you see the video where he collapsed on stage? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Three yeah. weeks after my podcast. I got a lot of tweets for that one. <laughs> oh, did you? Look what you did to they Gallagher. blamed you, right? <laughs> I was uh, opening for. Not, uh, not his poor uh, food choices. They blame you. <laughs> yeah. I opened for Pat Oswalt one time, and we were doing some theater. Gallagher was there like the night or two days before. And, uh, and uh, the stage manager picks us up, and we're driving out to the to the theater, and he's telling us, yeah, Gallagher was just here. And we're like, oh, that's cool, whatever. And the stage manager goes, yeah, funny story, man. Um, you know, he, in his rider, he has this thing that he needs a table, four feet by two feet. And he's like, so I got him this table. It was just a really nice Victorian table. It looked nice on stage. And he goes, but then he shows up, and I didn't know. He meant he needed the table for the sledge matic He's like, so I'm scrambling. I had to build him a table. I didn't know what to do. I mean, the guy should have specified. Why wouldn't he tell me that that's what the table was for? And he's freaking out of the table. And Patton just what? goes, Pat just goes, uh, let me get this straight. <laughs> You had a show where Gallagher asked for a table and you didn't know what it was for. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And of there course. was this awkward silence for the next, like, five minutes. So just like, ooh, yeah. Uh, shit. Yeah, adult. <laughs> Look, I don't feel great about that interview, but I, I uh, you know, I did what, what I could. Well, did you feel like you were Whatever. attacking him, though? He always it feels attacked. Sound, I know, but he, yeah, 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 he, he thinks you're trying to kill him. Yes. He's got a... He's got this persecution complex, and he was impossible to talk to, but I just wasn't going to be uh, filibustered and steamrolled. Uh, yeah, I was just trying to get him into some groove where we could have yeah. a conversation, but he was so guarded and you, weird. You can't it didn't sound like you had an agenda, yeah, though. You can't. You, you didn't have an agenda. I had a little kind bit of... of an agenda. I had an agenda in the sense that I wanted to place him into the context of the comedy store in the late 70s. Okay, well. And then I, I did have the agenda of asking about this shift in his act. You know, because it's one thing to move away from a sledge of uh, uh, and, and do another type of comedy. It's another thing to all of a sudden, like, I'm getting rid of the sledge matic and now all Chinese people have to die. Yeah, I mean, you know, so, and I'm not saying that he, that's his agenda, but I mean, it's a weird shift from the sledge matic to, uh, you know, shitting on uh, lesbians, Chinese people, sure. gay people, and, uh, and then saying, like, uh, well, you know, I have a few black people at my show, so I don't do that. You know, but I mean to to put a can of water chestnuts on a on, on the table and then go, this is for the Chinese people, and then smash them. I mean, it's it's a little hardcore, and I wanted him to answer to it a little bit. So yeah, I had an agenda in that way. Is that funny? Maybe I'm wrong. Is that funny? I'm, <laughs> is there? I, no, I want to hear I putting a fruit chestnut. salad, a fruit salad on there. This is for the fruits. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, okay, it's still the phlegmatic, but I mean, it's a little bit. Well, heavy the number handed. one fruit is uh, the watermelon, so we, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, that's uh, right. You know. Oh boy, yeah. Think about it. That could is go there a, wrong. It, are there clip? I want to hear like a clip of racist Gallagher. I've never heard it. Is that well, something you, that's out there somewhere? Well, no, it's a, it's alleged. 
I think we it's pushed, alleged. I think we that pushed him in that direction. He's a sort bit. of racist. There's, a, there's an article in the Stranger. If you Google uh, the Stranger, which is a Seattle paper and Gallagher, that I mean, that was the article I read. And my biggest mistake was not actually. I didn't have the examples in front of me, so it was oh, sort of okay, so yeah. it was sort of general, you know. But and that kind of pissed me off. I, if I would have just said, you know, what about this joke? But he he still says like they're street jokes, and I understand that. But my my issue is is that if you if whatever's left of his audience, whatever's left of the people <laughs> that still hold on to him as a as a as a great entertainer from when they were 11. Yeah, and now that yeah. they're, they're still showing up and, and he is you know, slamming Asians. Right. And it's, it's a little odd. Yeah, where does that come from? That was my only question. It wasn't like you shouldn't say that. They're it's bringing, like, where does it come from? They're bringing their plastic slickers because they got front row tickets. Uh, yeah. And they're all like, and then they're just listening to a diatribe of racist <laughs> jokes. You're like, wait a minute, where's the fucking... Yeah. Yeah. What go no, 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 yeah. is this for? No right. slicker's going to protect you yeah. against that. <laughs> <laughs> just takes out his cock and pisses on the first three rows. <laughs> that would be a good show. Here's time for the plastic, yeah, that yo. Would, that would be fucking great. I would love that. Oh, you that. brought plastic to see the fucking Noel yeah. Gallagher show, right? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. How about this, you motherfucker? Yeah. And just starts yeah. like Gigi Allen throwing his shit. Right. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. This is for the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward a year, the whole audience is in white sheets now instead of the plastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Cheering for Gallagher. There you go. <laughs> he's he to he's me. Trying to get him back on the show. He has no desire to do our show. Uh, he to me is like the worst, worst kind of comic because he's like, he's one of these guys that is just clearly a fairly intelligent guy. He seems like a smart guy. He does, you know, his wordplay and all that bullshit. You're like, all right, he, he's a smart guy, but he's the smart guy for that sort of rednecky crowd. You know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like he was never the smart guy for the New York or the L.A. or the San Francisco type audience. That's why he plays state fairs. Yeah, and it's like, and now fair. he's angry because he wants everybody to declare him a genius. It's like, no, dude, you chose, you accepted that path, and like that's where you're at now. The I other, mean, that's, yeah, that's the, it. The other thing is, is that he's irrelevant. And the other, uh, some of the input I got was like, why are you picking on Gallagher? And and I can understand that. Is it? But you know, I didn't seek him out. But the the fact is, he's just this old guy. That's trying to hold on to something, it's, it's, and it's difficult. I don't think you're picking on him. He's he's an angry man. Mm -hmm. He is a very angry guy. And we didn't even have conversations with him when he was on this show. Mm. What it was was us talking and him interrupting with something so outrageously weird that we found it hilarious. Yeah, like it's like what this guy's fucking out of his mind. Like what would he say though? Like what would he interrupt with? We would we would be Some talking about if we're talking stuff. about relationships, X-ray X -ray machines. Yeah. yeah, he'd be like, hey, you know what I'm working on? Yeah, and you're like, yeah. we were just talking about something. All right, Gallagher, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> what would it be? A shield, it would be a shield shield like, yeah. It's been a while, but it's been some kind of space thing. Yeah. So a fucking, cure for cancer. Yeah, he, does. Cure, he loves he does cures that. for cancer yeah. and and fucking machines that that uh, ionize water for like, oh, that's right. Like just bizarre things. But he couldn't build himself a new act. No. <laughs> he got, oh. You know where all that shit... He, he could put a fucking car door on a tricycle <laughs> to come out with on stage. He just sucks. So he could roll the window he down. Just sucks. He just sucks. I'm working sucks. on a giant big wheel for I me to ride out oh. in front of the audience. Oh, well look, he's got the giant couch and he's jumping on it. Ugh. Wow. He made a lot fucking of money. Asshole. A lot of money. Oh, like, you know, tons those of specials. Showtime specials. My brother liked Every them. week yep. they were on. Yep. Dude, he, had, he did like Ten of those yes. fucking things. More than that, I think. What are yeah. you saying? Anyone, uh, anyone that would have gone to that like fucking... Fourteen. Anyone but, that goes to a state fair to see Gallagher should just be fucking shot. Well, it's, it, uh, I'm theorizing, obviously. I don't know the guy, but I'm telling you. Speculating. Speculating. Yeah. Maybe that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he's, that guy, he's sitting there going, why am I not Carlin? Uh, and it's like, because <laughs> George... Because, right, right. Because Gallagher, when Carlin was talking about pro-life... And a versus abortion in the nineties, you were fucking bringing out a hula hoop with springs on it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or whatever. Thirteen, thirteen specials. Thirteen. thirteen. Wow. Special. Carlin only beat him by two. Damn man. Wow. That's nuts. That is crazy. Fuck. All right, I want to ask Mark about his relationship too. Oh, well, see, yeah, because Joe wants to get into that too. Well, the last oh, right, time I was right, here, right, right. Yeah. I met a, a woman who uh, um, contacted me through email. Uh, you know, basically, uh, the email was just, uh, hey, Mark Marin, you know, and I said, hey, what? And, yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> and, uh, we, we met up and, uh, you know, we spent the weekend together. It was great. And then, you know, we, you know, basically, 
she ended up moving in, and I didn't realize that was happening. You know, she she ended up moving to L.A. and uh, and we were hanging out, and then a lot of her stuff was showing up at my house, and all of a sudden, all of her stuff was at my house, and it was all over my house, and I freaked out. I was I was like, you got to get the fuck out, you know. And I didn't know what to do. It got really <clears throat> weird and dramatic, and and uh, you know, police were involved. It was very exciting. <laughs> Why were the yeah. police involved? Oh my God. Because I she she didn't want to leave, you know, and and then like three months went by where I didn't contact her at all and, and everything, and then like I couldn't fight the feelings man i mean she i just loved her and after three months after all this insanity i realized who the fuck am i to judge someone being crazy <laughs> Do, you know i mean I, i've been in relationships before but all of a sudden i'm the stable one i'm saying like no she's crazy and i'm like who is talking two marriages in no kids anger <laughs> problem yeah I'm, I'm gonna sit here and say like i know better so uh, eventually I buckled and I said, well, I'm going to honor the love, man. So needless to say, most of her shit is at my house again. And, uh, oh, and, uh, but I, I adore her and I'm just going to have to ride it out. And it's a little weird because she's, she's 28 and she, she does that thing where it's like, well, I want kids. And now I'm in this weird position where I'm like, uh -oh. I have to deal with that conversation every once in a while. And, and it's hard because you sort of just try to kick the can down the, the road a little bit. And like, yeah, I, I mean, I've thought about it. It's never that. And, but, you know, I understand you want them. I and like, what are we eating? You know, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. where do you want to go eat? And then, like, you know, because I know she wants kids and I know that that conversation is really just about, are you going to stay with me? And that. Right. And then I had this other weird moment where we're in the shower. I'm taking a shower with her. This is. And uh, I'm washing her back because I need to get under the head. It's, it was not a big <laughs> not altruistic a, thing. Right, I just right. was like, I need to get under the water. Yeah. So I'm washing her back. And she turns to me. And she goes, are you practicing for when I'm paralyzed? I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, my God. And then, and then I say, no, you'll be in a hospital. And, and, she, <laughs> so she, and then I didn't realize it was really the same question because she wanted to say, she wanted me to say, like, yo, of course I'll take care of you if you're paralyzed. But I'm thinking, like, now I got you and the kid? That I got to take care of you. The, the paralyzed woman, the kid. <laughs> But uh, but the, the the thing is, is that I I just at some point said, well, fuck it, you know, I'm I'm 47, yeah, you know, I have a lot of feelings for this chick, and you know, I'm, we're both crazy. I just got I got to pick my fights and and not be such a lunatic. You, you know, it's weird when you're in a relationship, you have that moment, and I know I'm a little old to have this moment where mm -hmm. you're like, oh my god, she's her own person that I can't control. <laughs> sure. And, and then, <laughs> And you know you really you really just have to really remind yourself of that that like you know it's not some heinous crime if she doesn't like the same music you like there's a there's a moment where we're at the Soundgarden concert right. and she gets bored right. because it's not her trip and she starts looking at her phone and part of me is like yo fuck this fuck this how can you not like this right and you know, and, and at a different point in my life that would have ruined the evening that would have been what you would have well, yeah, said you'd be sitting yeah. there playing yeah. CDs like no listen listen to him listen, listen to, to the, the words. words listen to the words man listen to what he's saying as long as she stands there she to me she can have her nose in her phone as long as she stands there and puts up with it and doesn't do the shitty walk away walk back but, but distracting you thing it is, like you she, know what i mean that's you know, then it's fine like i don't like there was a there was a period there where i didn't know if she was getting you know, like i don't smoke dope and i and i don't you know i know she likes to get high and stuff and that used to drive me crazy but now like Look, if I have feelings for her and I like having sex with her and I like having her around, you, eventually, if you're a grown person or somebody sure. who at least acknowledges where you are in your life, you're like, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Just try not to fuck any other guys and don't <laughs> don't leave to. me crying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you ask for. Well, yeah. you know, you want to aim high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that so, bar really isn't that high. That's good. That's. It's just, like, I just want to make point. a living. So you're four months in to stage well, no, two. I've, I've known her a year, and I think we're about five, you know, four or five months into stage two. I don't really, you know, I'm just paralyzed with fear. You know, after the last thing, you, you get left, you get divorced, and, and it was brutal, you know. And it, Would you it get just, married again for the third time? Is she listening? Uh, Is she listening uh, right now? Uh, you want to write down your answer? No, I don't know if she's listening. I think she's getting her nails done in Brooklyn. But I, um, <laughs> uh, you know, I look every time I say something on stage. I, I know, like I did this whole thing on Conan about like her, you know, texting me a picture of her pussy and like. <laughs> And they, like I forget that this is a person. You know, and and right. then we, you know, after we broke up, she's got to go into the world, oh, and people fuck. she knows come up to her and go, "Did you really take?" You know, she's got to go to her job. Yeah. You, you know, and uh, so I, I've just become a little more respectful. And I don't know if I'm going to get married. I, I I did buy her a dresser. That's where I'm at now because I the clothes <laughs> thing just got out of hand. I'm like, we got to put these things into something. They can't just be all well, over the house. That's a step house. forward. That's you know. Yeah, I'm starting with an investment. That's a big step. And, yeah. then, and also, there's that moment. Like, here's the other moment of intimacy that I acknowledge is that at some night, you, you know, you cross the line. Going, I don't know what the hell we both ate, but we had gas bad, and there was no hiding it. But you know, that that first time where you're with a chick, and then all 
all of a sudden you're both fucking. No, I've uh, never gotten and, that and, far. And all you can do is hold them like you hold a dying person. You know, like it's going to be okay. <laughs> oh we're going <laughs> to get through yeah, this. We're going to get through this. <laughs> Literally never got, got that far. No. But, but I know that dude, that just but, a stone's throw away from shitting in front of each other when you have to. If someone's in the shower, you can't wait or whatever. And then the next thing is like you got a baby. Let's bring someone else's poop oh, into this. Oh boy. Let's bring someone else's yeah, poop into this situation. So, uh, I would, I would, yeah. I would love to know what it's like to but be. What's at your that problem? You don't even get Stage. to those stages. No, I've never got that far. The most I've ever been with somebody eight months, and we didn't get to the wow. shitting and farting point. No, no. Well, that's a lot of holding your farts in, buddy. Well, one time I was banging her up the ass, and <laughs> shit, shit, shit came out. But that's a different story. <laughs> that is different. <laughs> oh, you give her a pass on that one? But God forbid, uh, eventually, God forbid it farting me. in front of her, right, Joe? Well, yeah, I don't know. I just never got anything to that. during sex. I don't know. But, so, uh, I think it's my. There's just so much shit here that, you know... On a, Where is it, Joe? Where is it? I f I'm at a point... <laughs> Let's get into that shit, Joe. Huh. I'm at a point... Hey, we're doing a podcast, I noticed. <laughs> yeah. Mark is usually taking end? into his podcast. Sorry, right? sorry. I apologize, guys. I no, apologize. go, go. go. I love How that. does it usually end, Let's go back end, to the Joe. ass fucking. <laughs> no, I love it. Does it end? Yeah, it's <laughs> <back to> the <laughs> ass fucking. It's like... No, no, I mean, like, an eight-month relationship. Like, how do these relationships usually end? Is it... Never good. It's this never is good. How, this is how fucked up it's I am. But you seem like a nice guy. How could it go horribly wrong? For oh, this there's is... a mean person inside is there. there. No, 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 no. No, no. This is how it ends. It ends with them crying and then me crying that I'm hurting them. <laughs> uh, I'm why crying. are they crying? I'm an asshole. They're upset that I'm that dumping yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why are you dumping them? Because, because I can't just get it. I think it's a self-esteem thing. I'm, I'm at a point with relationships where I feel like when she starts dating me, she's opening the box from Hellraiser and I'm coming out of it. <laughs> Going, your suffering will be legendary. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, you know, it's it's a thing in here where I'm like, what are you looking for that you're just not getting from these relationships, Joe? mommy, mommy? I'm, oh oh <laughs> boy. Well, I'm adopted. I have abandonment issues. Yeah, you know, yeah. A lot of that comes it. into it, man. A lot of that oh, comes shit. into it. Yeah. I just want to have. I don't. I just want to have somebody to relax with and and get through the. But I'm telling you, the fucking the panic. The, I have dated so many great girls this year, beautiful, sweet, good people, uh, great personalities. The second it starts to get anywhere near commitment, I I literally panic. Really? I get depressed. I'm you, like, what am I doing? I can't do this. Wow. But I, I'm just now starting to realize, oh, that's fear of intimacy and commitment. I never understood that before. I always thought it was just, why am I getting tired of these girls so quickly? Yeah. Now it's like, no, dude, you fucked up. You got to get through this. Oh, and, and man. I don't know what to do. If wow, I'm not. You fucked. If I don't make some serious money soon, it's going to be a real oh, yeah. problem. Oh, yeah. That'll solve it, right, Anthony? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, money's really going to be... Don't have to worry about that as far as commitment <laughs> issues go or anything. Put it put it this way. Uh, 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 the girl I'm with now, my, my girlfriend, she uh, wanted the one of the walk-in closets in the bedrooms. Uh-huh. Now, she has a full closet in one of the other bedrooms, yeah. but not in the master bedroom. Right. Because I have my walk-in closet, which is all my clothes. Yeah. And I have my other walk-in closet, which used to belong to the ex. Yeah. But when she left, no. it is now my gun safe. <laughs> it is a walk-in closet. A shrine with of a hate. magnetic <laughs> a shrine of hate yeah. and destruction. Yeah. It is a walk-in closet with magnetic locks and, and a separate alarm on it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I've been in it. Uh, yeah. I've never been so curiously aroused it's as I was when I was in your gun closet. But she keeps bringing up the fact that, you know, it would be nice if I could get my clothes in, in here or something. I'm like, no. I know it's my gun closet. Yeah. Well, and then she looks at my closet and goes, you know, you don't really wear half of the stuff in here. Uh, so, and I'm like, no, yeah. that's my closet. Yeah, that's my gun closet. Sounds like I go, someone... you got a whole room with a whole closet. Yeah, but I got to walk out of the bedroom and go around. The... That's but that's your closet. These Sorry. are my closets. Sounds like <laughs> someone has to buy a dresser. Yeah. You got to buy that, a dresser. See, it's yeah, buying the dresser. Yeah. But th those are the little things yeah. that I need to keep doing to feel that I'm not married. Right, but did you tell her the last time someone had clothes in that closet? Look what happened. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. kind of right about that. <laughs> Best just leave those closets alone. One with the guns, one mine. You take you know, the other room. You know what? You know what really uh, is depressing when you're not in a relationship, and this this is really what's starting to get to me. I'll get like travel magazines in the mail and stuff, and I'll be like, oh, that. Ooh. Greece looks lovely. This is a very affordable it's trip. The worst. I think I'm going to go there. <laughs> I'm going to go to Greece this summer. Then By I'm like, yourself. with who? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> uh. yeah.
<laughs> yeah. Traveling with you traveling love pray. The traveling by yourself is the eat, worst. Pray love it. Eat, pray, eat, pray love. Eat, pray, pray love. Good. You know it, faggot. <laughs> uh, take it easy. Now we're going to get letters. Uh, oh, I know. No, it's but uh, people that like rom coms. <laughs> <laughs> you see these things, and you're like, I, I want to go do that. I'd love to go to, I don't know, fucking Cape Cod or some shit, and just relax. And you're like, with who? With my buddies. Why? So we can get shit faced somewhere else. <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> we can do that in my deal. apartment <laughs> for way cheaper. <laughs> You, you know? go by yourself. That's even worse. Like if I, if you, oh. like sometimes I'll travel on the road, and you're like, I'm in a great town, and I'm not leaving my room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you just bring the shit with you. Yeah, just in the room. And yeah, you know. I like traveling with her. That's the thing. Is like I don't know how to explain it, but I like having her around. I mean, I, I like I. She just, you know, she, I like just looking over at the couch, and she's sitting there on a pile of her own clothes playing Angry Birds. And I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I, I love this. Ah, that's hilarious. Just, I just hear the noise of the froggy game. Like, and I'm like that's love. That's the sound of love. That's great, right? It sounds nice, man. It is nice. She wants that. I do. Uh, I do. can't get past that 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 one that one point though so, where where you're comfortable. Is it like where both of you are get, sitting around not doing anything? No, I love that. Have you ever been that. with a girl that, yeah. that like you're not on a date all the time or? I love that. The two times, yeah, no, I get to that very quickly. In fact, and one of my friends told me, he goes, "That's your problem, dude." He goes, "You skip the whole courting period. You skip the whole romance." Yeah, we don't do that. Going out to dinner, yeah. he goes, "You go right to let's sleep at my place every night." Right. And it's like, yeah, well, that's my fucking life. I can't help right. it. I don't know what else to do. And but the 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 two, the two or three times that I've gotten into this sort of relationship territory, one time it was good, and I just said I can't do this. But the other times, these girls ravaged me, man. They ravaged my trust. They ravaged my emotions. Really? In seven months, everything got ugly, huh? Oh, look at you. What was that? Three, three months in, you're a broken man. Were you looking for sympathy from us? Wow. No. Oh, sad story. Wow. Ravaged. He's ravaged. Oh, <laughs> you know, you open up a little bit here, and look at this shit. Just dickheads. Open Rab up. You ravaged. might as well have just opened a toilet lid. <laughs> you fucking, we just shit all over you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Let's get Don Sheila like in here. He'll hug you. <laughs> he looks what? like a hugger. Actually. Yeah, he looks like a hugger. Joe. Now, before you were rudely, oh, oh, I, I want to know what, what, what type of ravaging... Could yeah. be done with your tr obviously fucking around on you, I guess. Uh, That's well, the one ultimate. Of the, one of the girls I think was probably fucking around on me. Think, but she she brought me in and brought me out so many times, uh. and every time just fucked with me and fucked with my emotions and told me she wanted something, and then and then she would dump me the next day, like that up and down thing. So there yeah. was one. One was that. Uh. One was uh, we broke up because she was fucking crazy fucking crazy and i dumped her and she proceeded to do everything she could to ruin my life yeah so you'd be back you should be uh, back together with her all right that sounds like yeah, that's the one for you that, that, yeah, sounds, really, yeah, that sounds like a keeper yeah. really vindictive <laughs> shit really really mean vindictive like what? shit like what um she i don't want to say too much but she she worked somewhere where i worked mm. and uh i all of a sudden didn't work there anymore that mm. was the beginning oh, okay. of it um my i had a friend that worked in this place she got my friend fired um, to, to teach me a lesson. It was literally like mob shit. Like, yeah, we're yeah. going to fucking send <laughs> him a lesson. Him out exactly. <laughs> shit like that. It was just crazy. And, you know, when something like that happens, whether it's after three years or a little fucking pussy seven months. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, this is, that's a weird it issue, fucks though. your head up. But this is a weird thing, because I know two or three guys that went through this, uh, you know, borderline uh, stalker-ish kind of like, there's something going on. I, I know it's probably always mm -hmm. gone on, but there, there, some, when you lock in with somebody who, who becomes vindictive and then you can't, like, I got a buddy now, he had to get a restraining order. I mean, oh, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. but that happens a lot more. Shit. Is that possible? It didn't, it didn't get to restraining order level, but it, it got to the point where I would call her up and I would literally Please. be yeah. crying yeah. going, Please stop doing this. Oh, wow. I love you as a human being. It just she wasn't going to work. She must have loved you. She hung you up and had an orgasm. Dude, it was horrible. Yeah. It was horrible. You played right into her like, hand. And it's phone sex for her. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no she's shit. just coming. Yeah. Oh, oh, Joe's crying. Oh, <laughs> Joe's crying again. <laughs> yeah, just horrible. Well, at least I have good friends that I can talk about it on the radio with. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, Joe. I'm sorry for your pain. 
Oh, they, uh, that sucks, man. Do you cry a lot, Joe? Uh, I'll get emotional over shit. Like, yeah, yeah, movies will break me up pretty like what? easily. What was the last movie that broke you up? Uh, what the... I can cry when I'm what watching Chopped. Watching and I fucking <laughs> seriously, I watch really? Chopped on the cooking channel when the you know yeah, when, the, like... when, when the guy makes a good meal and he didn't think he was going to win and he wins. And oh, I thought it was just the onions. And... No, felt like no. you were feeling the onions for the TV. <laughs> I know. I, I cry very inappropriately. I, I Never appropriate. What was the last movie you cried at, Joe? I can't remember off the top of my head. But I know there was one since then, but I remember the two two recent ones where I watched Love Actually at Christmas time. Oh no! And I cried like a little bitch in my apartment, and then I watched Grumpy Old Men with my parents. <laughs> Christmas. Oh my god! <laughs> You're at, such a at the girl. part, at the part where Walter Matthau, when Jack Lemmon has the heart attack, and Walter Matthau goes to the hospital, they yeah. have the big argument. Yeah, and the nurse goes, "Are you a friend or family, sir?" Oh. And he like doesn't know what to say, and he goes, "Friend or family?" And he just goes, "Friend," like that. Friend. I literally faked like I had to go get water because oh. I didn't want to cry in front of my parents. I walked in the other room and was fucking. T talent off it's, my eyes. It's, it's funny though, because you're like me. Like I'll cry at movies, commercials, anything. Uh, yeah. And the only time you'll cry in a relationship is when you fucked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like where you're like you're never gonna cry properly because like, you're having a real emotion. It's just sort of like don't leave, don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not an asshole. What is that? It's uh, sickness. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, called, it's a mental. It's, it's called being a comedian. <laughs> yeah, it's, you're welcome to the world. It's ridiculous. I sit there like when I think about like acting, I go. Oh, God damn, if I could only cry on cue. Oh, I could up my acting. I know right. I could. If I could just cry on cue, that's the one thing you I can't, can't get to. You can't take yourself to those places. But then, yeah, but then I watch a you know a then, commercial for that movie, The Help, and I'm fucking <laughs> tearing halfway through it. I'm like, just why the these fuck can't I access this? Put the movies in the back of your head when oh, you're doing your acting. I, I cried a little yesterday, actually. I, I just what? remembered that. Oh, man. Yeah? Was it bad? Well, no, we woke up. I woke up with the girl. We had to leave. You know, I had to get an 8 o'clock flight, right? And and the night before, she had to do laundry, which means she had to wash everything she owns. All right, so this, it's like midnight. We got to get up the next morning and go to the airport. There are dresses hanging on the deck, hanging in the bathroom. And I, and she was like, I, I'll deal with it tomorrow. I'm like, oh, we no. got to get up early. How are you going to deal with this, right? So then the alarm goes off, and she's like, I'm going to sleep for another half hour. And I'm like, no, you're going to get the fuck up. <laughs> and oh, you, you got to get I didn't say that. I said, we got to pack. We got to get out of here because I know her well enough to know I don't want to be because I know myself I don't want to be freaking out so she gets out of bed she's like all right and then all of a sudden it's that tone it's like and she's pulling dresses down angrily uh. and then it, and then I get into it and she's like you're sick because I'm yelling <laughs> she's like you're a sick person look at you getting pleasure out of yelling at me I'm like I'm sick you can't even get a control of your life there's fucking clothes all over there. <laughs> and we're both yelling at each other and I know I'm like I'm like you're not going to fucking New York and then I realize like what does that mean I'm not going to leave her at the house if I'm going to break up with her right now I can't how am I going to deal with the house so then, uh, then I knew I wasn't going to break up with her, of course. So we'd start fighting and fighting. And then it was, this is a grown up moment for me because. In the past, I would have just locked into that anger, but I, I got out of the room, I went and made some coffee, and I realized, dude, this is not, you gotta pick your fights. But of course, she's already crying, and, and, and everything's on the line. Oh, shit. But I'm yeah. like, and I walk back in there, and I'm like, look, I, 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 I wanna be with you, let's just stop. And I felt a few squirt out, and I'm like, oh, good. Oh. Thank God, this is so well timed. My, <laughs> my, my heart is functioning properly. And, and, we, and we were all right. We went to the airport. Oh, right. Jesus. <laughs> wow, that could have been bad. Bad, though. Oh, you were, you were teetering on the brink. Yeah, three, three months ago, I wouldn't have made it here. I yeah. wouldn't have been here. I would have been changing my locks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm growing. Man. I'm growing. Wow, there That's is great. like a yeah, maturity I there. It. I see a different person. We haven't seen Mark. Yes. Yet. Wow. he's different. Hey, oh, he's fucking. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna. How old are you? 47. So I'll be there by the time I'm 47. No, you know, I got another 14 do, years do better, to figure this Jesus, out. Jesus, do better for yourself. You don't have a you chance, Deal with Joe. this shit. Go into therapy. Find a girl that's uh, like reasonable therapy and learn is, how to fucking... Uh, therapy's such a crutch. I hate that. Are Joe is yeah, young enough like to doing... feel like this. Joe's young enough to feel like this and it still be okay. I'm not... Like, like you, you'll figure shit out. The thing is, you'll figure shit out, but you're quite honest. Jesus, he needs more what? than that. No. Just repress everything. We're Shove therapists it down. right here. Shove it That's down. right. But what happened to you and what happened to me, Like by figuring it out, means you're going to be humbled, fucker. Yep. You are going to be broken humbled. down, Joke. and you're not going you. to realize exactly who you are and how you fucked up your life, and then you're going to cry all by yourself, mm. and you realize, holy shit, I'm going to die Jesus. soon. What are you, putting maybe, a curse on me? Maybe. <laughs> 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 
He is pointing at him. And your children's children. <laughs> uh, pox on you and your entire family. You, you uh, picked the wrong girls, Joe. Okay, therapy's a crutch, oh, but yeah. you can get a little bit of insight mm -hmm. and maybe do things a little differently. Just go a few times or find a book. Do something for well, yourself. He just nailed it, though. He just nodded to the question. He's picking the wrong girl. So why are you continuing to pick the wrong girl? You know what I think it is, man? If you really want a relationship, which you're telling us today in between your tears. You know what I think it is? And I'm really, I'm very, I, 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 it's either that I'm way, way, way too picky or have this fantasy. Part of me is pissed off that I was lied to my whole life by everybody from the people in my life to the to the people, my protectors or About whatever. Being adopted? To me, no, 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 oh. no. I was told that from the beginning. They but told then, you you had shoulders your whole life. Yeah, that. Uh, and yeah, you, and you oh. believe that? Everybody that tried to make me believe I was straight, you know. It, it bothers <laughs> me. Uh, no, but seriously, it's like it's. What do they lie to you about? I, I'm very bothered that I, you know, was raised very, very Catholic, and uh, it bothers oh, me that I was sold this bill of goods that this save the princess. Prince Charming, Knight in Shining, or whatever you want to call it, fairy tale idea of romantic love existed. And I really, really believed in it. And then it's, mm. it's the same thing that when you're 25 and you go, this is fucked up. I don't know if I believe in God. And you really struggle with that. I struggled with the belief in romantic love in the same way where I was like, this does not exist the way it was taught to me. Mm -hmm. I have to learn to accept the reality of this. And it freaked me the fuck out. And it's been very, very hard for me to deal with. And I think that I went very rebellious in the other direction with sex and uh, promiscuity and and. Ex you know, sexual experimentation, not in the sense of men and women, but in the sense of like trying to do everything I could with a girl and get into all kinds of new shit and whatever. And I know there's still three more circles of hell for me to fucking travel <laughs> down into, you know, but, uh, but the point is, is that you get sold this bill of goods and it, f it fucked me up. And this thing that I think is out there or thought was out there isn't out there. That's the first thing. The second thing is, I think I do have a healthy, sense of independence and i'm not codependent to a fault i'm codependent to an extent as anybody is but not to a fault and i think i've afforded myself the luxury of being a little picky and saying well look this girl is beautiful and she is nice but she's not exciting she doesn't there's nothing riveting about her there you know you know whereas this girl's really hot and really fun but she's fucking nuts so no to that and I'm just trying to find the one. You just keep pulling that's the handle balance. on the slot machine, waiting for all the. What you got to do is you got to find the fucking chicks to align. Exactly, the slot machine's a great analogy because that's ding, what you yeah. want is a balance of sevens. It's like, oh, I got, oh no, I got two sevens, but I got a lemon. You got to balance of sevens. You don't want a perfect well, ten. You want a balance bad. of sevens. <laughs> yeah, she's you pretty. You she's find, you, know? you have to find a nice one that you make crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then you could just turn it on and off like hey, look how nice she is but i can say one thing and she'll turn crazy and then in uh, that's bad advice they're all a little, <laughs> they're, they're all a little batshit crazy though these girls patrice gave me notice that uh, anything decent, you're about to say cannot be true yeah you're about to say patrice gave you decent advice was, yeah yeah it started with <laughs> it has to do with an animal analogy of some kind <laughs> the advice started with uh you faggot <laughs> <laughs> and then uh and then it went on from there he's very compelling and no, very he, uh, <laughs> wise man yes he did say something interesting to me once where he said he goes he goes this is the problem with with white guys he goes you're all you're all out there looking for the one you think you're going to find this perfect girl and he goes it doesn't work like that you got to find a girl and you you slowly you know get her, I, get her pregnant leave her find another girl <laughs> get her pregnant leave her find another it was that the advice <laughs> That white guys aren't doing enough of? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> There's Ant. Uh, <laughs> Jesus I, was, I stole that from Gallagher. <laughs> what, was it? what was the rest of the advice? Well, it was sort of what you were just saying. It's like you find a girl and slowly you kind of, you, 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 she adapts to what you want and you maybe adapt a little bit to what she wants. But and you added that part. But you... The part about you adapting yeah, yeah. to her, I added. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. I swear I did. I really did. Yeah. That's not Patrice. That isn't it. <laughs> I just was trying to. Yeah. I wish we could help you, Joe, but the uh, show's over. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's you know, okay. It would be so nice to really help you sort out your mental problems. <laughs> right. But, you get uh, we got things to do. I'll talk bah. to you guys in a few weeks. We'll see where we're at. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, how, yeah. see how that works. No, I come right. back in with scabbed wrists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow, you gave us a real answer, though. That was fascinating. Uh, it was. It was, a, it was a very heartfelt, well-articulated answer. So is there guilt because you're having all this crazy sex because of your upbringing with the Catholic shit? Uh, 
uh, once in a while that rears its head, but not as often. But for a while, man, for a long time, when I first moved, when I moved to New York, I had had sex with three women, all of them girlfriends in relationships. Mm. And then I moved here, and it was all of a sudden, like, by the end of the first year, it was like, well, I'm up to 20. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it really that- shifted gears. And for a while, I would have this weird come down after sex, and, and I didn't know what it was. I'd be depressed and freaked the fuck out and like well, that's and then i realized up. like oh this is subconscious hmm. catholic Guilt. stuff from when i was a uh, kid that and shit goes yeah. away once yeah. i figured that out i was able to start to fight yeah. through it but yeah. um everything goes away after a while yeah though. love fades everything goes away <laughs> it does it's not that uh you know that 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 16 year old high school relationship where if if she she left you you'd fucking literally put a knife through your eyeball to try to get her back and Things like that. That's that fairy tale stuff you're talking about, and, and that the feeling that you get, eh, it's all gone. I just watched. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I just watched the Bill Hicks documentary, and they talked about how his parents, when he first started doing his thing on stage, his parents were like, they were saying how his parents were just like, you know, they just wanted to live safely in a community and believe in their God and go to their church and not stir the pot or whatever. Oh, shit. And I literally was more envious of them that i was of bill hicks i was like i wish i could just do that <laughs> i just want just that. believe in a god and go live somewhere and just go that's it's just nice yeah. it's nice it's the ma- it's Sounds the matrix like but whatever yeah. yeah ignorance is it bliss. is like yeah. envying yeah, 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 people yeah. that kind of are you see as stupid sometimes it's like man that is one dumb motherfucker but happy every day yeah exactly that's not a worry in the world yeah, yeah i'd rather be aunt Great. may than spider-man yeah, but, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. yes. You're never gonna. You're never gonna have that, Joe. <laughs> no, I, I know. It's never gonna happen for you. I know, which is why uh, yeah. I was gonna ask you if I could move, stay with you for a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Come out to the cat ranch, just, hang out. They're through together. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> just work it all out together. Well, fuck. This was great. Uh, Mark Marin on Twitter. Yeah, Mark uh, Marin. M A R C M A R O N. W T F Pod dot com. Yep. And you guys are going to be in Montreal, Joe DeRosa Comedy on Twitter? Yes. Anything else, Joe? Joe DeRosa Comedy dot com. And yeah, the show and, tw- and, and Cheat, the movie Cheat is playing uh, next, this coming weekend, excuse me. You need a hug, Joe? I mean, in Montreal. You want a hug? Uh, I don't I'll know. hug after. We'll hey, hug. Okay. Okay. <laughs> What's this hug going to feel like? We're both going to cry. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I thought that was Bob Newhart for a second. What? John it's, Boehner. A, it's just a horrible visual. Down the hall, the guy. Oh, with the white oh, that'd be great. I'd love to talk to Newhart. Have I, you guys I, talked to Newhart? I did backstage, no, not on the radio. Like, this looks like some of the guys that are going to buy the company. Ronnie B. Yeah, someone's buying this place. It's obvious. Yeah. I, I don't know for sure, but it, uh, I would imagine that's what's going on. <laughs> this Ron, really Ronnie great, B. Did though. an unmask with Bob Newhart, and I got to talk to him in the dressing room. Fuck. Yeah, this, my, that must have been good. It was awesome. Did he talk to you on a fake telephone? <laughs> I was just going to say, this would be a great conversation to have Bob Newhart on. Bob, do you ever get depressed after you come? Yeah. Uh, he- hello. Uh, hello. Uh, yeah, I just, I just, uh, I, I came and uh, I, uh, I, uh, I need my pills now. <laughs> he's, a, he's the best. All right, Mark, don't be a fucking stranger, man. All right, all right. Been way too long. All right, I'll come in every Jeremy's? time I'm here. Every like a time threat. I'm here. Yeah, please do that. And we're going to do the podcast. If you, yes. If you, yeah, only if you guys that. have some stuff you have hidden i want hidden Very stuff cool. hidden secretive stuff okay. that we've all right. kept uh After all these years under wraps tough, but yeah that's we'll what i thought <laughs> all right uh, uh, just make some back up. tomorrow we'll talk about comic-con and uh i don't know right. I guess enjoy your day yeah, you're very... the virus serious xr hey, hey, hey. and now the opie and anthony show continues in years this is after o a live here's your host sam roberts i'm back after Opie and Anthony Live, I'm back from San Diego. I was at Comic Con uh, since what Wednesday night. Uh, Roland, yes, you did a good job. Thank you. Thank I you. mean, we'll get into the whole everything because Jim, I went obviously with Norton uh, to Comic Con, uh, and there was a lot of serious representation there because they were doing their whole Comic Con radio channel, which I think is running through tomorrow. So it's on channel 141. Uh, on both Sirius and XM, if you haven't heard it yet, they're uh, and I mean they did a good job of yeah, they got everybody too of yeah. getting everybody and uh, a bunch of my interviews are sprinkled in there and and all over the channel. But Roland, if you remember, and we'll talk about it again, we'll do the whole comic con- thi- 
God, Jesus Christ. I know you're a little bit rusty now. We'll do, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll do the whole Comic Con thing uh, tomorrow more in depth because Norton will be here yeah. and we can go over everything. But I mean, you remember, you weren't here when we went last year, no, but, but you were listening. I listened to him screaming. Or you guys were in the parking lot. Exactly. Last year was a complete disaster. I don't want to give too much away. It was a dick in the ass. About what happened this year. But last year, I think everybody should remember, I hope, was a complete disaster. Uh, it ended up being good for the air. Oh, yeah. Because, but I think a lot of people uh, were not happy with a lot of things that happened last year. Uh, not a lot of uh, interviewing going on last year. A lot of... Uh, hanging out. A lot of out hanging buildings. out. <laughs> yeah, a lot of going to uh, uh, press events that were meant for bloggers. Uh, it was a very interesting trip. And, and made for great stuff when we got back. But the full Comic-Con report will be on the air tomorrow. I mean, I just like going on trips for free. Why so, not? I mean, I was I was good. L.A. for the heat San wave. Diego. Oh, San Diego for but the still, heat wave. Yeah, it was amazing. Like, I got back here, and, uh, and Jess was like, you know, it's been 100 degrees every day. And I go, what are you talking about? It was just 80 degrees yesterday. Mm-hmm. No. Not nice, in New York. nice ocean breeze. Yeah, nice. it's amazing. And then I was driving to Norton's hotel, and his hotel was literally on the ocean. So Norton would be like, "I'll be like ten minutes. I'll be downstairs." I go, "No problem." Just walk out to the beach, the ocean, the bre- it was great. It was fantastic. But you know what, Roland? You know what's even better? What? Being back here with everybody. I'm just so happy to be back. Uh, Travis didn't. A uh, Rock, you're in here now. Yeah. What are you? I'm he says no. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Uh, um, was he looking for bacon? <laughs> Jesus. It looked like he was looking for food. He was like, yeah, food. Because he had a slim fast or slim slow drink in the office. Slim slow? Yeah. <laughs> he was like drinking it. He has, it replaces a meal. Well, unfortunately, so, though. In 10 minutes, I'm going to ask him, want for lunch? I'm going to go, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, unfortunately, E Rock drink, drinks slim fast and he replaces water with slim fast. Yeah. <laughs> so he eats his breakfast and has a slim fast with it. And like a slim slow. <laughs> <laughs> slim slow. Travis, didn't Opie have a meeting with Bladder today? Uh, you know, I saw Opie heading towards the door, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, because he said on the air that he had this meeting that just him and uh, and Steve, our boss, um, and I was in the bathroom with him, and he was talking about how tired he was, and then he goes out into the lobby, and like he's a spy, starts looking around to see who's around out the door. <laughs> I'll tell you, I was the only one waiting outside uh, this studio to to say something today, so... They took us a yeah. I think they may have. If you missed the first hour, I would listen to it on the replay because um, it wasn't. Obi wasn't in a good mood. I think he was very cranky because he hadn't slept. He said, and so uh, plus the heat though. He went out walking. The heat, yeah, exactly. He'd been exercising. Management took a beat, and I mean they didn't even do anything this time. Like some, like today, management didn't do anything wrong, did they, Roland? No. Oh, what did they, I mean, Travis, do you have any idea what, it just came out kind of out of nowhere. Whatever we answer now, we're going to be talked about to in the meeting, so I say no. <laughs> I, I think, I, I think it was more of a, of, of a weekend of letting his, his, whatever email he sent just fester. Oh, okay. You know, that, that, that's what I think. And then he comes back, because let yeah. me tell you, it did not, ha- Monday was not a happy way to start the week on this show. Uh, but again, you know, check out the replay. Also... Uh, while we're talking about what happened on today's show, before we get into some of the behind-the-scenes stuff, how great was Don Cheadle on the show today? Roland, did you book that? Well, he only wanted to do uh, Sway. But he was on the show today. He was? Yeah. As, really? I was in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was on the show today. Oh. He was on the show today. Oh, really? I he was know. out there. Yeah, Sway is the new Shade 45 morning Sway, Yeah, show. he was an MTV... Every time I see him, I just want to be like, "What up, world?" Sway, hey, Sway. Oh no, he stopped by Sheetal. Why don't you? You should book Sway to come in here. I mean, I know he's on the air right now, but he plays music, right? Uh, I, I think he does talk to. So you're sure. afraid. You're afraid to go over there. You are. You are rolling. <laughs> you're horrible. Listen, uh, I wanted Is to. He still on the air. Yeah, um, I saw an engineer in there and nobody else. Before. Well, I saw when I went to the... They moved the whole Shade 45 crew is in another studio right oh, now. okay. All right. So I don't know if their studio just stopped yeah, working or something. Yeah, I know, because his producer, Evans... If his producer pops out, I'll ask him. Yeah. 
Yeah, you should come on this uh, show. Did sometime. Sheila come by here today or not? Yes, he did. He was in studio for all of uh, five seconds. Oh, really? He just stopped in and said hello, and then uh, he got pulled back out because, yeah, he was here for Sway. Yeah. But see, I was going to say, uh, you know, talk it up like it was a real appearance, and uh, then people would listen to the replay and be like, oh, Sam. But then, I mean, you didn't even realize. I, I, was, I, I, was, I was, we, <laughs> not my fault because they blocked the hallway, so I have to run around a longer loop to go to the bathroom. Right. So, so the loop. I missed it. And was it one or two in the bathroom? Dude, it was two. It was. I went to 37. That's how ashamed I was. Wow. I wish I wish Eric was here because I just remembered that on Wednesday, the day that I was leaving for San Diego on the after show, we talked about my mother for most of the time, who, by the way, actually called me while I was in San Diego and asked, uh, Jim didn't get you any prostitutes, did he? Nice. Which, I mean, if he had... I probably wouldn't have mentioned it to her. So it was a silly question. But uh, we were talking about you destroying Eric's office and really didn't even get to it. We spent like two minutes on the fact that you smeared fries all over his keyboard That or is false. I smeared fries grease. There were and potatoes in his keyboards. It, but my best is when he emailed Travis and uh, Bruce's security to report vandalism. <laughs> well, hope, I think he's recording something with uh, Mark Marin right now. No, yeah. I, I saw him uh, walk with Mark in, in another direction, so he's pretending that he needs to be his liaison. Oh, God. Roland. What? Did you hear? Travis just said he's walking with Mark in another direction, pretending he needs to be his liaison. Wouldn't that be your job? Aren't you the talent booker? Or does Eric try to just jump on that? Well, I think he got energy with a slim fast drink. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> has a lot of sugar. Has like 80 grams of sugar. Like, really? Why, yeah, he's like, why do I have so much energy? Well, listen, Mark Marin was on the show today. And uh, we were talking to him a little bit about when Gallagher was on his WTF podcast and walked off because uh, Mark made ac didn't make accusations. Asked him, I guess, about being racist. And uh, Gallagher didn't like it. If you missed the description, if you want to hear that podcast, we would play it for you here, but it's premium content. And I'm not going to pay for a podcast for you to listen to it. If it were a free download on Mark Marin's website, I would have downloaded it and played the clip for you right here. But you can go pay to hear it yourself on Mark Marin's website. The website is WTFpod.com, uh, and he puts up all his WTF podcasts. If you haven't heard it, you should. Because it's really good, especially for you guys out there. Obviously, if you're listening to this show, you love comedians. And uh, it's a lot of comedians being interviewed. But Gallagher was on Opie and Anthony several times. And uh, Roland, actually, you told a story today about him claiming yeah. that we were trying to kill him yeah. because he got so stressed out. Uh, Patrice O'Neill was on with Gallagher one day. And, uh, well, he let Gallagher know... Um, that the ra that Mark Maron's not the only one who's heard the Gallagher's racist, and Patrice just decided to go on the rant. Uh, Travis, you have the yeah, five got, minute. Uh, 50. No, I've got the. Oh, I have ten minutes and thirty nine seconds. Eric cut a five fifty version. All right, let me find it. Hang on. I figured I'd tell you that way. Because he didn't. He didn't tell you. No, why would he? He just gave me the paper, and then he walked off with Mark Maron. Yep. Well, I can't play them out of here. I have to host the show. He doesn't know that. He's never ran the board for the show, right? <laughs> no, he's here every day. Oh, yeah, I got it. Okay. Uh, this is uh, uh, Gallagher's last appearance, and he won't come in after this, right, Roland? No. Remember last time at K-Rock, he stayed like five hours after the show ended? <laughs> Day trading with no yeah. shirt on. <laughs> he refused to leave. <laughs> he's a psychopath. This was his last appearance. Uh, Patrice was too much for Gallagher. And here it is on After Opie and Anthony Live. After Opie. But hold on, let's get into this. Gallagher feels like he has to make a statement. I think he doesn't like us. I don't think he's coming back. You think back. mega no. farts are uh, contributing <laughs> to global warming? <laughs> Jesus, Patrice. Gallagher's going to I think explain. black people have more gas than most. Let Gallagher explain. He felt like he was in a spot. Diet. Why? Gall here's a fart. All those pork chops are stinking up the earth, right, Gallagher? <laughs> Leo, I do a fart. <laughs> I do a fart joke, but I do a different one. <laughs> Why don't little girls? How many of us take? Does Hold on, do a fart up. joke. I want to know how many light bulbs. How many? How many of me's it takes to screw in a fucking light bulb? 
Let him do his fart joke. All right, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm trying to, to get joke. back on his good side because right, he, yeah. he fucking is giving me the daggers right now. Go ahead, Gallagher. Why what? don't little girls fart? Because they don't get assholes until they get married. Now, this gets oh. all the girls. Yeah, and the, the girls audience. love that, right? Yes, they do. And the guys are like, It's a good oh. fart joke instead of just saying uh, what you said. How about this? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but how about this? How about this joke about girls? Yeah. My girlfriend has been with me for eight years. I've been with her for three. <laughs> Gallagher? He's thinking. How's that one? I guess that's what black people do. Oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Told you. This, <laughs> no. He's mad at me because I asked Gallagher. the question. I, li I like it. No. I think his real name is Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Gallagher. I like this Gallagher. Gallagher's this, mad this at me. This is the true Leo. But he's mad at me because I asked, hey, asked that question before break. If you he's actually why, mad. Here's why he's upset. Because well, he knows. About it. Fuck that. He is the Hulk. <laughs> And you brought in the thing that makes him change. He's a wolf man, and you brought a full moon in. <laughs> well, he said my mom fucked the Viking. Well, imagine well. what he thinks my mom fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Holy At least it has king in it. Yours, mine. Jesus Christ. Okay. Yours has king in it. Too. <laughs> All right, listen. Oh my God. I want. I don't want Gallagher leaving and never coming back. So Gallagher, why was that question bad? Well, I guess you'll have uh, either an Oriental or a gay comic on next time, and I'll have to deal with that. Mm. Oh, I, shit. We talk race all the time in the show. We, we really do. We do talk knew? a lot about race. I didn't race. know. I was on you two days that? ago, and we didn't discuss No, it. no, because it's not an everyday thing. But he, we kind of just, we, we're all over the place. But yeah. it's, it's, Race only comes up every other day. It's whatever. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a very kind of whatever real, the huh? world is talking about thing. Yeah. And in this day and age, political correctness is like yeah. really a big thing. And and we talk about that. We talk about sex. We talk about toilet habits. We'll talk about anything. But race, <clears throat> race is kind of a big thing, especially in this day and age with uh, Obama being president. It was a big issue. Issue. There was a uh, there was a report, a little story about Jimmy the Greek on during the football. Oh yeah, yeah. We we did, would you we flick around? Did, we did Jimmy the Greek. I yeah. know. Did you flick around? I was interested in what the networks played against that game, trying to get attention because they did the Born, uh, whatever it is, Odyssey or whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's like three. Born or four identity. identity. They did that. Yeah. I love that movie. I watch it every time. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I watched I that like the and one. the football game. Yeah. It's kind mm. of a pitiful game. I didn't watch the football game. No. Well, I wanted to know who won. I like won. crime shows. I saw him got hit in the get hit in the back, but it didn't look like it hurt him that bad. His arm went to sleep. Mm. It had to hurt though, right? No, it was just a little hit. It was just a little hit. But the I guess they put him out. They could have had that as a strategy. We're not going to come back from what happened before the break, huh? <laughs> I, was say, I was just looking at Sam's hair. Yeah, Sam's by hair, way. by the way. Sam's the bit's now, over and we got nothing accomplished. It's a cross between Frederick Douglass. And it actually looks like uh, Adolf Hitler. It does. A little, but. Yeah, hit. hey, there you go. <laughs> oh, shit. Really? No blacks or Jews at my show. Oh, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, you, you do have a very uh, specific demographic to your audience. I've noticed that, too. Yeah, smart. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> That's uh, one way to put it. <laughs> Patrice isn't talking it, it is funny watching the, watching the guys with the dry look from Gillette hair and the, yeah. the big 70s porno mustaches and stuff. I think it's interesting to look at the, the audience when, when you go there and go, wow. People you know, come up to me and they say, we were lapels. stoned when we watched your show. And I said, I was too. And you know, that's where the jokes came from. If your knees bent the other way, what would a chair look like? Mm -hmm. What makes Teflon stick to the pan? So look no more that. French people at your shows now? N no more French words in my mouth. I, you can't go out to eat without speaking French. There's a restaurant, a buffet, a cafe, a cabaret. There's a valet. There's a mater d. You can order a la carte or get the soup du jour. I start every day with a latte and a croissant, and I don't like it. <laughs> that's a Carlin thing right there. It's French. Good stuff. It's an observation. <laughs> that, There's well, a, that's why I said Carlin. He was the king of the observation. Well, people don't realize that. About Africa. There's. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. I'm just uh, asking about Africa. Like, you asked about China and fucking France. I'm that's just a saying. continent, not a country. That's right. How about fucking Nigeria? Oh, we all hate that place. 
What the, what's their major export? Nigeria Scams? Too. And the emails about how they've got some money they need to get out of the That's bank and I can you help said. them? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you getting mad? <laughs> I don't know. I guess it Leave wasn't clear. Alone, it man. wasn't clear. All right. How are we going to get everyone on the same page again, Gallagher? We're on the same page. If Gallagher just stop his racism for four <laughs> seconds, <laughs> wow. we, right. we yeah. can now, love Gallagher, each that other. Wasn't oh, me. Shit. Giving you a, I've never seen a look like that. After ONA. And it just went on and on and on. Patrice just hammering him to the point that there, I mean, there's no way we're going to get Gallagher back in here. But, I mean, I feel like how could this many people accuse you of being a racist if you're not kind of a racist? Yeah. Plus, I think the guys did everything they could with Gallagher. So I was like, eh. The guys what? Did everything they could with Gallagher. Yeah, he smashed stuff twice. You know, he acted like a crazy person. Like, we did it. We got the clips of when we yeah. want to air some more Gallagher We're stuff. We're all good. Um, Roland, you brought some uh, friends. Yes, yes. Uh, big guests to get, I say. Well, these are the uh, Ron and Fez interns. Yeah, and um, their cohort, a.k.a. the intern boss, Mark Zito. Okay, well, I don't know. <laughs> Ron and Fez are not. Mark Zito's not here. Ron and Fez are off. That's what he forgot to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 what? The, it, they said, uh, Mark Zito told them we're going to be off this week, which was last week. Uh huh. And then he forgot to, he felt to mention to the, inter, the, his own interns not to come in today. But you guys weren't off all week last week. No, we were in Monday and Tuesday, and then we had Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off. Yeah. So he said you guys were off the rest of the week. And which is this yeah. week's in a, a new way, week. In a way, yeah. He's like, yeah, you got the week off. I'm not saying it's his fault. I'm not going to give you, that name. It is Mark. What do you mean you're not going to give a name? Roland just gave the name. <laughs> I know, but I'm not going to say what, it. I Wait, think, what's, I think, his, what's his name? That's uh, intern no name. I'm no name. I don't have a name. No wonder. I, I, I think yeah. Mark Zia was so... And like, in, and like, so happy to be with Taylor Swift last night. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> he forgot to uh, tell his interns not to come in. He was dancing in the aisles. What's your intern name? Mine's Pips. Pips, you got a little more confidence in you, like you could say. Um, I'm gonna call Zito. You are. I would. Well, he may be having a Taylor Swift dream, <laughs> so be careful. Um, Pips. Yeah. So Zito told you guys, you got the week off. Yeah. And you both, obviously, did you call each other to say what did he mean, or did you both just assume that meant? We figured that we have the rest of the week off. They're they're taking off. And I even thought, like, three days is kind of weird, but I get it. It's the end of the week, you know, it makes like a five-day weekend. Yeah, and, and we're, five we're, days is a week. Yeah. You and, got the week off. And we'll be back Monday. Of course. And I, I think it was just bad wording. You know what I mean? Like, he just didn't word it right. He's saying he's retarded. Mark Zito. So. <laughs> I agree. Is Ron and Fez on tomorrow? We don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. Uh, I just thought Monday, so I was like, oh, yeah, all right. Got to wake up early for tomorrow. Time to go to work. Time to go back to work. And uh, what time did you guys wake up? Uh, 6 a.m. 6. Right you here. both were up at 6. Yep. Um, Is Taylor Swift playing tonight? Zito will be there. <laughs> yeah, Do you guys there. usually wake up at 6, like on your off days? Hell no. No, I, no. <laughs> I wake up mostly around like 8.30 or 9. What about you, Pips? It depends on the day. Some days it's 1, 1 p.m. That's you know? right, because you party I'm sometimes. Party, yeah, yeah, so I like him. <laughs> he's out there. Yeah. Um, he's like, you know, no name on the other hand. He's kind of like, oh. kind of a little bit of a geek. Oh, line. you mean 11, Eric? You can say it on the air. 11, sorry. Mark Zito? Hi, Sam. Hey, you're, I listen, I'm going to tell you this for the record. <laughs> Because I have a reputation around here. I will allow it to happen, but... Sam. Roland, uh... I did not do this. Saw your interns out in the hallway? Uh, that is not true. Roland, it was, you already said it on the air. That was a bit you told me to say. Roland saw your interns out in the hallway, and he brought them in because your interns say that you told them they had the week off last week, and now they're here wondering why <laughs> nobody else is here. They're both here. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, fuck my life. And then Roland started making fun of you for going to Taylor Swift last night. Dude, Taylor Swift was, like, pretty awesome. I mean, I'm sure she's good. I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of hers. I have all the albums. So, I mean, I can't make fun of you for going to see Taylor Swift. But I can make I guess it's the interns say you're the one who kind of tells them when, they have, when they're supposed to come in and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I thought they knew. But... <laughs> They don't. Apparently not. Well, they, now, want, they want to know if they come in tomorrow. 
Yeah, yes. they they don't know. Pips, you want to ask? Yes, you know, we're, like we thought we had the week off, which was last week, <laughs> and this week we have no idea when we're even coming back. Like, are we <laughs> off tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about Wednesday? No. No. Okay. So it was an exact week from Wednesday to Wednesday. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. When they just they wanted that cleared up now, Pips. Was not like throwing you under the bus, but he was being honest. Like, yeah, Mark never told us. We all got confused. Whereas No Name was like, oh, I don't want to say anybody did anything wrong. I don't want to mention anybody. So, will Mark be reimbursing them for coming in today? Oh yeah, did you guys? Have to- <laughs> yeah, we had to- <laughs> that was that was E Rock, by the way, Mark. I'm sure you heard him. Uh, no Name had to pay the most because he has to come from Jersey. How much do you have to pay to to and from? I paid twenty bucks for the ferry a day. Yeah. Wow, what about you, Pips? I take the Q, so it's, you know, Metro card, like two bucks. Still $2. Yeah. So, this, so, I mean, are you asking no name? No, I'm not asking. I don't ask. He's I'm telling. Ask. <laughs> Pips, are you going to ask? I'm telling. You're going to ask for the two, $2 though. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mark, will you give Pips his $2 Stupid back? money, man. Yeah. Yeah, okay, you can get the two back. but Well, it's four each way, right? Oh, four, yeah, I need the four. But, I mean, no name didn't ask, so you don't, you don't have to give no name the, the fairy, fairy money. That's ridiculous. If he's not going to ask for it, he's not going to get it. I'm not going to ask. Well, uh, I get, I, are you, is this how you're waking up? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, look, I can't say I'm upset that this happened, but Roland brought you I guys did in. I not and then, Sam Schistered again. And then Eric, you know, you, Eric did the right thing, and he said, I'm going to produce the shit out of the after show today, and I'm going to give Zito a call, which, <laughs> that Eric. That is true. That is I'll true. say this. Good job, buddy. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so, um, I guess, was there anything else you... I mean, Pips, no name, do you guys... Well, when we were upstairs waiting in the office saying, uh, uh, <laughs> what I guess time, I'm not coming in today. How long were know. you waiting in the office for? <laughs> till like, 10. Till, it, it, what it, time did you get to the office? Nine. So you were up there for an hour? Yeah. Just sitting there. So, and I got there waiting. at 8.30, so, so I was there So you were there, there for an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> and, I see, and then we found out that, all right, yeah, they're not coming in. We have a day off. It's, it's still the vacation. We were thinking, so. like, it's Monday. You know, they probably had a rough night. They were out doing something. They'll come in a little bit later. Right. But then when 10 hit and Fez wasn't there, I was like, oh, shit. Like, this is <laughs> bullshit right now. <laughs> <laughs> I suggested, like, why don't we just still set up the studio and just host the show? <laughs> Can they do that, Mark? No. No. No, okay. <laughs> you got your answer there. Um, so, I guess, what are you guys going to do for the rest of the day? You're up. Fuck shit, I know. I don't know. I will go back six on a vacation, and I'm just gonna like walk my way to the nearest bar and drink myself drunk like a Your broken life man. Vacation. You're in fucking college. And he just said, <laughs> Mark, you know how you could tell uh, he doesn't drink ever? He just said, I'm gonna go to the bar and drink myself drunk. Drink myself drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Who's ever said drink myself drunk? Yeah, you get shit faced. You know what you guys should do? And I think, personally, that Mark Zito taught you guys a lesson that maybe even on your days... Look, Mark Zito's up and ready to go. He's ready to go on the air anytime. You guys maybe should realize that just because it's a vacation day, it's still a Monday, and people wake up, they make the most of the days. You guys, you, no name, should not go out there and drink yourself drunk, (laughs) whatever that means. And uh, you guys should both... Go out there and really conquer the day. Carpe diem, you know what I mean? Yeah. You have now, a f- it's only 10.35 in the morning, or in case they're listening on the replay, mm-hmm. 35 after the hour. Oh, yeah. It's, it's still early in the day, though. You guys should go out there and really conquer something and really get something accomplished, don't you think? Yeah, man. Mark, wasn't this your plan from the beginning? Oh, yeah. See? <laughs> he wants you to make the most out of your lives. And he knew that if he just told you guys you were on vacation... That you'd end up sleeping till 1 p.m. and then No Name would get up at 8:30 and drink himself drunk. But the difference would be I'd be out Sunday night doing something instead of going, "Hey guys, I oh, gotta so go he, home. So he, I got work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can go fuck yourselves. I can't go out right now." So you ruined your Sunday night yeah. plan. What were you doing? We, nothing, because I, I didn't. What go would out. you have done? I usually just go to the bar, or the strip club, or something. You know? Nice. Yeah. And you ruined that. Yeah. But then again, the strip clubs in Brooklyn, some of them are just disgusting. Yeah. Like I don't even know why we go. There's no reason to go. No. They're just nasty. <laughs> just, I don't have to work in the morning, so I got to fill these night hours with something. Yeah. I said, and no name. I was uh, stuck visiting my girlfriend in Kansas, bumfuck Kansas. Ugh. 
You were stuck. Well, why just stop dating her then? No, <laughs> if it's that much of an asshole. In Kansas, I mean, like I, I was to visit her. I was hanging out with my girlfriend last night. You know why? Because I voluntarily live with her. I made the uh, conscious was choice. In, was she interning for her barbecue or what? Uh, f some f uh, food health management at the university there. It's a long way for pussy, man. It really is. Especially but, if you're stuck there with her. Yeah, like, the you'd think you'd be enjoying she yourself. She was the best part of the trip, but just Kansas is not really for me. Why? Not at all. It's just really, they move really slow. And it, and the, what, maybe? What'd you say? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? I'll drink, I'll drink myself drunk. Why you say with the Southern? You're the one who said drink yourself drunk. You said it like Southern people say that, and they're dumb. You said it. I know I did. Okay. I just came from Kansas. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> You could, well, <laughs> you could slept in too today too. <laughs> Listen, uh, Zito, to tell you the truth, I'm glad. I think you should tell them that now we are going to do. You just have them come in here every day, even whether there's a show or not, because they need, they need this in their lives. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, oh, guys, uh, today it's like. It's cool if you want to, like, carry the bin sack or... <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, well, Zito, thank you for uh, allowing us to wake you up. No problem. <laughs> Have a good one. All right, bye. Bye. Um... We're going to get reamed out on Wednesday. You know that. Are you? I don't, oh, yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. know what goes oh, yeah. on in your life. You know, it's going to be, what the fuck, man? He just woke up like, oh, fuck my life. Yeah. Well, I mean. The, no, he didn't but, say that. He saw Taylor Swift. The he's hard like, night at Taylor Swift picking up underage girls. But shit rolls downhill, too. So if Zito ends up getting reamed out, you guys should get reamed out, right? He also Twittered that he walked out when she sang her anti-John Mayer song. Like, he was all <laughs> disgusted. No, no, um, no, 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 no. Look, I, um, I'm she all. She did sing the Bruce Springsteen song, Dancing in the Dark, I heard. I'm all for making fun of people. Especially Mark Zito. I don't have any problem with it. But Eric and Roland cannot make fun of Mark Zito for seeing Taylor Swift. Why? I'm not, no, I'm not making fun of him why? for seeing Taylor Swift. Wait, 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 why? why can't I'm make laughing that he walked out on that song because it was anti-John Mayer. So you're okay with the Taylor Swift thing? Yeah, no, well, why, right. why can't I make fun of him? Why can't you make yeah. fun Because you wrote on your Twitter that you had seen the Justin Timberlake movie twice is, over the weekend. That is correct. That's so much worse. It's fantastic. It was fun. It was a great movie. I'm sure it wasn't. It was. What's the movie called, Eric? Do you remember what the movie is called? No, it, Friends with Benefits. Of course. It's not even an original title. FWB. Oh, I thought you were talking about that movie he put out, that concert thing. They had, a, they had a big display in Best Buy. There's some big DVD that he put out. I thought that was no, no, you saw. no. Roland went to see the Justin Timberlake Mila Kunis movie, Friends with Benefits. Oh, okay. And he thinks that like Mark Zito is like feminine for going to see Taylor Swift. But you were just the beacon of masculinity over the weekend. You seen this sweet Justin kids, Timberlake <laughs> chick flick. Was he oh, yeah. acting good? It was funny. He was funny. He wasn't funny. He was funny. Like, Justin Timberlake is the quintessential guy who tries to be the funny guy in the room, but you and know he can't was. take a joke. Like, do you think somebody could go and make fun of Justin Timberlake? Yes. JT. <laughs> JT. <laughs> I forgot he's your boy because he's friends with Carson. Yeah, he's funny. <laughs> yeah, he's not funny. He's it, a phony. Kunis was hot and funny. Sp special cameos with uh, Jason Segel, with Cheetah Jones. Why is Jason Segel in that movie? You gotta see it. It's oh, good. I'm not going to see it. Um, Eric. I was trying to get you a guess, but it's not working out. Was it Sway? No. Why don't you give me Sway? You want to talk to Sway? Of course I do. All right, let me see. Well... He just walked by the studio. Yeah, but I think I his guess, morning show is still on. Yeah, I yeah, guess he won will not come in here. No. They play no. music. We tried, but she, What guest? She, she uh, said no way. Who? Do you know the name Clarissa Darling? Oh, my God. Why won't Melissa Joan Hart come in here? Because Well, she's in with Al Q right now, but she was waiting in the hallway for a few minutes because they were in commercials or whatever. I was trying to see if we could get her in just to say hi, but uh, yeah. it didn't work out. Yeah, her pub says... Uh, no. This is a very sort of you're very safe. Yeah, very safe interview but here. Just the name behind that. It's gotta, not good, huh? You think they have a bad reputation, Opie and Anthony? No, no, just her publicist thinks you guys are gonna like char you. Her she's like, hey, look, there's my car. Does, does, she, does she know that they're not here? <laughs> I don't know. Plus, in what interview have Opie and Anthony ever gone? They hey, don't. look, here's my car. Never know, but but some but some of them have that projection of. Shock, shockery in their mind. I see, but it, they don't. Nothing happens. I mean, more stuff happens in like the matchup, like asking controversial questions. Do they? Here. Yeah, like they pick on the like the topics of what's going on. Oh, you know, because all the rumors and all that. I got you, and they and they go. Yeah, the guys are really you know, like ah, oh, whatever. Then they just do the great interview, but they go the other ones like, oh, we heard the rumor you banged the XXX. Like, oh. We should. Um... 
I w- well, real quick, I want to touch on it because we barely scratched the surface on it. Eric, yeah. now that you're back in the booth, yeah. uh, we really only scratched the surface on Wednesday when I was leaving for San Diego about <laughs> what's wrong, Roland. Oh, no. <laughs> about uh, Roland uh, destroying your area. Oh, yes. Um, but in my defense, though, I was high on sugar. Well, it's, that's not a defense. Uh, it no, it's not a defense at all. I that guess d- that what, doesn't intoxicate you in any way. What it does ha- crazy. What happened was Tuesday, Eric, you decided to take a little early day for yourself. I was done with what I needed to do. I went home. Good for you. Um, so he took the day. Uh, he must have gone home around 10:45. I actually don't even know if he was here for the end of the after show that day. Nope. But he was so he was gone out the door. Roland and me went to Wendy's and Troy Kwan. Oh yeah, and Troy went with us. And then uh, Roland got rambunctious and started smearing, using French fries to smear the grease <laughs> for no reason <laughs> all over Eric's desk. Yes. His keyboard. Uh, his keyboard and it, the keyboard he smushed the fries into. Yes. Correct, Eric? I had to uh, pretty much disconnect it, turn it upside down, and bang it till the keys fell off just to get the French fry mush out of it. I bought him lunch, though. Who cares? It was on my mouse. It greased papers that were and discs that were on my <laughs> desk, Phone. and the grease was also on the monitor. <laughs> you said, you said <laughs> I had grease hands. <laughs> That's right. He did take a French I fry. I the monitor on, and there's all these <laughs> rainbow streaks all over the monitor. Because <laughs> so, you smeared French fry grease on his computer remember monitor. I said, remember I said, like, grease hands, why grease did, hands. Why did you do that? Because I went crazy. I had a, um, the extra large Mr. Pib uh-huh. and the ice cream with that sugar. Yeah. I just started like going crazy. Doesn't Eric, count. isn't Roland supposed to be like your best friend in the office? Yeah, Roland's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> and Roland, you enjoyed it, correct? Well, the thing is, I started. I go, I should do this. I go, I shouldn't do it. And then I hear Sam, do it, do it. You didn't know. That's not how it happened. You started doing it, and I laughed, so you continued doing it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Should I play your fat cramp video again? Uh, Roland doesn't like that. I should. Why? Why did you do it? Just because I was a hob- And why did you fess up to it? Because um, I heard um, Travis goes, hey, yeah, um, Eric sent an email to um, Travis, I believe Gary, Rob, and security that he is definitely vandalized. <laughs> and I said, I, <laughs> I said Is that true, I, Eric? Um, well, first I sent a notice to uh, Pepper and Zito because I noticed the profit machine w- was on, so I figured they were down there using the machine, which is fine. They're allowed to. But there was food everywhere. And that's so, I, I, so I asked him, I'm like, did you guys do this? If not, oh, that's fine. Oh, you blame the Ron and have, crew. No, I didn't blame them. I asked them. I said, if you uh, didn't do it, that's fine. I'm going to have to check with security and see what the hell happened. Oh. Uh, and then, so that was a, so and you, Travis, Travis so you was basic, aware. So you basically said, listen, Ron and Fez crew, did you mess up my office? If you lie about it, I'm going to narc you out. I'm, t- I'm, I'm going to tell security. I asked them nicely, and if, wow. they, if they said no, that's fine. I was going to have to find out who did it, because it was all over everything. <laughs> well, and and to find a fact, I did wake up late that day, and I came in, and I forgot all about well, it. Wait, wait, wait. Let me explain how Roland fessed up to this. Okay. So I'm sitting there in, in the office, and I'm just like, oh. And he's like, what? I said, I'm explaining all this, and he's sitting there dead face. I said, yeah, I, I have to go to security on this, and Roland just goes, oh, yeah, I did it. <laughs> 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 Just like it's no big deal. And then he hit me in my arm and called me a dick. <laughs> well, it was and a an big... asshole. I mean, I, I, did, I did accept those those titles. Yeah, um, you're a funny guy, Roland. Are you ready for this staff stand up comedy? No, no, no. When, it's tough, though. I mean, what do you talk about? Well, man? we're doing it at the Hard Rock, uh, and it's on Thursday, Thursday, Thursday morning. Eric, did they set up the RSVP thing while I was gone? Uh, yeah. yeah, I believe they did. Do you I, know what I, it is? Uh, no. It's on the Facebook page, I think. I think it's in the promo, too. Yeah, it's on the Facebook page. I heard okay. there's been hundreds of responses. Has there? Yes. Facebook.com slash Opie and Anthony is our Facebook. So and then I think on Opie Radio, Opie Twitter, the link, too. Okay, so check Opie's Twitter, Opie Radio, because, yeah, we're doing a live gig at the Hard Rock, and mm-hmm. part of that experience will be, uh, and it's on Thursday, the staff of the show having to go up and do stand-up comedy. Yeah. Um, I know Troy is scared. Scared? He's acting like he's not scared, he, but he, he is. Well, what's he going to do? Well, he came up to me and he said, 
uh, he doesn't even know if he's going to do it. He might be uh, calling it sick. And you, I, oh, that's worse. That's what I told that's him. That's the worst. I said, if you don't do it, you'll catch more shit for doing it. That means he, he'll have to be here in front of him. Like, uh, you can't get away with this one. And you should he, just go up and do three minutes of his hardcore scream. It's, it's like Eric, he wanted to do karaoke, that, uh, but you had to do it. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's no choice. And he goes, I don't care about taking shit. And oh. I go, then why aren't you doing it? Because you're scared. Because they go, seriously, guys? Seriously? Seriously? <laughs> seriously? Seriously? <laughs> seriously? Stick you. up, seriously. <laughs> seriously. Nobody here wants to do it, but we have to do it. Eric, yeah. are you ready? Because uh, you have I'll, to. You I'll have... be as ready as I can. Be. Yeah, I try to write. I just got some stuff on Chipotle. <laughs> of course you do. Because I ate there this weekend. Eric has to do stuff as Eric Nagel, and then close the show as the virus. Now the virus, I'm, he'll kill. The virus, you don't. You're not preparing for at all. When have I ever prepared for the virus? Right. So but, that's that's not anything well, see, you have to worry about. Eric does an advantage, about. though. He does one minute as Eric, and then he goes, All right, it's a virus. And people go, yeah. No, because the virus is coming later. Oh, dude, you're fucked. Yeah, the, vi <laughs> the virus is headlining the show. It's The whole staff is going up so there. It, Troy has to do it, because that means Eric's going twice. Right, Eric's going twice, because the whole staff is going to be up there doing it, and then the virus is going to close it. And so, Club Soda Kenny is hosting the whole thing. So I can bring up to the guys tomorrow about Troy's fear of not doing it? Yeah. Maybe Troy needs to do a character, too. You think, what kind of, well, I mean, well, I don't know. You're good at blindsiding people with characters. I'm sure you could come up with something. What's that supposed what about to mean? that skinny shirt guy? Seriously? Seriously? <laughs> Are you doing your tactic where you try to insult him until he comes down here? No. I mean, he, he's a pussy. He won't come out here. He's too scared. <laughs> wow, Roland. You are really taking some shots today. Here, Although, I'm, oh, there he comes. <laughs> Up there. Although you'll probably he'll come in here and I'll reference this and you'll go, Oh Sam, you slipped me a note. Ooh. You slipped me a note. <laughs> <laughs> Troy, do you hear what Roland was just saying? I mean I said it too. Did you say fatso? Um, oh. oh Save it for the save it for the stage, man. Save it for the yeah. hard rock. Yeah, yeah that, that that's ten that's like two seconds. You are a little scared to do this stand up. I don't want to do it. You're I don't nervous. Do it. I'm not I mean it's not gonna be good. I'm not gonna be funny. You're nervous. It's not going to be funny. Hey, I don't know. I didn't ask you. He, he threw a fat so out. That's pretty funny. How come you won't <laughs> just say, yeah, I'm scared to do this? We all are scared. We're frightened. Well, I'm a scared deer. That's he made. Roland just made a face <laughs> of a deer in headlights with his eyes real wide. So thank you for hearing that, Roland. Um, why don't you just say, yeah, I'm scared? Because I'm not scared to do it. Well, yes, you are. It's just it's not going to be funny. What, I'm not, not, I'm not who scared. is? I'm not scared to Listen, get on the stage and perform. I've done it a bazillion times. Do you think Eric's going to be funny? No. Do you think Roland is? Yes. You, but we also thought he would do a good job hosting this show. But Roland, when Roland wants to be funny, he can be really fucking funny. Do you think Travis is going to be funny? Uh, Don't be diplomatic. No. You think uh, none of us are going to be funny? You know. I think you yeah. could be funny. I don't know. I mean, uh, you don't think you could be funny? I probably you're the, funny when you want to be funny. I think the hard part is going to be the lineup. If you're number four and the crowd's restless. But just like if you just go and go like, okay, whatever. Who cares? Like, here it is. And it, I, that's yeah, the attitude. Why don't, I'm, why don't I'm you be a team player? Because I'm not ever looking to be a stand-up comedian. It's like, yeah, but you just it's, like, it's like if you had a guitar, it's like, okay, get on stage and, and sing a song. You just go through it. Because you had to do it. You just, you'd go through it and be like, I have no desire to No, but to if be they said we're going to have a Battle of the Bands contest with the staff, I would go out there and perform a Junior Mint song from Embarrassing Tape Day. And I would give it my all. Yeah, well, good for you. I have no desire to be a stand-up comedian. I, what I, about doing something that, like, okay, I'm going to go out and do my best? Oh, I'm, I'm going to do my best. You should be okay. like a Stephen Lynch, sing a song. Like, a, like a screaming. Why don't you write a, like a parody metal or, song? Or yeah. uh, a Children's Rhyme. Just because sing I, it. Because I, I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what he's talking about. Because that right. would sort of be the obvious. I think it's better to try to completely step out of your element and do something did you start writing this weekend uh, i have some ideas here and there some concepts yeah. we do have immunity to make fun of everybody well roland roland is the only one who's obsessed with this immunity thing because he thinks that it means he can make like horrible jokes about our bosses which yeah, i mean just one of the bosses did come to me and say hey just so you know all these bosses will be in the audience oh awesome <laughs> I, get so, I, I take that as Roland is, is putting fear in him of like some shit is really going to yeah. be sprayed, which I, I wouldn't do that anyway. Like, I don't I don't know. I, yeah, I, but that, they said immunity, though. They said uh, um, when we're on stage, a joke is a joke. So I have but see, a what, few jokes. What Roland is forgetting to uh, realize is once you're off that stage, what has been said is still in their mind. And most but, of the bosses that you're making jokes about 
the audience has no idea who they are. Right. So no, they're I'm not going to laugh. So the only for a niche audience. <laughs> the only people you're doing it for are the people in the That's staff funny. and to just take a stab at our oh, bosses. I, I, yeah. don't, I don't and, take stabs. And you're not going to get you're not going to get in trouble per se. You have immunity, but they're going to be like, oh, that's that asshole who made fun of me that time. You know what you should do, Roland? Hmm. When you get on stage, you just point to them and go, those are the guys who don't fix the online problem. Go over there. <laughs> just point them out. <laughs> wow. He's already, that's a good one. <laughs> Listen, Eric, wow, I, I'm whoa, not giving you immunity whoa. on this show. That's Eric Nagel. Whoa, Eric, whoa. do you have material ready for uh, Thursday? Uh, I will. Do you have any concepts? You uh, don't have to tell me what they are because yeah, I know you're you know, saving I, ha it. I have a rough direction of where to go. Okay. But... Uh, you know the virus is 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 a crapshoot because the virus is the virus. Like yeah. it, I mean, we could we might have to throw a topic at you to keep it spontaneous. Yeah. Um. I got a few food topics I'm gonna talk about. You can go. Food you got topics. food topics. I got, I got food topics. I got some management topics. <laughs> I got some um uh someone who gets raped topics. Oh Jesus! Are you gonna go work related, Eric? No, because Roland has already declared to everybody that was uh, that was his his intention territory. Troy, are you going to work related? Him off. No. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's probably a smarter thing not to, especially if Roland is going hard in the paint. Yeah. You know, work-related. I, I, I told Opie one of the jokes, and he went, ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay, so that's good. Uh, Eric, we have to wrap up now? Or do yeah, we, we got to go. Okay, we have to go. Troy, we'll talk about this tomorrow because we got till Thursday. Uh, if you want to come to the staff stand-up competition at the Hard Rock Cafe, uh, just check the Facebook. Do, Facebook. We, get, do we get a prize? Or at least they no, should throw us no, a pizza party. Enough with throw your... us a pizza party. No, see, a prize would kind of make you want to yeah. do You know good. what the prize throw is? Throw us a pizza yeah, party. we're not allowed You know to. what the prize is? Pizza uh, party. A good show. Wait, hold Enough on. Enough always I looking for a know. reward. No, but, but, but some people are just going to be like, okay, three minutes, start the clock. Okay. Good. Like, if there was money or something involved, I just got know an from incentive. I just got enough from Robin Gary. We are going to have a barbecue and pizza party. If we Here, do here's the incentive. You didn't get that, by the way. An no. iPad 2. He just Chris. makes it up. The incentive wow, is... We get, iPad, we get an iPad 2. All right. That's what Rob Cross just said. <laughs> <laughs> here's the incentive. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> the incentive is just doing a good show. Yeah, but... I mean, I know that's not enough for Roland. He needs a reward no matter what he does. Well, a reward will help you. Reward is an incentive well, to, to, to try to crush. We'll try to get into some of that tomorrow. And maybe talk to Travis and Danny. Danny's not here today. That's why we can talk to him. Maybe talk to Travis and Danny about uh, gotta go. some of his... Well, we'd be able to go a lot quicker if you weren't interrupting me, wouldn't okay. we? Thank you. This has been After Opie and Anthony Live. We'll continue tomorrow. Stay tuned. Ron and Fez are next. Ron and Fez interns, I guess, go find something to do. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Opie and Anthony show is now over. For real this time. Check out the ONA show on Facebook at facebook.com slash Opie and Anthony. And catch Opie and Anthony live Monday through Friday from 6 to 10 a.m. Eastern. Ron and Fez are next. Hey. On the